uh, kind of like at a glance of what Public Works is doing right now. Um, we are a growing department. Currently we have full 15 full-time staff. We've got six Georgia Works employees that are helping us out on the sanitation route as well as pulling in onto the Public Works side of it with the uh, Parks and Rec. And then I've got four state inmates right now. Um, we've also pulled crews of state inmates in to help with the Pine Straw areas um, down the district, the interchanges, Mount Zion Road we've got to take care of, a couple bigger, the bigger spots. We've had the inmates come in for that. Um, we've got public works broken down into four departments, the Parks and Rec, the Fleet Maintenance, Building Maintenance, and Sanitation. Um, right now we're currently maintaining 30 miles of center line roadway. Um, on every nines, on properties, major properties that we're maintaining, 55 vehicles, as many pieces of equipment in the public works department. That's including PD and fire. Uh, and then we're collecting sanitation from roughly 1,200 residents on a weekly basis. Uh, it's just a basic organizational chart of what we're doing in public works now. Uh, the overview. I'm sorry. Can we go back? Go back. Yes, ma'am. When did we start to have the system that we The assistant director is something we'd like to add on to it for this year. That way, it's a second person there that if I'm not there, he's able to take charge um, to kind of take over the whole supervisor position that I have now. I'm wanting to move, move an assistant director into that spot. Uh, the budget overview. Currently we're looking at 2.2 million with several major increases. Last year I didn't have much of a budget to work with. Um, the employees' salaries and benefits is our biggest hit, uh, professional service. The salary and contract labor, which is the Georgia Works employees for the sanitation. Um, street signs and road repair, and then gasoline. Here's a breakdown of last year's fiscal budget. This is a current budget that we're proposing for you this year. Last year there was no capital items. We put some capital into this year's budget. Uh, but like I said, the personnel and benefits have skyrocketed since we've grown the department to full staff now. Okay. But you say grown, basically we're back to the staff. We're back to staff where we need to be to operate. Right. Or yeah, at least a comparable number. Right, right now, to keep the city rolling like we are and to actually grow the city, we're at the staff level we need to be at now. What number, how many is that? I've got 15 full-time staff. including the work? The Georgia Works, full-time full -time oh. 15. Okay. I've got six Georgia Works and four inmates. inmates. Yes, ma'am. Are they going to be permanent or are inmates? The inmates aren't permanent. Back. They're here for two to three years and then they get released back. Okay. But they're dedicated? They are. Okay. We've got four that have been here since I started. Now, you're still running two guys on that um, sanitation truck. Yes, sir. What we're doing is we're running, rotating those guys out. So he, every other day, they switch out, get on the truck. That way, they're not getting burned out on, on the sanitation side of it. So the days that they're not on the truck, they're helping parks and rec, they're helping building maintenance. They come back into public works and help us out on that as well. Um, just right there, Lake Ice. Yeah, brought the concern earlier. I saw the revivals and the budget came in 6:30 last night, and I have a first look on the approved budget in 2021, it says the total of the budget for public works is 1.1 million. But the version before that is so 4.4, so I don't know what different is that coming from the variant between that. Uh, you showed what? 4.4. 4.4. And then, no. yes. And then, yeah. and yeah. then, the interesting thing I'm going to share with the council here. This is the uh, narrative of the latest version. It's all right here. And in this budget, it says that there's nothing for the building the ground. How could public works in building the ground? Nothing, zero. So how is that possible to run public works with zero of that? Uh, in That's what you approved vote? in the budget, ma'am. Huh? That's what the budget was approved for. I'm sorry. I said that was the public works department had no people, and 
know what? That's a fact. Uh, Are you yeah. talking about last year? This is the the the, la the version for the, the latest version for this year. This say budget of twenty two, say in that. The current budget year we have, which is almost over. Least, I mean, he's, the city didn't have any money. Man. I mean, there, there's lots of challenges. So, are you saying that we're not going to have anything spending on building and crap? No, not this year. This year we'll have plenty, and it should be in here regularly. Uh, but what I see in on the narrative here is that we have zero on building. There's one hundred sixty thousand dollars in request for buildings and grounds in this year's budget. It's on your Excel spreadsheet that was sent. Um, I'm looking at it in the book. Well, the wasn't that I got. I can pull it up. This one I'm blowing up is the one that was sent out the digitalized copy. That's what I'm showing here. This is the one, one hundred sixty thousand on here. The bill to your budget narrative. Let me see. When did you send out that? That's the one that y'all got yesterday. There's one sitting right at your desk too. Let me see. Yeah, that's the one that I got. Yeah, that's the one that I got. Yeah, that's the one that I got. There were two that were sent to the narratives and also the Excel spreadsheets, and that's in the Yeah, I'm looking at the Excel spreadsheet. Just make a budget note, man. We're going to keep going. All right, we did a uh, breakdown of funds as well, showing that the salaries and the purchase services are almost balanced out. I was actually expecting it to be the other way around whenever I started putting it in, but it actually balanced out. All right, uh, Public Works, Parks, and Recreation. A couple things that they're responsible for is maintaining the parks upgrading the park the equipment at the current parks, upgrading the landscaping, uh, landscaping on the right-of-ways, beautification of city-owned properties, mosquito spraying, which we took care of that last week, Yay. weed killer in the flower beds and on the right-of-ways as well. Um, got a couple pictures here to show you. Here's City Hall's Park. Y'all know all of this one. Um, it's a nice park. Still needs some upgrades to it. Um, I rode around the city and took pictures of a couple other parks and they're not in near as good a shape so we need to do some major upgrading. If you look at this one right here, this is actually sinking into that hole. So we've got to get out here, do some grading work, reset this, do some landscaping around this area to where it can be user friendly, family friendly, safe. Does it need this is Indian Springs. It's stable for right now. Okay. It's not, I, I went over and got on it and it's not teetering, but it's just, it's an eyesore and it's definitely sitting down in that hole. And, and kind of make a determination as to, you know, by the time and effort we do to salvage and all the piece of equipment, I, I realize they're very, very durable. Um, but for just a little more, we can just buy your brain right now. And, yeah. and you know, then it pops, it looks good, it's got the color the kids love. Mm -hmm. you know. Cool. They don't, you don't find very many monkey bars like that anymore. No, you don't find these, but we need to come in here. We need to do a lot of these cross ties that need to be replaced. As you can tell, I mean, there's no cross ties here. So nothing's holding that sand in. When it rains, it's all going out. We've got a lot, most of the parks are like this. Uh, I mean, we've got to do a lot of upgrades to the park system. Uh, here's some of the projects that they've been working on. They got the interchanges done. Got the pine straw out there. That is super sharp, by the way. We've got a little bit more touch up work to do on that, especially around the crepe myrtles. So I'm gonna send them out there next week and get that done. Uh, things like this right here around the city drive me crazy. So we're working on getting this taken care of. I don't like the crepe myrtle shoot sticking out on the bottom. And, um, and then final picture of the uh, district as they got done cutting that. Uh, in, in the parks, um, some of the, the uh, trees had like bad branches and stuff like that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, that was going to be looked at as well. We are. We're going to okay. put. We're going to do a, a big turnaround on the park system this year. Okay. There'll be okay. some select cut of some trees too that have just been growing outside the norm for a very, very long time. Um, some of them just don't need to be there. Some of them fly and shade to something else. It's just kind of haphazard. A true park system. You know, trees belong there for a particular reason. Right? Yeah. It's a landscape. And we talked about the pass system too when we get the gators in. Oh, mm -hmm. The gators are going to make a tremendous difference mm -hmm. on that pass system cut those things down and make sure it's safe on there. Right. All right, our building maintenance crew. Uh, we were actually down at the district doing some electrical work the other day. City Hall is one of our main ones. Welcome Center, the Morrow Center, Reynolds Road, Fire Station 1 and 2, 
police and public works buildings, LCI, parking deck, and then the LED sign boards, which we just got those wired up. The second one wired up. Point of information on the uh, on the stuff that's happening out at the district. Remember, we got the roofs replaced under insurance. Um, that's where all that came from. And then most of the stuff that you're seeing out there in terms of the maintenance is coming from the second part of the insurance that we got, which was about another two forty or something. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Right now, they were actually pulling new control wires for the HVAC systems uh, last week. They got up on the roof and looked at the wires. They were all deteriorating. So I had them pull new control wires where we get those units up and running. Uh, this is a photo of Reynolds Road while they were tearing down that awning. If you go out there now, that job is complete. Um, we've smoothed all this landscaping up from where it was damaged, put grass seed and straw out there, put pine straw on the hill area. We've redone some of that landscaping. Uh, got that awning taken down. It looks a lot better out there. It does. It looks it a, lot a lot better. better. Like there's sunlight hitting. Yeah. A little it opened it up a lot more than I thought it would. Yeah. When we address that front building at some point, that's a different pot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the back building will stand out. They didn't really. Sure. So they just got done pressure washing, getting all the little detail work done. We finished that up this past week. Yeah. Do we know if the uh, test site is gonna be there? Okay. Is it the state people? Yeah, I still, still, still see some signage. I went out there a couple days ago and they started signage. They're still there, aren't they? They're still there, aren't they? Yeah, but um, diminished staff. Yeah, but they notified or anything possible? How long? They're gonna. I know they shut down the plumbing. Plumbing wraps up. They usually get more. Well, they shut down. They said about half of the ones across the state. So. We haven't got any notification on this one, so I guess we survived the first round. Our building maintenance crew has been extremely busy here of late. We've got many projects going on they're involved in. Um, road repair and street signs. Um, I just put an order in for several street signs two weeks ago. They should be coming in soon. But many of our street signs are in rough shape. Um, we need to get, get on top of that this year to get those taken care of. Um, and that's a big, big adjustment in my budget there as well. Um, this is some road repair we've got going on. This is actually from the Lake Harbor project. I went by there Wednesday. Wednesday, they were out there with Atlanta Gaslight, waiting on them to move their pipes while they were running that stormwater drain through there. This is gonna rain by the end of this week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, many of our neighborhoods have these red painted areas. I have gotten in touch with a vendor. I have found the paint to where we can come in here, repaint these things this winter. This winter. Um, I've actually got to go over to Peachtree City, I believe it is, and they're going to do a demo for me over there. That way they can show us how to roll that on to where it'll sit. Come over here and do a demo. I know, we they would. Brandon, I did want to mention, um, and you talked about this before, but making sure that the, um, the paint and whatever additives necessary are applied so that it's not split. It's going to have a sand base to it. That's why they have yeah. to come show me how to do it. It's, yeah. You roll it on there, you sprinkle the sand on it, and they say you pull it back. So I want to see how they do it. Yeah. That way we can come out here and not have any issues whenever we, we whenever attempt to do this because that's bad. not a not a cheap process. And once it's on there, it's on there. Right, okay. It's not something you can come pressure wash off. Good, okay. And so the other um, <clears throat> dreamier piece, um, you know, we have a lot of, we have a lot more walkability in this city noticeably than we ever have before. Um, if we could pay attention to um, sidewalks, yes, um, making the walker experience, you know, cleaner, look, look nicer, um, and also throwing this out there, uh, funding for maybe more imaginative crosswalks. Nice crosswalk down Mount Zion Road, creating a sense of place um, along that corridor. I know that probably won't come cheap, but if there's money that we Actually, can. I talked to the, um, well, I said it on the information for the federal grant that they're doing to reconnect communities, which I think it's going to be a great one to yeah. have a reconnect, like an over Was that the pedestrian link? overpass. So mm -hmm. That was the link that you guys that was listened to? That was Yep, and we, yes, ma'am, it was a link you actually sent. So we had set it on an information meeting Thursday, I believe. So it okay. uh, goes through the process and can start taking applications in two or three weeks. Okay. After this yeah. morning, I, I would like for the city to look 
Well, it's perfect because you have Highway 54 and basics of looking at roadways, and also we have a rail system right yeah. by there. So I think we could probably um, yeah, we've got put two or three of them to see if we could do. Before, you know, connecting to Clayton State, mm -hmm. you know, we've got the retail corridor on Mount Zion. So if we could, you know, level up our attention, our intentional our attention to those those pieces as well. With it seems like that's what they are actually designed to do exactly because cool. yeah, they've got the natural barriers, the ancillary roads, even. And especially state highways and interstates. It looks like they created like underpasses or something. And the reason I say that, those overpasses are like the one in um, Hayville. Hmm? No, what do you pass? Yeah. It, it stairs up, stairs over, stairs down. Mm -hmm. Unless there's a building attached to it where you basically have a reason to go from More there, like a parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, as I know it's a big road, and I know that railroad's a problem. You know, but spending a couple million dollars on something that's just going to be a visual sign, you know, like the ones in Peachtree City. If I can drive a golf cart over it, I would. But if you just walk up, walk over, they, they defeat the purpose. Drive over on a golf course, I'm dead. So you want an overpass, you want to widen up and drive a golf course. <laughs> 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 I mean, honestly, it, I don't it, know what the parameters are, but they, they oh, start off with a pretty good. Yeah, yeah, but it's but it's the only way you're going to use it. Right? Well, I, think, just I think the wait sales part of that up. would be, plus it has transit areas. So where they drop them off in the mud puddle there, on 54 could be another way to do yeah, let's let's imagine, like I said, making better pieces um, more attractive so that they connect, connect and it'll help everything that's going on look a lot better. But the walkability pieces, we have a lot more people walking, a lot more people walking, and you know it's noticeable. So let's pay attention to the size. We'll, we'll definitely get some input from all because I mean that's yeah. so I don't know what the, I don't know, once I figure out what the exact parameters are, they just wanted the very basic things, mm -hmm. eligibility and. Process and everything else. Once we get that, then we can look at and what's what awesome. projects and for show. Cool. All right, our street sweeping. Uh, they're actually out there this past week working on that. They're doing that on a monthly basis right now in the summertime. I believe they're coming out for one week at a time. Uh, in the winter time, that'll definitely get picked up as the leaves start to fall. Uh, then we're going to have you know a public works crew assist in that to where we can keep the streets clean this winter. That way we don't have leaves sitting there running down the storm drains, backing them up. Um, we've had a couple of them so far this year that I've had to call Clayton County on to come run the jet down there because they were backed up from leaves. Our fleet maintenance department's going well right now. We've got all of our equipment in so far except for our oil tank that had to be built. That should be within the next month. We should be receiving that. Uh, we've got the lift, the air compressor, all the tools that he needs to get to work. Um, He's been maintaining the cars at a pretty high level. Um, we're stocking parts like the oil filters, air filters, cabin filters, anything that he needs to do the basic services. Um, we're also getting those parts at a lower cost than what we would normally get through a supply house. And they come out and restock it every week to where we don't have to worry about having the parts on the shelf, so it makes things faster for us. Um, our sanitation crews, we have roughly 1,200 residents right now. Um, we have the plans to purchase the 95 gallon cans and issuing those out to each of the residents. That'll help us out on several different issues, mainly with the, knowing who has service and who does not have service. And the Georgia Works guys, they're playing the vital role in supporting that sanitation program being they're the ones on the back of the trucks doing the work. Um, I haven't had any problems out of any of them lately. I mean, they, they're all doing a really good job. Um, and they're looking forward to being hired on full time under the sanitation part. Because that was part of the agreement that if they wanted to come work for us, sanitation would be their way of getting in. Um, have we addressed, um, I guess it would be through code enforcement, about informing residents about the sanitation um, service? and when and where to put their trash yeah. and lawn bags. And they're, well, they're given a, a secondary thing when they're doing the proud programs, mm -hmm. when they're notifying you of your subdivision proud program, they're, they're adding additional pamphlets to it. One of those, of course, is leaving them garden service, uh, traditional you know days and times for it. Um, at least that's what they did for now, and that's just something they're putting on the mailbox. And Haley does that when they sign up for service, too. Well, we need to continue. To well, we need to do a, a campaign, a blast. Right. We have those that do not have service, so 
you know, I think they should get something as well saying what you cannot do with your trash and your limbs and all of that. Um, piling up in, on your trees and putting them in the creek or putting them on the back fence, making a haven for snakes and all these creatures and critters and stuff. Because you don't have the service doesn't mean that you have to, do not have to dispose of that stuff properly. Um, you know, Victor cleared out a tarps from a mural that was overhanging in the creek full of trash and TVs and everything, you know, that was back there. So the people get creative, you know, to prevent, I mean, to keep from paying. And it's, I think we need to do more of, you know, notifying them uh, of our expectations. So if we can just put it in the newsletter, put it on the sanitation bill, you know, please be mindful of what you're doing with your trash, you know, and to those that don't have service, periodically, you know, uh, if you're not disposing of your stuff properly, you know, you'll get cited as well. <coughs> so we're about to send out the sanitation bill, so we can probably add something to that. Yep. And we are getting the trifold stuff too that we can do. Um, well, we just did that, so um, it'll actually be it's usable for other things. Right. Aside from just doing our sanitation building, so we right. can do, you know, targeted mailings or anything else with it. And, and the flashcards we use with the, the multi language in it, you know, highlight points. What way we got that down to the science? I mean, maybe not the science of getting it out in like a blink, but there is a science to, to getting it out. And I think people need <clears throat> to know. We need to let them know what they cannot do, you know, and right. be specific because. Uh, <laughs> A first message can use utilize our um, quarterly newsletter mm -hmm. where they have been written. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have so many ways. Well, now there's one that's already done and published and ready to go out for June that's sitting back here, but mm -hmm. on the next one we can endeavor to do that. So I'll make sure we get right. that. As you know, right. with bylaws, if you don't put it in there, they say that you didn't, I didn't know. Oh, yeah. So oh, exactly. everywhere we can, you know, let people know of what they can and cannot do. As far as code is concerned, I think we should. You know, take one of the things we have been talking about, um, I don't know if, uh, how close we're to implementing it yet, but is doing, um, we want to do a, um, it's a public, basically it's a it's a blast, a weekly code enforcement snippet, if you will, mm -hmm. when we get the new website, I think it's going to be something we're going to push out on there. What about the digital stuff here? I mean, when oh, we're, we, could just, we can just run stuff periodically. To, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're doing a beautification project for citywide and we expect for the, everyone to participate or something, something, you know, and just put it on in their, you know, thing. So people riding by, you know, I'm not on Facebook, I'm not a, I don't know how to use this website. Well, we, we have it here as well so when you're writing. So just, you know, we will start to make sure it's. Especially during the, <coughs> during these months when it becomes so popular to illegally fit <laughs> Exactly. On the trash cans, you know. Litter, garbage goes here. No. <laughs> I had signs made when I was over in Jonesboro, and uh, I actually got the idea from that in Florida. And it said free yoga at the top. And at the bottom of it says bend over and pick up your trash. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, yes. Right now, we're still running the sanitation five days a week. Uh, the bulk pickups right now are running on Monday and Tuesday with the occasional call ins throughout the week and getting those picked up as well. Are we going to stay at two days for bulk? It's pretty much an everyday thing. Whenever they call on the t two days or the main days, they take do the whole city in two days. But then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are the, just the call-in days. That's the way we've been running it right now. We can't modify that. Okay. Uh, because I mean, to have I trash think, sitting out I think, I think every day. Plans, but are, is it in this one, or is it where you're headed later? It's heading later. Not right now. Um, but but we're still trying to stabilize. His, his budget went from you know not a whole lot to at least something. Um, but there's something you know behind it, but we've got to. I mean, it's some capital costs. I got some ideas that we can talk about. I do just to, just to give you guys some ideas of what we're looking at because <clears throat> it's actually a really expensive presentation. Yeah, <laughs> it's, but it's just the CPI. We met with uh, Waste Pro, and it's just CPI costs. I mean, diesel's going up to 45 percent monthly. Every month increases, so I know they're going to pass around. He wouldn't give me any 
asking what three you times mean? your CPI increases. Well, it's not your time yet. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'd like to know. So, yeah, they're, they're waiting until the last minute to release it. Uh, we've got a couple of departmental goals that I would like to achieve this year. This is the biggest one right here. <clears throat> Wanting to start a seven day work week through in public works. Uh, the city doesn't shut down on the weekends. We should not either. Okay. This will cut down on my overtime. It'll increase productivity because if it rains on Monday, I'm not able to cut grass or do anything until Wednesday or Thursday. And if it's not raining on the weekends, I'm losing those two days. Uh, so my plan is to roll us into a seven-day work week, run a Monday through Friday shift, Wednesday through Sunday shift. Sounds good. Also, um, <coughs> we uh, excuse me. I'm still there. Um, we we had visions of greatness um, with like a reset crew. You know, you've got a lot of activity. You know, eleven to five, six o'clock in the mm -hmm. morning and just the opportunity to maybe strategize. If you're thinking in that way, a seven day work week, you know, maybe a reset crew mm -hmm. so that when businesses and homeowners, you know, perk up seven o'clock in the morning, driving down 54, wow, it's like magic, it's fresh. It's clean. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah we're, we're losing a lot of time on the weekends, uh, especially, especially when it rains. Luckily we haven't had any rain here lately. It's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, Grass hasn't been growing near as fast, but once it starts raining, it's coming up. Um, another thing we'd like to do is I'm trying to become an accredited public works department through the APWA. We'll be the only ones in Clayton County with that certification. Nobody else has it here. Um, the APWA would actually come in and audit our practices, our procedures, to make sure that our department is running at or above standards for any public works department. Uh, that would also, you know, make sure we're providing our best service to the citizens. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, we're going to recover from, you know, the past few years of downfall in the department. Um, we want to become more involved with events. I would like to get the public works crews more involved on a daily basis. That way the citizens know the public works exist. Uh, you know, I've told them before that, you know, police and fire always get the attention. You know, they've got the shiny trucks, they've got the fancy suits, they've got everything else. And public works, they always think the public works don't get seen the same way. And I told them, you've got to present yourself in the way that the police and fire do, if you want that same amount of attention. So public works needs to be more involved <clears throat> with the citizens than they are now. Don't pick your garbage up on Tuesday. Don't know where you live, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <They know it. laughs> and then APWA also has some training classes. I'm going to send all the guys through those classes. Those are usually free, um, and they'll, that'll help them. You know, further their career with the public works. With that accreditation we were talking, and that, that does give us, if we're with, if we're with Germa, because we're missing out without being with Germa, which is, I want to examine, you know, just get through the budget stuff, but not being with Germa, we're missing out some of the, some of the, like the police department certification. We don't get our insurance kick on that because they're certified. So, um, this is another one I think we get, if you're with, the, with Germa, that you get a discount on that as well. So, anything we can do to drive our insurance costs down that. It definitely helps. And best practice. Right. Does this, um, would that qual does the public works department ever qualify for any types of grants for equipment or anything they like that? Yes. So sometimes sometimes yeah, when they do those things, that's one of the things they look at. Yeah. Well, when you're looking at parks and training and things like yeah. that, the, the answer really is yeah. yes. And well, I don't know that we've done a, a, a good enough job recovering grants. I mean, it used to be it was a million dollar industry. You know, then technically our grant administrator became our city manager. Right? Mm -hmm. And then at some point, the city management stress level, you reduced the reliance on the grant level because it's a different process. And then there was no money for a while. Um, and as you kind of pull back, you know, you, you get some easy grants, you're going to get some stuff from the fire department, you know, the stuff that's almost a gimme. You know, but the, the, the harder things, the, the real grants where you got to lay a foundation and then, you know, put some study money in and then do the other things and the 80-20 match and things like that over a long period of time, ARC stuff and uh, Department of Community Affairs. I'm not so sure with the exception of your trail grants, which were, you know, foundation related. Um, and we got a little bit with the help of the sidewalk, right, for, for some of that. But if you're really looking at your other traditional grants, um, that there just wasn't enough long bodies left in the building mm -hmm. to be able to pursue that with the time available. 
what I seriously think, with the exception of the original seed money, right? To, to get the grant, you got to put the time in. So it's an upfront cost all the time. And then later, when you get that chance to rob the piggy bank one more time because life got sad, that's usually the first thing that goes. And, and you just want to say, try not to do that. I mean, I know it's complicated, but you got to just say you're robbing your future. So I, I think your grants will take a, a completely different approach Maybe not so much as how your budget is written, but certainly how your staffing will end. You know, stabilize okay, your staffing and the rest of it will take care of Hiring a grant person? It's either that or allocate a certain portion of somebody's time to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, I mean it comes to and all of the Yeah, I'm not, gonna, I'm not trying to be empty, but I mean, those are something where you need some specialization and some time and some. Yeah. Some uh, acumen and doing some other things. You have to have a familiarity with finance and everything else that goes along with it. Not just need some more. Well, I just, I mean, I think we are missing a huge. We're missing out on a lot of stuff. Because they're just, they're missing a few things. But we uh, got to have a nice little play. From there, we'll maximize the opportunities. Yeah, the other resources. Oh yeah. Allocating. Because yeah, there's there's a few things that we all know headed in the right direction going well and some other things we, we kind of padded it and it's just sitting there it's just sitting there. it's just the only way to say it um and you're going reallocate that time or reallocate that resource that's the best that will work um take a little bit more discussion than this one. all right that's my end of my presentation you got any questions for me let, let me ask this question and, and this is the political question behind this um you know, we know we're having issues at Northridge on sanitation, and we know that they've been basically just throwing their garbage out at the curb since 1985, with, with some theory that, you know, they're exempt. They, they were never exempt. You know, the city just didn't do its job. It, it really comes down to something this simple. Are we allowing people to continue to throw the trash at the curb? And I don't even see how any standard allows you to do that and I'm surprised the health department hasn't come in here and just given us a hard time. Um, so, you know, we're working to facilitate, when I say facilitate, we're looking for solutions, real solutions that make sense for everybody. We, we don't have our solution and we're gonna shove it down your throat. It's, it's a case of you tell me what you'd like to do. And we thought we were making some pretty good traction with that. I think at their last HOA meeting, they basically said, oops, sorry, HOA is gonna take a step back, call it a city of moral problem, yeah. and you're going, um, I bet you don't, right? Because it's not a city of one apartment. Just because you have a higher density, our apartment complexes don't throw the trash at the curb. Are there solutions? There, there are many solutions. It's just some of them are expensive, and some of them are um, are different, right? It's just not what you were doing. But the, you know, the, the last little conversation we had with them, it was kind of like you're talking about nothing. Yeah, it's it's now your problem. And you go, I don't think it is. Um, I'll help you. But if you're just going to step away from it, then I think their HOA is going to be in court. But you got to be prepared to understand that. And, and, and the homeowners, they are paying. Oh, their HOA crazy is crazy. It is. That's ridiculous. And we've offered to you know, look at how their HOA fees are spent. Sometimes when you do crappy maintenance in an HOA, what happens is your insurance costs go up. That's just how it goes. You know, you don't fix the roof, the roof leaks. You damage the unit below it, and you have to repair that. The insurance covers it, insurance costs goes up. Insurance costs, just because you repair the roof, don't go down instantaneously. It's, it's an experience ratio. So you have to be better over a period of years before that number comes back down. But that's where they're paying their taxes, their insurance, and different things along those lines. Um, no one's really brought their book, if you will, to kind of lay out how that is. And again, that's not our primary responsibility, but if they'll show us what they have, we can compare that against the industry standard. We could take it out. Um, some HOAs actually hire a company, and the company goes in and does a capital audit to, to kind of say, you know, are you robbing from the roof? Are you robbing from the road? Have you set aside enough? They should have set aside a gold mine because they're charging like $350 a month. Um, and that is having a direct impact on the resale price of the units. 
So if you manage your, if your HOA manages itself poorly, it gets very complicated to dig outside of that mess. That's more complicated. I think you'd be helpful there. We've got bright lines. But I do think they have to be, I mean, there's, there's no other way to say you can't throw your garbage on the curb. You know, that, that's a, just the one part that's not going to change. The health department is not going to let you. We shouldn't have let you this long. Um, we're trying to be reasonable. I'm open to solutions. Uh, show us what you got. But if you're going to not follow a solution, if you're going to threaten the city or the garbage company that says, if you drive down my road, you know we're going to give you a hard time. Well then, okay, we won't drive down your road. That's the choice, right? But how are you going to do that exactly? Um, and of course, their answer is throw the trash on the curb have Billy Bob pick it up in a pickup truck and go on. The rules don't allow you to do that anymore. But politically, someone's going to basically come in and say, that doesn't matter. Uh, it does matter. But think about it, because that's good, you know, and we can't solve that but I think here today. But that is one that's in play. Um, we could show you some real options. They're expensive. You know, if they want, you know, I don't want to call it back or, but you know, on the back of Woodstown, you know, where they have their containers. You know, there's, if you've never had a container back there, you're always going to think, well, that's going to smell. Well, right now you're leaving it in your house. But you're getting twice a week service. There's nobody in the city who gets twice a week service. Yeah. And, and you're going, I, I don't know how to help you there. Um, and if you really get the true picture, you know, the picture isn't, you know, pretty little brown bag all tied up, everything's there. It's Friday night's pizza box, leftover milk container, everything that's just being chucked out there. And, and you're going, you know, that's ending up in your potential pond and we'll keep up these other things. Um, so just, just, I know it's going to be a political challenge, but it's it's not a 100%, you know, Mark's problem. It's an HOA problem. So we've never gotten to the place where the dumpster was actually placed out there. It wasn't placed because the, there, there were several questions about location. And we own a piece of property on the back of Adamson Parkway. And our, our solution, our possible solution, was you know, the city can you know, enter into a license on a pathway. There, there's a reason you do license and not say. So we charge for our resource. Okay? Every, every container is paid differently by somebody else. So if, if your issue is, I just don't, you know, the piggy bank is dry, John. I don't have a way to buy land, put a pad out there, and do all these other things. You know, then what you do is you come up with a solution first, cost effective, and then if you're gonna have additional services, then that's built into your price. Because remember, over there, there's 200 and some people in a very small space, and you're going, you know, we got a public works crew, not that, but a sanitation crew that would be doing public works. You know, just like anybody else, you know, if we have to get out of the truck and clean it up a little bit, I won't charge you for that. But multiply it by 200, I bet you the price could be pretty competitive. And you do the license so that the city has the ability to get on its own property. They can use it, but you still own it. And that way you don't have to sell it to them. You don't have to worry about a lot of other things. I mean, go in there and maintain it. Um, and that, believe it or not, the HOA, the entire HOA board was agreeable until they got into their last meeting. In their last meeting, that was moot. And then they came back and said, not our problem, you tell us what we're gonna do. And we, uh, we haven't responded back to that last piece yet. Um, so there was a solution. They agreed to the solution. The people who put them on the board disagreed with the solution. But then basically saying, if you get our property or tear it up, you're gonna have a problem. So then you default to, okay, um, you have to stop putting, you have to stop throwing your garbage at the curb. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll have to put them under some pressure to get them to understand that. Um, but there are a lot of residents over there that don't want to continue to do that, put the trash on the, at the curb because it's they're, causing They're, they're more using some very so. interesting arguments. Like one is just says, and you're a senior citizen, I'm damn near there, at least I qualify for the 55, 10 cents off or whatever it is, um, is that they don't have the ability to take their garbage out. And, and I'm like, gosh almighty, you know, if you own a house here, you still have to take your garbage out. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, 
if you're over at Woodstown, you still have to take your garbage to the king. But those containers are like a lot of this. You can drive around. It was going to have a yeah. loop around it where they could chunk the garbage. Yeah. Car. yeah, so to me, it's it's, um, it's a red herring. You know, you're just throwing everything in the way that sounds like a good idea, right? It's obstructing a necessary change. It is. And you know, it's, rather it's, than just finding a solution and the pain points you endure, you, but you, you know you have to have a solution and it's going to change the way you're doing things. And people hate change. Correct. Mm -hmm. But there are some options. We'll, we'll bring those because I, I have no problem facilitating right? with just one cabin. You're not going to jump at the curb anymore. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the one that will not change. Mm -hmm. and, and if the city just would stop standing in the way, I think the health department would cite them in a blink. And you just get Right now we're saying we're, we're working on a cooperative solution. And we have been for months in, in Paris. Um, but there's a lot of things going on in the city too. So, you know, we can't, we can't be everything to everybody. Yeah, sure. um, but just, just be aware that as they, as they come to see you, you know, just, just, you can't give up the first part because it's not a city of more deal. The, the, I think the health department the, is going to send the I, court. I think the health, not our court. I think the health department should be involved in more more things in the city um, that that the city can't. Most of the time, they control. go to restaurants and grocery stores now. But, exactly. But they'll they'll you know and in fairness they they're giving you polite notice right they're, they're kind of like hey I'm not sure that's a good idea um, we wouldn't let anybody else do it yeah some, but some but politically people. ask the same questions. Okay, guys, what's your solution? And, and to date, they don't have one. Um, we've, been, we've been talking about this. Well, for I know, I know, just for me personally, going into some businesses, it's claustrophobic. That's that's a, a not a health department issue. That is a fire marshal issue. You got to have three feet of fire lane to walk through there. And some of the products you can't even reach. I can't reach the ones at Home Depot either, so I don't know. <laughs> it's outside the city. But, but I agree with you, and uh, I, I think I understand the reason. But I mean, there should be, um, you know. Yeah, but it should look like a junk shop. Exactly. Yeah, and we we let it get too far. Mm -hmm. if, if you've seen us, you know, you know, Victor. Some days I love him, and some days I just you know want to push him under the bus. Um, mm -hmm. But um, he's the beast. Of the but they are he's making the they are making progress. Yeah, I, yeah, and I can see I can see in uh, certain areas too, but. Um, a lot of the businesses in the back, you know, they're just, right. you know, a rat and whatever. Well, you got South Lincoln Court on Tuesday. They pled no one, which is guilty. They haven't paid a business it's license in four contest. years. <clears throat> right, so they're about to uh, pay you yeah, the, the fine. They're willing to, to. I don't know what happened because they should have found an attorney, and I have no idea why. And then she pled no loan. Mm -hmm. So they're paying sixty-five thousand dollar fine. They're paying. Uh, they have thirty days to improve their properties, or else they're going to get tagged with. They reduce that to fifty dollars a day, but still, they're motivated all of a sudden to do some stuff. So it is. Not every day. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta spread it out on everybody. You know, we're making the effort to make the city look good, so we can't, you know, scoot around these and come back and put the hammer down on those. So, you know, we gotta, well, they are pursuing those guys. Are, they've got a list of non-paid. Right. Uh, that Denise produced for us, so that we can go out and <clears throat> kind of focus on that. At least one day we should be going out and notifying them and saying, "Hey, and they're, we're getting quite a bit of movement." There's like a and law enforcement does have the authority, right, uh, to do their jobs. Code enforcement has. Yeah. Okay. They have a lot of people do all kinds of stuff. We've had some really interesting discussions in here. That's so why we're getting that drone that's going to drop stuff on them if they don't do. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have to really have their backs because. We're asking them to do a job, and so you know, Mrs. So and So, I don't, I've never had to do this, and I've always no man, well, or no sir. You know, we, we're we're in well, a new phase. They, but they still have to have a little common sense. Your, your subdivision held up really well. Um, I could take a different subdivision on the other side of town where, if I enforced at the same level of your subdivision, they'd come over here with pitchforks. It's too much, too fast. You know, so you have to maintain yours or keep up on your section. The other section, you start wherever you start at. You say, you give me the top five people in this subdivision who are just a pain. We're going to go get them. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's has any people. I mean, you know, but, let's go with men. But here's how you know that you're making progress. First, you physically can see it, right? To some degree, it's not perfect for everybody. But you're, you're not getting, you know, 15 angry citizens in here at one time. You know, it's people who have to climatize to the fact that that's not letting you get away with murder anymore. Um, and that person gets cleaned up. Then the neighbor sees that, and they start to feel better, feel better. Um, multiplied by time, multiplied by forever, and you'll get what you want. Yeah. And I just think it's not right. Well, it's it's not extremely fair. important for the city to you have know. its properties cleaned up, too. And now you've got an interchange. That's yeah. a class interchange that you can invite people to. Oh, but I'm, I'm hearing people, you know, I've been here forever, and if I hadn't done that, I would have had tickets stacked up to here. And <laughs> there are people that have been, you know, it's like, why are they letting these people do this and those people, and I can't, and, you know, I'd get a ticket if I didn't because There's they expect me to, so. you know, continue doing what I've been doing, you know. And we so really how do you answer that? Well, they're split you? up on their deals because there, there are two of them. Here we go large amount of stuff yeah, yeah. and they're trying to do so one kind of focuses on businesses and then the other one's kind of doing mm -hmm. residential but they mm -hmm. yeah. they're trying to figure out the best way on the workflow that mm -hmm. they can do what needs to be done and then just have to let yeah, them know we're, we're on the case right oh yeah well there's going to be we're looking at an <laughs> iWork software that is um i have to do a, a demo for you guys one day here shortly but it's um it's going to put everything together as far as business license and everything else and code enforcement literally pulls up our GIS data so you can go to a plot, a plot and look up a uh, address and then click on it and tell it has a business license, um, what the status of the business license, paid up, uh, any code enforcement activities for the status of it, you can drill down into each one of those categories to see where they're at just on that property. So then you're gonna have a visual, visual, uh, visible headpoint on there where you can go and say it's yellow headpoints for the people with code enforcement issues, business license issues, whatever. So I was gonna say one more thing. Use the drone on Meadowbrook. <laughs> All right, your um, other questions for Brent. Um, I do. Um, there are quite a few signs that are knocked over on the ground. Yeah. You know, historically, when paying attention during the PowerPoint presentation, <laughs> <laughs> we have been replacing a lot of the white street signs out here. Okay. Um, um, Mount yeah. Zion down by um, what is that? Uh, Wells Fargo? Is that Wells Fargo? In particular, that in the uh, boxes that is there, like for cable, uh, I don't know if it's like AT and T or yeah. something that are oh the smaller yeah. lighter green yeah. ones that are yeah. knocked over and whatever. Like, but yeah, one of the other issues as well is that uh, the tree trimming on the right away, I mean on the streets by the stop signs and stuff like you gotta that. Gotta be able to see the signs. Right. We're going to do a, a major overhaul on signs to where you can see them. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been putting out the white posts mm -hmm. gradually. Mm -hmm. you know, as it rains, we usually right. put the post out when the ground's soft enough to actually dig into. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been taking a pretty big hit on the post and the signs. And like I said, I put in an order for you know, 50 signs mm -hmm. about two weeks ago to where we can get a lot of signs knocked out at one time. And then I want to do a sign on it this winter where we can kind of grade each sign, saying what shape it's in. That way we can get it on a rotation cycle. Yeah. Being able to play it. Also remember, you've already budgeted money for some road replacement, as well as some streets uh, striping, like real striping, so you can actually find a lane. Um, but that's usually the county's GDOT that, that basically facilitates that with us. We're responsible, we don't have that equipment. And, and let's just face it, you know, they, they have a big county that like to do their projects for some of those folks over there up for re-election. So, you know, once DeMont, you know, wins his election, you might actually find you have a little bit of time left on a street truck. Yeah, because they won't so, tell us when they're doing yeah. And, and uh, the median along Mount Zion, are we going to... Um, we've had discussions. I, it's either in play or it's done, play. one or the other. Which one did you get? It's in play. We're working on Mount Zion right now. We've been working on it this past week in the pine mm -hmm. straw. They're about to start coming back and trimming. Mm -hmm. but, but you're seeing your markers, you see the other things. I mean, are we going to plant anything that can replace any of that... I'm a shrubbery wide or open whatever. on a 1970 shrubbery. You just go for what you know. <laughs> I mean, I don't, don't the hold back based on me. Right there by the by the your pathway. Yeah. What's happening there? We're gonna plant some uh, flowers in that area. Put something else back there. there. We're not gonna leave it dirt. Tomorrow. <laughs> We're not gonna leave it dirt. I'm talking about uh, the bridge over by the Santa Claus. What's your name? Goody. Uh, Goodies. Goodies. Oh, yeah. well, well, there, there, that was one of three medians that were supposed to be in there. 
to you know slow down the traffic on that road, which is still pretty high. Uh, and that just took a, a backseat to so many other things with COVID and chaos. But uh, you know, coming coming soon. Yeah. And I have one other concern. You know, the bridge on the road to Reynolds. <laughs> the church, that little bridge, have you all noticed how there's like a crack in the, it's like a dip, like the one side is getting lower. Right is that there the at road Patricia. getting lower and then the bridge is staying where it is? It, it, Patricia, you know, right on, yeah. on the... On the right line. Yeah, we really, really need to pay attention to that because yeah, most people don't know that, that used to not be a bridge, it's a box-covered bridge. Prior to that, it was a culvert bridge. Okay. We haven't had flooding over there in forever. Or most people don't even remember it. Um, but prior to that, on a big rain, the entire field out there would flood. Mm -hmm. That's why I, really? Kilby's house was built up on the edge. Mm -hmm. Bob could take a boat, but that hasn't happened mostly because of the culvert system. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't, yeah, that would yes. be expensive. So I'd have somebody take a peek at that. Right. Yeah, we'll take a look at that. We'll see what's going on with that this week. Yeah, because it seems to be, I think the crack seems to be getting yeah. wider. So. That was an expensive bridge, yeah. too. I got a feeling so right. that bridge is a box cover bridge. That would be very, that should be a hundred year bridge. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a hundred yet, so I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Any other questions for a brain? Is it SE yes. around the corner? Yes, I have a question. Like, uh, I raised the concern earlier that the fallout from the last file for to me is the wrong file. I do not see the building and crowd here, and I look in the book here. It's not in here either. So public work is the department 4,100, 4, and building and ground should be 541300. Just, just make notes on this, because this, this is higher level stuff here. You're, you're Which one is Just make some notes. They'll find them. They don't have to do it this year. This year, this year. So you can look at right here, this year. So it's, 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 it's not in here either. So it's, 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 it's not in here either. So it's, 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 it's not in here either. Can you resend that? Just that. The Excel spreadsheet. Because it's got it, and it, it's in your time. And then this narrative doesn't have this either. And just look, it's not coming in that either. That's 160,000. So where is that? So this building in the crowd is 54130. Is it what is it? Uh, it's Hertz Park County. Yeah. 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 Ye
I'm in a mindset of moving forward. So they can either keep up or you know, what? It's kind of the way I feel about it. I mean, they've got to. We're going to have a standard, and if they can't keep up to that standard, we're going to do something about it. You know, because this city's moving forward with or without. You know, with or without me, it's moving forward. So nobody's going to stand in the way of that. You know, I'm here to do a job. That's what I tell them all the time. I'm here to do a job just like you are. You know, we're going to do the best that we can do at it each day. So what will be the expect changes in the uh, personnel of your department? The personnel is where we added back to full staff. What does that mean? How many more uh, employees will be added to your staff? No more from where I'm at now. No more. Because this is what I'm seeing. Um, it stay on the budget last this year is two hundred and ninety three. You requested six hundred forty four, six oh four. So there must be a change in, in personnel right here. There was already done it. That's how I've already done it. The, you, the city council's already approved the changes last year. I mean literally in the last ninety days we added people, whatever okay. the people right. were. Then, yeah. and, and say that we're now up to full staff because okay. we were we yeah. <laughs> so I've got I've got fifteen full time yeah. staff. Yeah. Six okay. Georgia Works, four inmates. Okay. So I've got 25 all together in public works. And, and the creative abilities of like the Georgia Works, for example, it's a $16 an hour employee with no benefit package and these other things. I mean, that backs out to a number that's really... It's a very different number from mm -hmm. a full-time employee. Absolutely, got, absolutely. Yeah, so, and, and it's a it's a training experience for them, training. right? These are okay. folks that want to get back into the game, learn a skill, get a job, do different things like that. It's It, it works for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I think then in that case, about growth in that department because there's growth going on in the city. When the city experiences growth, there's going to be more needs. We're going to have to be flexible. You're fully staffed now, but as more projects come online and we see the needs, we might have to add more. They need to add, yeah. So seasonality. Yeah. We used to have some seasonal folks. So the what is the current? The four-year current column, is that, uh, what is that number of months? Which one is that current on the four-year book? Which, I'm sorry? The current year. Is what month is that? We get that data from. So that data doesn't reflect what we're talking about. We make that You're talking about the prorated? The current and prorated, those columns doesn't reflect what changes have been made. The prorated should have reflect that chance. How's your street light? How's your street light? The prorated street light. Like the number of people we were in the last right now to get a count on yeah, what they say. Fortunate that, but I got a feeling it's gonna be a lot cheaper for us actually to actually buy the lights than it is for Georgia Power to come out and do it. Uh, the because they're gonna want to. So set it down up on a contract where we lease the whole front. Yeah, they're gonna want to set it down. 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 They're I think with the splash money that we've got for lighting, I think we can possibly buy the, buy the street lights turn those all LED. Uh, what we'd have to do is, you know, being we have the electrician on staff now, he can go up there, take the ballast out, bypass the ballast. There's an LED bulb you can screw in now that's plug and play. Uh, I've got a couple samples of them at the shop. I think we got a five year warranty on them. It's not a bad little deal. I think the bulbs are running around $35, $40 a piece. So it's not bad, but it's going to take some time to to swap out every one of those street lights. And we want. Uh, we've been working down at the district the past week on the street on the lighting down there. He's been looking at the schematics and drawings from that, trying to find out where it's fed from. Because there's no photo cells on the lights themselves. That's just trying to find the photo cells, see where it's all coming from. But we're getting the lighting down there taken care of. Uh, did they ever figure out on that building on rounds whether that's a steel pole in that corner? We didn't see. Okay. Didn't see. Uh, we did get the lighting out of LCI taken care of where it's not on 24 7. That's not a problem anymore. So we had to move those photo cells, like I told you about, uh, to the top of the the boxes, and now all of a sudden they cut off. Tell, tell, tell them what that was. That, this is just entertaining. Yeah, that on LCI, on, this is the one over by the top. On LCI, yeah. you got the big panel box, mm -hmm. and you've got a control box on the top and on the bottom, right next to your big panel box. The bottom control box inside the little hole was a photo cell. Back in the hole, in the dark, and it was telling the lights to stay on 24-7. So 
So what we did was we moved, relocated it to the top of that base so it knows when it's daylight or not. Is that an efficient installation? <laughs> yes. <laughs> also on rental Efficient road, corrections. On road 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 stay on them. They stay on all the time. We're working on mm -hmm. getting all that taken care of. But one, like the street lights and stuff that are staying on, those are bad photo cells. Okay. So we're working on getting a count on the poles where we can go in and replace the photo cells at the same time as we replace the light bulbs. I, I know. Char, charge, charge your, charge your extension to my time. Um, are we taking care of the Morris now? We are. It's it's a lot. It is a lot. It's a lot. We're taking oh, care baby. of that every day. Oh, well, my plan for that is we've actually, me and Mr. Baker were talking about it last week. I've got one building maintenance guy. I'm going to staff over there full time until this project is done because I'm tired of phone calls. Well, I want but, it done. But so understand where the phone calls do come from. Mm -hmm. The Morris Center is our gym. Mar Center is our gym, so we needed to look good. I think I lost half my hair yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was yeah. so stressed yesterday afternoon yeah. it was unreal. I, I was yeah. chasing FedEx trucks down. I went to FedEx twice trying to find a part. That they said they tried to deliver at 9 o'clock, they didn't. Now, they wound up delivering it to me in the district. I was over there at the district looking at the lighting as the FedEx truck pulled up. Interesting. So I ran. I mean, I'm at the other side of the field. I'm running across the field to catch this FedEx truck. And I'm going, I hope you got my part. And I hope you got my part. And she goes, is this it? I said, give it to me. And I took it and ran. I said, my name's Brandon. Sign it and go. If only it was on video. 22 calls. Oh, it probably was. You pull that tape. No, and so, you know, part of part of that industry, hospitality and entertainment, is it's really about how things look. And so he really needs that support. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we made a main decision on something too. And his issue is hot water. Don't, don't let it get too far away. Well, and, and I know because you I was asking. You can it, wash your hands in warm water. 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 You need a spot. It's important because they. The, 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 the Lunar New Year event, I know the bathrooms, because the bathrooms were being used so much, then it just broke it was out into only hot water. Yeah. yeah. So. I that was the beginning of the thermostat issue. So yeah, you got a water heater. Yeah. The thermostat on that water heater. Yeah, we had a the, the new water heater we got had some issues in it. I mean, when you ship anything with electronics on it, mm -hmm. I mean, it, one little bump can mm -hmm. can cause some problems. So we had the water heater installed. We had an issue with the thermostat. Yeah, but in fairness, the original water heater design was fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, and they don't really make it. Anymore. That was just for the water heater. That wasn't even the that's install. Not, that's right. That's just off the truck. So now you have to make a little bit of a conversion to something that's more like a restaurant, right? Like a real restaurant water heater, which you do. Which means there, there's some things that have to change. And your luck isn't always perfect, no matter what happens when you put it in. That's why it has a 97. But one of the thermostats wasn't on, which means Gotcha. You don't get any hot water. Right. Um, so depending on which seat you're sitting in, the contractor seat that basically said, look, I just bent over backwards to get you a brand new hot water here. You know, this was manufactured in Slovakia somewhere. Um, and then you have the person who's in there going, I don't really care. I don't have hot water, right. you know, and right. you, know, you guys aren't very bright. Um, so so Brand <laughs> Brandon is the new steward of relations. Um, no, but I don't think that's enough yesterday for everybody. So right. No, let's but just I say think that y'all were probably stewards that's too. Fun. <laughs> that's yeah, that's what that's my plan is because I'm actually having a meeting with uh, the board on Monday. We're gonna have it Friday, but with all the stuff that's going on, it got hectic. So we're having a meeting on Monday. Uh, and I mean I've got the list of stuff that tomorrow's center needs. So what I'm gonna do is just station one building maintenance guy down there permanently until this is resolved so we're not behind the eight ball anymore. Awesome. You know, we don't need to be reactive, we gotta be proactive on that building to work. We don't have these issues. All right, Brandon. So dig it. About sanitation and what's important we're looking at the possibility of running in house. So if it's have you got the We're still working the logistics out on the sanitation right now. We haven't got everything together yet because when we present it to you, we want to be able to bring everything to the table and not try to piece meal this together. Okay. Because as far as I see the revenue um, anticipated for next year is stay the same. I don't see any changing in revenue. Yeah, I guess we'll wait. I feel like it's 4,300. It'll show you a better breakdown on there on the sanitation. 
what to wear. What to we're we're going to head down to sanitation no matter what. Just yeah. not today. Okay. Well, we'll wait on here. That's a longer yeah. conversation yeah. than I don't know who this question should be uh, addressed to. Um, can we do something about the shopping carts all over the city? People are just taking them home. That's a crime, right? And, if you steal those, that's a uh, family. And, 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 and books. I'm seeing them all over the place now. <laughs> I've seen them turn sideways on the bus at the bus stops for seeding. I'm seeing no, them. No, not at the bar stops. I'm, I'm seeing them push. <laughs> up in the I mean, I've seen one all the way in my neighborhood and in all of the stores. I think it's, to get the it's yellow. They, they we could have said it's how we make them my neighborhood. Yeah. Hi, I'm sitting down. Hi, I'm sitting down. Miss West waits too much. She says a lot of fun. Get up. Now, now here's something that's interesting, and I know they're going to make a change out here. This is an irony more than anything else. So, so let's just say for like say the last three years, it just wasn't getting done, right? And, and and now for whatever reason, changes are making whatever uh, things are starting, to work, and you're actually getting it done. It, the the irony is the pressure is greater now. And when there was no expectation that you actually pick it up in the first place, now it's kind of like you, you get the first cart out of the creek, and now suddenly somebody wants you to do 800 miles of creek, where before they had no expectation you'd do the creek at all. It's a lot of extra pressure, and and that's what we try to remind them is that as as you keep moving up that food chain, it gets broader and broader and broader, mm -hmm. and it gets more complicated, and, and that's okay. But there there will be a point where issues with neighbor to neighbor mm -hmm. is really the issue and it's not, you know, a, a code enforcement violation, that um, somebody just has an inferior product that we would prefer they not sell um, versus, you know, just be a mess. Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen some of that already. We've had uh, yeah. a, a vape shop that wanted to open up an adult novelty store. And you're like, really? I think no. And they're like, well, you know, we think we have the ability to do that. And we're going, well, I'm thinking in this particular case, it wasn't going to happen because we knew the people who owned the property. You know, that's not going to happen. You know, but you do put people on notice to say your vape shop is going to start to um, head into town as an adult novelty shop. Yeah. Be warned. And you won't like that at Atlanta all. Atlanta had a, a place that was women's lingerie and it turned out to be adult paraphernalia. So it's a, do it's we a, have it's anything? A, it's a zoning issue. You, yeah. You, you give an adult make sure that, ordinance section that's very strong. Right. But it's, you know, they're, they're getting smart. Uh, another one was um, a person who really believes that they can open up a um, little casino slots. Like uh, some, no convenience store. I'm just talking about straight up casino games in the inside. And they were only looking for 800 square feet. And, and you're like, uh, you can't legally do that. And they disagree with you. And you're going, okay, the first thing you have to do is get through the door um, before you have to have that fight. But, but yeah. pay attention. There's some folks out there who really now believe that it's, it's a different ball game. Mm -hmm. And if we're not going through these uh, buildings on a regular basis, eventually we're gonna find some back room that's been doing this for a while, that's now got their profit margins up to something that's obscene, um, and uh, the fight's gonna be real. Anyway. Yes, let me just watch this error. Rise is going to be cash, or how they pay for it. They, they, they can't do the price in cash, but yeah. 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 What, what yeah. They, it says no. Well, nominal might be $300, but somebody else says nominal is an iPhone 13, and you go, no, that broke the barrier. So there's some sort of activity there. And if the cash flow is great enough, then they, they hire good lawyers. Anyway. So, so uh, miss, uh, miss uh, last, last question from Public Works. Capital LA, uh, are you going to have any significant chance, any, anything on planning for next year? Um, we've got some um, parks and rec upgrades that we've got on there. Uh, okay. Possibly a couple of vehicles like that you're gonna be able to find them. Um, but we put it in there just in case we were able to find some use ones because we're still short on vehicles. Even though we ordered the gators, we're still short on actual trucks. Uh, so we've got that in there and then just okay. a couple of small items. 
Good job, Brad. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, SE is the longest serving in mm -hmm. the city of Mora. And are. the shortest <laughs> presentation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you know exactly how we think. <laughs> All right. I'll yes. Yes. I'm like, did John say is he supposed to be here at nine? <laughs> oh no. Thank you, Thank you. If Dorothy would stop talking, we would be in good shape. <laughs> well, Dorothy wasn't the only one. I think I heard your voice. Good morning, everyone. He threw it back to me. Okay, gotcha. This will be short. I don't know if you'll think it's sweet, but it will be short. We think Nothing. you're sweet, Thank you. Oh. Do I get points? Do I get three good points? <laughs> Always. Okay. I noticed the good candy was on your side. I was over here with Twizzlers. <laughs> okay. This is court and administrative support. I keep clicking. Uh -oh. Is one thing at a time? Go. Okay. You just got to click the right button. Well, I click the same button. Late out of work yesterday. <laughs> Hi, I have two staff, which is Denise, who's been here since September of 2011, and Sapia, who was hired on September 3rd. Sapia. And then there's me. Yes, Sapia, not Sapia. <laughs> okay. Training for my replacement. Mm. Denise. That's a whole slide. <laughs> <laughs> Denise has been here since 2011 and she has expressed an interest in it. And in order to train Denise to take my position, I need to hire someone for the front desk to replace her. Because until we get someone else at the front desk, I can't start to correctly train her. And, you know, I have been here a long time, so it's going to take a lot. And I understand that stuff that I used to do that she won't be doing. So what I'm concentrating on with her are going to be is court and business license. You know, we no longer do property tax. And I really appreciate that because that was a nightmare. But I do want to get someone trained and Denise's position so she can start training with me on a daily basis. Okay. Didn't we pull the trigger on that anyway? Have we already done that? Well, you said to go ahead and, but I am budget conscious. I'm like, it wasn't budgeted for, and I know that we don't have money just raining. Just, just so. go ahead, good. We, we don't have a choice. All right. We currently have nine sessions per month of court. That's two bench trials, five arraignment, and we used to have jail court, but they haven't opened it back up for court. So we do our violation of probation and the camera tickets here. And once a month, on the third Thursday of the month, we have an arbitrator and code enforcement officers that meet with business owners to educate them before they are excited to come into court, which, I want to say it's about 50-50 because some people will come in and others won't. So the arbitrators told code enforcement if they won't come in, just cite them. But when they come in, I think it's more of an education. I mean, Andreas, he's our arbitrator and he does a great job explaining and he's sympathetic. But he makes sure that they receive the code if they have any questions, you know, he will answer them, or in this case, now he has Victor, because it's not the goal to get them in court, but to get them up to speed as far as our codes. So he's doing a great job with that. Quick question. You give them a chance to correct any problems with, before being cited? Correct. Are these new? businesses or are these repeat offenders? Well, that's the thing. Once they come to arbitration and 
the judge writes up what they're supposed to do. They have to sign it. They receive a copy, we keep a copy. And Victor is instructed to follow up to see. So we have had, maybe in the last year and a half, two repeat offenders. But the arbitrators told Victor, if they hadn't you know, met the requirements, just cite them. Don't bring them up to arbitration because everything is thoroughly explained. And for training, all employees have to be GCIC certified, which is renewed every two years. They have to pass the security and privacy test yearly. And we have to redesign an awareness statement. And the security and privacy is saying that we know we are running people's histories. We cannot discuss it outside of court because if you do, there's a $10,000 fine and imprisonment up to five years. And they have to sign that awareness, awareness statement saying, yeah, we took the test, we understand. Business license. There was currently, and I'm sure that's changed over the last two weeks, there was 532 businesses in Morrow. That's home and box stores. Application for renewals are February 28th. The due date is April 1st, and what I didn't put on here is that she sends them out at the end of November. That gives people every opportunity. And Essie will help you if you're running at the very last minute at the last day. <laughs> Let's leave John out of this. <laughs> One quick phone. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, for home occupations, have anything has anything changed on, I know if you're, you can't have um, your signs on your vehicles mm -hmm. in your driveways and all of that on the mm -hmm. front. Home occupation, see, is basically that's your admin office. People mm -hmm. can't come to your house and you can't be conducting business out of your house, you know, mm -hmm. like selling products. It is mainly like your home office. But if, okay, so what I'm seeing is company vehicles and people's driveways, not that bis their business, mm -hmm. right? Well, that's a code enforcement do, do, do violation. You do, do allow that. You know, what's written on the vehicle mm -hmm. is less of a problem. Mm -hmm. What's more of a problem is, you know, John bringing his tractor trailer home and trying to park it in that mm -hmm. section. We, mm -hmm. we know we have some landscaping companies that are bringing, like, the whole trailers and everything else. But is it, it's not their business, the person that lives there. Well, uh, again, that's code enforcement, and there are certain parameters. The vehicle has to be a certain size. It can't be box trucks or anything like that. Right. But if I work for a company and there's a logo on my vehicle, that's not a violation. Yeah, and you drive the vehicle home. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. I can't have my car sitting out there, a truck says Dorothy Dean's home improvement. Dorothy Dean. Yeah, you, you can. But if I have As a home office, I can have a, a sign on, on my vehicle for my business. Vehicle, yes. Yeah. I mean, you could be Amway at a pink car right. and mm -hmm. do that. Now, but, but there are limits, you know, right. in terms of what's right. there. And it's, mm -hmm. um, like I said, landscape is probably the best one because they drive the big fire trucks. They pull, you know, an 18 foot the trailer. Trailers, yeah. well, and you go, you're not that's supposed to have any of that truck. Mm -hmm. Or no, that's you're enough. supposed to have well, one in a garage. I know stuff like Avon or whatever, that's permissible. Well, because well, you can't differentiate. In other words, Giant's towing service. Yeah. Oh, well. I got a tow truck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this was done. So there, there is some specific rules. Right. But, but it's uh, right. Just, right. just having a, a vehicle with signage on it. It's not a violation. The problem is the vehicle itself. There's a difference between a car, a truck. Yeah. A box truck, basically. Basically, it starts with a box truck, but you can have signs on the field. So they will be You're supposed to be a car sorry, but unfortunately, you can have a person Like Avon. I thought Avon was Oh, yeah. As long as we start with box trucks and stuff like that. And you're going to see that. It must be so draconian on street parking. The increase in the street I don't know. I don't understand that. We got a lot of people. I mean, I know we're going to handle that. Because I didn't see that one coming. I got a lady that was calling on Grace on board, and a truck drove around her parked vehicle and just about took her out. So she was not happy about that. 
I went to New System. I went to New System. I went to New System. I don't know if we can set it to New System. I'll get you the right person. But we're not allowed to have that, period. Well, and this is just my personal opinion, no box truck. When it comes to a lot of the parking on the street, because we have had people in arbitration, and with these paths split, mm -hmm. they're thinking, well, there's four people, everybody got a car. Everybody got a car. Well, we got a well, paths split. Yeah, yeah, and, and that, that's what I'm saying. I think that is that's causing that's a tough, lot tough, of problems. Tough, 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 tough. So before we go down the, the path split road, because I do want to hear, okay. hear an update. So the business license slide, um, how, um, how friendly is our business license software platform tracking? How well, is that like, for, as Baker as Baker busts out laughing, mm -hmm. so that we'll know mm -hmm. anniversaries, mm -hmm. better demographics. Well, I think with the new software, and Denise did meet with them, mm -hmm. and you know looked at it, and she was very pleased with okay. it. The software that we're using now, before we got the last upgrade a couple of years ago, it worked better because when they converted all the that over and we never could understand well if you were doing it in the old system right. why not the new system right. so hopefully that will alleviate a lot of problems where we yeah. can put stuff like emails and you know yeah. anniversary dates because I think yeah anniversary dates I think, can collect the emails yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we, we may have missed a couple of anniversary dates of businesses in the city where oh, you know, yeah. I might, have seen, <laughs> I might mm -hmm. have seen it on social media like You've been in the city how long? Yeah. Um, so I, I would like for us to, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. make sure that that's addressed. With and that new software, that's and one of the reasons is because it'll actually allow them to collect payments. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to come in out of City Hall. If you've got your phone mm -hmm. that you can upload. Mm -hmm. And to make it more user-friendly for people who don't want to come right. in, like permitting and everything else. But it also gives us a track and a much more robust data capture. Yeah. Where and, now and that, we that's have what I was. Those type of mm -hmm. yeah. In the beginning, it'll be, you know, us having to capture that right. know, information and right. putting it in. But right now, Denise has some email address, but it's only because she's asked people, but it's not in the system, right. per se, you know, right. because yeah. people call it, I didn't get my application, mm -hmm. or... Can you email it to yeah. me? Yeah. And it's written down somewhere. Right. Not mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. the platform mm -hmm. yeah. forevermore. But again, yeah. the and new system pretty. looks like it will work great with that. But, you know, getting it all in and it might be the next business license cycle a bit before, you know, we get it all in. Yeah, so what, Pat Splits, what's going on? Well, you know, there's houses that basically rent room. Mm -hmm. And we have had, well, a disorderly conduct in regular court. The people just don't get along. But like I said, the main thing is the parking. We've had them in well, arbitration. It's, it's their violation of the zoning code. We can't yes. seem to find the right owner because they're playing games all over the place. We're not the only ones who have the problem. Other people right. have the problem. Um, it's this, across is, the south. Is, so is there East. a need for us to create a framework for legislation? Is there, no, there's just is there a, a state we, level We're, we're just going to have to get assistance. on a plane and, 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 and get a site now. So start at the yeah. city level with our own ordinances and if and, and your ordinance is actually okay. Here's the point: is it, it, this is a legal game? You're an LLC, and you, you have a trustee who's moving your LLC around. Right. How do I cite you? I mean, I have to give you the the, the, the citation right. to get you in court. Otherwise, they're, they're not going to show up, and that's their point. And, the, their and yeah, point is we like can't get you game. in court. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what's going and, on. Yeah. And, and part. This is their, uh -huh. their strategy because they're yeah. making a mint. They're Absolutely. making a and sea of money. I don't want to say they don't screen their clients, but I think that's part of the problem because, <laughs> well, there was one that this lady was probably in her late 60s. Well, there was this other guy who was like 25. He was playing music she opposed to, and they were using the kitchen at the wrong time and all this stuff, yeah, and this which is in my opinion... This you know, we shouldn't have to deal yeah, with they're, that. They're leasing 10 by 10 rooms mm -hmm. and common restrooms down the hall. These are, and, there, and there's one three doors down from my house. There's one not too far from you. Right. Uh -oh. And so you're just going, you got to get the owner in court. Mm -hmm. Our system, and this is why. Or the winning. management company. They're winning because our system does not pay enough attention to allow them to have the time frame 
to focus on your case. The amount of effort it takes to actually catch you is obscene, and they are counting on that. Inefficient governments, inabilities right. to talk they, across they departments. They created a framework around yeah. the they're, they're the They're using engines. everything yeah. we have against us yeah. that says, yes, we know we can't do it, but you're so inefficient. Mm -hmm. And, and, and Morrow's better than the county. The county, you mm -hmm. look at the county and go, I have no idea how you'll figure this out. Isn't there still, well, based on the number of rooms in a house, well, let me say, Facility, the bathroom. I mean, shouldn't there be some okay, share of people? It, it doesn't in, mean the code. They're renovating the house without care. There's, there's no question yeah, that, that, that all of this stuff is, is not in compliance. I cannot cite you because I cannot find you. Right. But it's I, I, I talked to Luana about that, and I also talked to GMA because GMA is familiar with the state. When you asked about legislation, mm -hmm. it's not last because they actually had somebody in the Senate who I don't think is there anymore that went to them and said, hey, um, can you support our bill? And GMA read it like, oh, no, because they were actually putting a bill through that was going to push through legalization of the pad split type properties. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, that was, so they're, they're aware of it. Their attorneys I'm in touch with Michael, and they've got a team of three that are across the state trying to pay attention to it and watch what they're doing. So. And you're talking about ruining a neighborhood. That right there, you will have a light out of there, like, and, and you know, you'll have, a, you'll have a the, the issues are real. The, the issues oh. are the personalities between mm -hmm. everybody, yeah. what they're doing and different things. And that's um, why I say they're, they're the, screening the, the ability to pay, pay not. I was going to say they're screening the color of the cash. <laughs> right. Yeah. And not can we not yeah, blend together. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a significant ROI. Yes. That's, that's I'm saying really to realize that, you know, it's being done. And, well, thank you. you know, well, yeah. well, what is she saying? The cash flow might be 60 million. Yeah. There's one. They said 80 million on the one house. It's 11 million. My health is so good. All right, we're not even talking to somebody just leasing out a bedroom. I'm talking to them renovated the house and just for two. I think there's two on Twilight. The We've got a pretty good batch of where they are. But our problem is we need to do that. Yeah. And this so, is okay. this is us. You want to please kill yourself? Yeah. We don't. Well, I know she didn't belong here. That has no chance. They have no chance. Uh, yeah, and you just, uh, yeah, we have got the same problem. Yeah, yeah. 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 seems to be yeah. allowing it to some degree. Right. They're, they're going to allow it until they, they have those real problems. Yeah. 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 And yeah. the first problem is I think we might have missed this. Yeah. They had a fire and the people died. And because of that, I'm saying it's a hell of a problem. And, and, and you're going to have a domestic dispute or whatever. Is that age difference in there? You can call the police department and people now are so trigger happy. Yeah. Oh, that's true. But here's why it works. You pay $500 a month. There is no background check. There is no contract. It's like an Airbnb. Well, it, oh, I didn't even know it, there was no contract. That's even it's, it's creating a, um, an economic benefit for, for a particular group based mm -hmm. on the hardships of others. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. It's just, no, no, no. yeah. People the, that, that are there. The hardships, you know, of, you know I don't, I'm transitional, you know, as they call them now, the unhoused. I mean, <laughs> homeless, you know, mm -hmm. you're in a bad situation, yeah. lost your job, you know, you know you got to have somewhere to live. Maybe your earnings are on the fringes of things, the gig economy, cashless. And, you know, now you're in a pass split, fighting every day with, you know. <laughs> you know, read the statistics on homeless people, 70% of them have mental health issues. That's so true. now you're basically putting a whole bunch of folks with mental health mm -hmm. issues all into the same spot, all right next to your house. Mm -hmm. And then you're wondering, That's you know, why thing. things aren't exactly what Absolutely. they used to be. Mm -hmm. so, well, I mean, That's why they that was some. expected, mm -hmm. really. That was expected after... What we've been through, you know, something... Oh, that's that even above that. Yeah. I mean, these, these folks had problems anyway. Mm -hmm. But, you know... It has multiplied. Society, uh, it, 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 this theory that everybody can take care of every single problem right. is not reality. Oh, right. Well, well it's lastly, <laughs> thanks for allowing me the opportunity to be a part of the moral family. Well, you're not going I, anywhere. I you're not going anywhere. Like you're leaving. <laughs> you got a GPS track in your car already. <laughs> cameras all over. Oh, yeah, that, that's true. 
<laughs> and somebody was tracking you all year. They kept telling us and telling us and telling us where you were. Well, or they were looking for you. Right. <laughs> well, you know how some people are. That's all, right. all I can say. Yeah. Those are those mental health. And they're on this side of the table, and it's <laughs> not me. <laughs> <laughs> But hey, how's the, how's the judge doing? Everything good there? He is. He he's not here as much. In fact, and Jenny has been doing a great job. I mean, she really has. Judge Bray will be here June first, a couple of weeks while Jenny's in training. But court's going really well, except for you know Dorothy's residents when they show up. <laughs> I'm working on it. Honestly. <laughs> We Jeff. And now, I know we've had discussions on, uh, this is a secondary issue, mm -hmm. um, on, on fines and forfeitures. Mm -hmm. When's the last time the fine schedule was adjusted? We know CPI is going up in mm -hmm. different things, but when's the last time we adjusted the fine? The last time that I remember it being adjusted was in 1993. Oh. <laughs> really? Now there has been stuff like state mandated that, that almost stuff. Got my feelings right there. But, uh, mm -hmm. okay. um, there's well, been like state mandated that. stuff. Are you talking about the traffic fine and different things? Yes. Because I'm almost certain we did some adjustment. Let's look at mm -hmm. that. Let's well, like I said, if the state, like on DUI, they will say you have to charge this amount. Mm -hmm. On suspended registration, you can't charge below this. And those have changed. But mm -hmm. And overall. Let's look at that schedule. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, we uh, not know how the new softwares will, will play each other out. Uh, we have we have um, we have metrics that, that people are using should use uh, for certain things, and, and including um, you know when, when you try to figure out what uh, what you're going to make off the fire. Uh, and we know a certain amount of that money goes to uh, mental health and a certain amount goes right. to other things. Jail, you know, county, state, state, state. state. How is it that the, to the, south. the, the right. police department, when no. they're, they're kind of looking at what they're seeing their projections are, <laughs> versus what is the reality of an accounting well, system? In other words, why are, why are they like 25% of reality? They are looking at tickets written. They're not looking at that. Some cases are bound over. Some people go on uh, probation, so it might take a while to collect that money. There are people that we issue bench warrants for and failure to appear in every court, and they're just looking at what's written. But until that money is collected, we don't have it. All right, because we see expectations. An example would be, you know, flock camp. Uh, we just got uh, body armor and all these other things. There's a cost to that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's 70000 40000 mm -hmm. um, and And certainly the, the, the statistical data, and we all know this would be like the flock cameras are, are tagging 750 cars a day. Missing. The, the citations written is maybe four, right? Our percentage of actual capital is very low. You know, so you have a scenario there that says theoretically, you know, it's it's a it's a cost recovery. Like we'll talk about red light cameras, right? It's not so much that I want your money; it's the fact that I don't want you running the red light in the first place because you had people killed, mm -hmm. right? That's that's a reality. Um, and in our case, with what you saw the other day, you know, the guy captures the first two hundred grand. Well, the odds of you getting red light cameras for two hundred grand in this city, we've had red lights before. You're not yeah. going to get it. So in essence, the city's not really going to make any money. Right, that and that's ever, why. Which is fine, away but but we will get. You know scenarios mm -hmm. where you won't be driving through the red lights mm -hmm. as often, which makes it easier on the manpower we have for the city. So I, I like all that, but it, it is one of those. There's such a huge discrepancy between what they feel they're doing and what the accounting procedures, which pay for cars and guns and you know uh, oh, other types of things. Um, you know, the, you know that the, there's not that. Yeah. So if you got to write a check, you can cash. Absolutely. And you know, as I was saying, there are study to appear bench warrants, are, are and they there, there are tickets? times. Are they writing good tickets? You know how they used to stack years ago. Yeah. Right? I hit you with ten things because you had one blue eye or whatever. Um, are they? Uh, well, I hadn't noticed any uh, stacking of tickets, and I've even spoken to people like Keo and things about. A lot of times, the officers need training. 
in courtroom presentation of how to present a case. And I know we have a lot of new officers. But, you know, a lot of times the judge will rule guilty basically on what they're fishing out of the officers, not actually what the officers presented. So, you know, I think they need training on courtroom procedures. Uh, we'll make a note of that because we've the same problem. We, we that's enforcement yeah. was a similar <laughs> problem for a while. Yeah, it's mercy of the court is what I call mm -hmm. it. And we go in and we plead, but we can't. We're, we're, mm -hmm. we're supposed to make our yeah. case. Right. And, you know, from there, the judge is an independent mm -hmm. arbitrator that, well, not an arbitrator, independent right. mm -hmm. judiciary that says either you do or you don't. Right. If you don't make a case, you don't. Mm -hmm. so but good, good job. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. last question. What is the, um, how often do we get the uh, bounce check? Well, we don't accept checks because when I first became court clerk, we did, and it was too time consuming, so I'm like, no checks. We accept cash. Money orders, debit and credit cards. And, you know, we charge a 4% here in the office. And we will tell people when they come up, well, you know, you can go to the post office and you can go get cash in order to save the money. And I want to say this we get some people that are angry, as you've witnessed. But most people leave with a positive experience. You know, because we do take time to explain and try and help them. I mean, People will get upset because if they come in, they want to pay a suspended license. We say, if you don't come to court, the state's going to suspend your license. Why? I've paid it. And I'm like, we're only trying to help you. If you don't come to court, because I haven't put notes in the computer, we advise this person of this. I'm like, if your license gets suspended, don't come back upset with us because we've tried to advise you. But um, our customer service, I think it's off the chart. Well, you, can, you can pay online. Yeah, but it's six percent if you pay online. Yeah, but it's, but, um, but I, I had a lady that was uh, upset with us, and uh, oh, let's just say she got caught by a, a real warm body speeding, and, and there is no debate. The speed she was sixty-five and uh, forty-five, and she didn't like our body. <laughs> And she's it's John. Asking that's asking that's asking that's asking that's I mean, you know, with it, this, her presentation is over, but within the last five minutes, the statements that she's made about training the officers on court presence mm -hmm. and presentation, like, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. Somebody fresh is in there. What, what was the response from the police department when you told them about this? Well, I said, I told Keo and. <laughs> And I've done it over the years with Tatro and everybody. And I just, Keo, I can say, listen. Keo but listen. I think the others hear it and like, oh well. It's she's like crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if John would stop telling people to call me, my life would be a lot easier. <laughs> Emily Smith has started calling me again, <laughs> just on and on. To, to the point where I'm like, okay, let's go outside and talk. <laughs> I'm walking her to her car. <laughs> there, there was a lady I saw on Tuesday. Fair. Um, I did give her your number. Uh, well, well, no, you gave Emily my number years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's the gift that keeps on giving. Um, huh? Is she getting on these streets? Oh, I don't remember. Uh, she but, on Lee Street? Mr. Uh, 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 Ms. Smith? Yeah. I can drive. Her, her fourth house down there, super sweet lady. Oh, yeah. She is. Well, she's you know, is. It's just, you I didn't know you were still here, so let me ask about this. Let me ask about this. She's too close. You know, okay. You can say corners, not right in the corner, but she's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miss S. Appreciate You're it. Welcome. Well, you have to get us back on time. <laughs> Oh, you got us back on time? Teamwork oh, makes oh, the right. work. Mm -hmm. Some people get us off track. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Well, um, you know, you have to stay in the lights long when you drive a bed. <laughs> I don't want to miss you. <laughs> um, I'm leaving here and get my tent and setting up my yard sale stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Selling your women's clothing. That's right. <laughs> Just don't tell my wife. <laughs> well, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> No, morning. I'm not going to oh, say good morning. Morning, okay. We're not going to get it for you. Good morning. Yeah, let me know when you want to start. 
Well, Baker's already Thank seen you. it, so go ahead. Yeah, okay. Well, good morning. Thank you all for the opportunity to come and talk to you this morning. And, and thanks for your decision on the pay raises at uh, the last meeting, too. Uh, hopefully that's going to entice some people that were thinking about leaving to, to stay. And hopefully it will help to recruit some qualified folks, too. So on behalf of all my folks, I really appreciate that. Um, so we have no surprises coming from you, right? <laughs> no. Never. Never. Uh, let me go over the format of the presentation. Um, I'm going to talk about um, about our department, what we've done, what we plan to do, our assets, and what we need uh, in order to be better. And do I have a quicker? That's right there. Ah. All right. So this is our current team. Uh, we have 27 budgeted positions. Uh, we currently have 24 Ooh. folks. Um, we've got three openings. Uh, we just lost a firefighter paramedic last week. He's going to Peachtree City for a lot more money. Uh, but we picked up a guy from Ohio, firefighter paramedic. Uh, his picture's not up here. We didn't have time to make a picture. Um, but this is in order of seniority, so Captain Bonner, all the way down to these three folks have been here less than a year. Um, so we've got a great team, uh, they're young, um, probably the youngest department we've had since I've been here, but uh, they're eager to learn. Uh, as you can see, this is the year of Sweet Morrow, right here, all the way to 34 for Captain Bonner, all the way, and this is Gary Waller, he's our newest guy that I don't have his picture yet, but uh, our median time with Mara, I think it's about nine years, but about half of them have been here less than five years. Like I said, we are very young, but uh, they're energetic, they're wanting to learn, they're taking classes, uh, they're training all the time, getting better and better, all the time. So. Yes. Is there anyone in your department that's Spanish? Yes, yes, Contreras, Kevin Contreras. Then we have, he's a, uh, yeah, he's an advanced EMT. So some of the stuff we've done uh, in the past year, this is just some of the stuff, not all the stuff we've done. Uh, but we gave vaccines, as y'all know, for almost two years. We did that up until January, I think, was the last ones we gave. And then the demand just stopped. I mean, nobody was registering anymore. We were at the college for the last four months, I guess. And even their demand, they were only giving one or two a week. So we said, you know, ours expired in, I want to say March or last month. I don't remember what. April. Yeah, we just made the decision that it's not worth it getting more in, just let them sit here in the freezer and expire. So we're not doing that anymore. However, if the college were to need us, um, we can go up there and work for them. The college will pay our people. We're not paying them anymore. But the college would continue to do that. So we attend all the proud meetings, neighborhood watch meetings. Uh, we do smoke alarm blitzes, carbon monoxide alarm blitzes. Um, we've done the boot drive. Uh, we just finished it last Saturday, I believe it was, and we were about $200 short of last year's thing, but that's okay. We've got four less people this year than we had last year, so I'm not surprised it went down a little bit. I don't care. But, uh, <laughs> all right, who wants to pony up, right. get us back where we were. But anyway, that's some of the, the recent things that... Uh, Quick question uh, about the COVID sure. testing. Um, with recent uh, concerns about new variants coming on and they're saying that the numbers again is kind of ticking up. Um, have you all had any um, health department or CDC conversations? No, and honestly I'm, here, I'm hearing of more people getting it, but as far as our call volume, it is, we get a notification from the state anytime we take somebody that's positive. I mean, we haven't got one of those in over two months. I think the people that are getting it now are not as sick as the earlier variants, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. But One of my folks. Here that there are more breakthrough cases with death. 
I don't know if that's in a more populated area, not in the South Texas area, but yeah, I don't, I don't hear the consistency of information like we did at one time. Right. Uh, one of our firefighters got it a couple of weeks ago, and she lost her sense of taste and smell. She was congested three days and about three days. Mm -hmm. That was all it was good. But, uh, and hopefully that'll be the trend. I haven't heard what you said about the yeah. deaths and lives there. Call by him. I don't know the last time we ran a COVID patient. Was there um, <clears throat> the second booster shot? I guess there, there wasn't really a hard push or, or drive, and that's kind of trailed off too. Yeah. 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 I think the confidence from the public in the, in the shots has went over with it. You hear more and more people like my firefighter that got it. She mm -hmm. was. Triple backs. Yeah, I she mean, I, she's, yeah. Had, she's 35. Yeah, I so. think I've, I've got three, three shots, so I'm just like, oh, another one. I, I was the same way. I almost didn't get the third. So, yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead. Did you Once again, her. I did not get the fourth. Yeah. I did get third. Yeah. Uh, what we plan to do in the future is increase the number of smoke alarm and carbon monoxide alarm blitzes in neighborhoods. Uh, the uh, Red Cross has stepped up and now provides us with smoke alarms. So we're not going to go out and buy as many. Uh, so that's a big help. And they will actually send volunteers to help us do these blitzes as well. Uh, hopefully we'll get back into our schools this year. We haven't been able to get in because of COVID the last two years to teach the fire safety education. We normally do that in October. Uh, we don't know yet if they're going to allow us in, but hopefully they will. Uh, we've got a new sprinkler prop. I don't know if y'all have seen it in the crowd meetings. This is something that Chief Piper applied for a grant from the Home Fire Sprinkler Coalition. They sent us all the components and they sent us a check for $500, which barely covered the cost of the wood to build the prop, but uh, Chief Piper built that thing. So now we can take it out and explain to people about their home fire sprinkler. So we plan to do more of those. And then continued distribution of the residential key boxes. How is that? Very oh, slow. Way. Very slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, um, Mr. Chisney, got him set up. Okay. Got him set up. Yep. Good. So we're looking for more people. If y'all know of anybody that might could use a residential key boxes, we got them, and we'd love to get them distributed. What's the what's the right name? Is it Miss Pauline? Pa Paulette? Pauline? When you come down the back side by the park and the fire station, she's like maybe the first or second house on the right hand side, the older lady. Okay. She may, I don't, I don't yeah. know. She may be someone that, you know, we okay. might want to reach out to. Okay. Uh, she used to own a hair salon in the city. And I, the reason why I'm turning to you because you you know everybody's name. You're um, supposed to. In your subdivision. No, it's, uh, mm -hmm. I think Grace she's on Grayson. Yeah, she, yeah, she's right here. Yeah. yeah, maybe maybe reach out to her and, and let her know. Because I know she was, she was by herself, I believe. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, is that the one that's on this side of, you know, where the, the park system goes through? Yeah, when you it? come right off the path. Yeah. All right. Because you got Oscar two doors down. But um, she should be, should be reason. I mean, she's been around for a minute. Right? Yeah, but she's, everybody she's should in know. In the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she was thinking of her son. And he passed. <coughs> he passed. All right. So the fire department has two major functions. That's prevention and response. So prevention is more than just prevention, as you can see here. Um, we do education, fire safety education. We also educate businesses when we go out and do inspections. Why can't your door be blocked? Why does your extinguishers have to be tested? Why does your sprinkler system? So we don't just enforce the code, we actually take time to explain this stuff. And most businesses are very appreciative of that. Um, we also do uh, plan reviews, Chief Piper does those and fire investigations. So Chief Piper's been a huge asset. I've talked about him in a couple of council meetings, but he's already a Georgia certified fire inspector, certified law enforcement officer, and sworn more police officer. Next month, he takes his uh, final arson investigation class, so he'll be a Georgia certified fire investigator. Um, he does uh, CO inspections, so anytime a new business comes in, um, especially if they're moving into an current building, we have to give a certificate occupancy um, certificate, and we don't issue those, 
but we approve them. We're the final step in the approval process. So we go out and, and inspect, make sure the extinguishers are there, and you know, the electrical room doesn't have a bunch of storage in it, all that kind of stuff. And then when we get through that, we send that to Marty, and she actually issues the, the CO. Like I said, he does all the plan reviews. Uh, recently, he did a stakeout duty <coughs> for one of the homes down at the district, um, trying to catch the would-be arsonist. Uh, he's also on the ring doorbell now for the district. He gets those alerts. I hear his phone just blowing up all during the day. And uh, so he's monitoring that. He's notifying the police when he sees something um, to try to get them to, to catch the folks. Uh, he's in charge of our home key boxes and smoke and uh, carbon dioxide alarm distribution. He delegates some of this to the, uh, the crews, like we do an annual fire inspection at all the businesses. Unless it's a target hazard like a motel or Sherwin Williams or a big box store or something, the crews go out and do those. And that helps us, they get familiar with the building, so if we do get a call there, they're familiar with the layout uh, and dangers in those type facilities. But he does most of this. So our other thing is response. Uh, we do EMS and fire, and then there's another category called miscellaneous calls. But EMS accounts for 74% of our calls. This is of last year's data. Uh, we've saved many lives and improved many lives just as a result of our paramedics and advanced EMTs interventions. They go out every day, do their job. Um, we don't present awards in front of the council because they're just doing their job. But they go above and beyond to give great customer service. It's not just like we're going out and we're robots and we're picking people up, taking them to the hospital. We take time to consult family members that have had a loss. We do a lot that a lot of agencies don't do. So I'm very proud of our folks for doing that. That is instilled by our three captains who have been here for many years, all three of them, 34 years, 20 years, and 20 years. <coughs> And they set the standard for customer service in all aspects of our business. So they're, they're great assets to us. We've got two EMTs that just started uh, Fast Track Paramedic School. It's the only school in the state that offers less than 14 month paramedic program, but they're all in. They go two days a week for eight hours. They get off here, they go to school, they take a day off, they come back here and work, and they go the next day to school. Um, so not only that, but all the clinical hours they have to do. And then within those clinical hours, they have to perform a certain number of innovations. Um, they have to be involved in childbirth. Uh, so they're spending a lot of time at the hospital on their own time as well. So this paramedic's a huge commitment. And that's after uh, they've already become an EMT, an advanced EMT. Becoming an EMT is about two college semesters of coursework plus clinical hours. In advance is another semester plus more clinical hours. So all told, it's about eight college semesters to get to the paramedic point, and about 500 clinical hours. So right now we only have five firefighter paramedics. Uh, we really need to have about nine, so we have three per shift. So we're working to get that number up. What, what do you base that on? Two ambulances and the fire truck. And we would love to have a paramedic on each unit. Currently, we're having to operate one ambulance without a paramedic. We just don't have enough to go around. And in that case, we put the paramedic on the fire truck. So if we get a call that requires a paramedic, the paramedic gets off the engine and rides into the hospital with the, with the ambulance crew. But you almost always have one person off on the shift. And if that's the paramedic, uh, like today, <coughs> on one paramedic on the shift and he's off. So we had to get a paramedic to work overtime today just so we got at least one. So with three per shift, that allows one to be off and we still got one on each ambulance. Now years ago they only had EMTs, so there's EMTs and paramedics and then they set up the separate certification for the advanced EMTs. Correct. So it's, it's like you're halfway there. I, I realize there's some types of equipment that they can't use as a paramedic versus an advanced EMT. But in all cases, you know, in the old days, there, there was no phone in the back of an ambulance. Now there is, and you, you're, you're live time with the ER, with a doctor, a live doctor, telling you what to do. So, you know, you've got better technology, better services than ever in the history of, of mankind, if you will. Um, 
So I, I think everything has a limit. But. Mm -hmm. Oh, when back 12 years ago, uh, we probably had over 20 paramedics. It was ridiculous. Former chief wouldn't hire you if you weren't a paramedic. I mean, we had so many, it was crazy. And I felt like I was a waste of resources, waste of money from the city to be paying so many paramedics. Um, but there's a balance, and, and I, I'm of the opinion that three per shift would be where we need to be to properly serve the city. Chief. Yes. Um, on, the, on the calls that you get, what are, what are some of, or should I say the majority of um, the need for the paramedics? The uh, we get a lot of chest pains called difficult breathing calls that require intervention, medications. Mm -hmm. Advanced CMTs are very li limited on medications they can give. Paramedics can give many more things like saving drugs. So really the drug thing is the, is the biggest difference in a paramedic scope of practice versus an advanced EMT. So we're talking about prescribed drugs and not well, these are drugs that we carry on a truck. I mean, we're well, seeing people who... The difference between maybe the Tylenol and some oh, other... Oh, yeah. Well, some other, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Uh, yeah. an advance can't give morphine. Mm -hmm. So we had a call at the mall uh, the other day. A lady slipped on a pack of ketchup in the food court. Oh, wow. And a lot of slip and falls are insurance calls. Uh, this one was legit. She dislocated her knee. I mean, it was... Well, the truck we sent only had an advanced DMT. They can't get morphine. And this lady was in agony. So we had to call the other ambulance that had a paramedic. So he could administer the morphine. Then he had to ride into the hospital with him as well because you don't use the whole vial of morphine. So what's left, you have to waste in front of the nurse at the hospital. Otherwise, because there's a tracking thing. If we mm -hmm. use three milligrams and the bottle has five, we got to do something with the two. Mm -hmm. And that has to be witnessed at the hospital. So the paramedic had to ride in with him for that, so cardiac arrest, obviously, a paramedic can give much better care. But, but let's, let's, let's look at that in context, though. Um, we're a small department. Our cost for service in comparison to these bigger organizations is, is relatively low. So, you know, it's, it, so that'd be the first thing is to say, you know, you have two ambulances, you got ALS on a truck, but you, you play the percentages game. I mean, any minute right now, two people could have a heart attack at the same time, but the odds of that are much, much lower. So what you're looking at is your call service, and, and you guys get these same numbers I get every day. Um, you know, you're getting a certain number of call service in a 24 hour period, right? And obviously you have a, a higher risk when you have the greatest number of people in a city during a daytime section. but for the most part, you're not getting tremendous numbers, you know, that really, you know, other departments get. And then how many of those, you know, when you start talking about even a smaller number are, are beyond the capacity of what you have? Yeah, you know, again, you know, you could throw money away like crazy trying to handle the 100%, you know, but in any business decision, whether it's SE or somebody else, you have a person at the front counter. It's, it's not designed for that one day where you might have 10 people standing in line. We're not adjusting to the 10. We're saying, how many are in there on a regular basis? And you're going, um, normally it's pretty slow. You, one person is more than capable. How these folks make it up over the years is that's why you have the agreements with the other departments. You have the agreements with the other departments so that you know you, you have greater levels of <coughs> trucks because of the agreements that you have where they will facilitate, whether that's ambulance service, whether that's fire trucks, and that goes all the way across the state of Georgia. Um, you know, where I would spend more time is actually looking at, you know, the response times for the calls you do get. And you know, numbers I've seen, you know, don't reflect, you know, they, they don't reflect what we should have, right? In other words, you know, somebody should justify why it takes seven minutes to get out of the damn fire truck. Um, that makes more sense to me. Now, doubling up on, you know, a theoretical heart attack, a little bit more subjective. At, at the same time, we're not the only ambulance in the, in the county. You know, worst case scenario, you can call a private ambulance if you had to. So you have 
a tremendous amount of resources available to you. It's just what is the method, how do you use it, how do you make it work, um, and you know, how do you track it? And you got good equipment, you have good people, um, but if you don't manage it correctly, you know, then you could you could state whatever you want up there. Um, I can make a basis for several other factors, but that's that's your point. You got good equipment. I, I see where you're headed. I don't have a problem with that, but you know, I, I know we've had you know this theoretical issue where you've got people that aren't there. You don't need another paramedic. You need another person on your truck, and you should already have them. <clears throat> And there's ways to do it, and you know, just being polite, you know, you can do it, or somebody's going to do it for you. Go ahead. Uh, well, that's kind of ask what is the law on how many paramedics have to be on site? Is that for the population? There's no 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 guidance whatsoever. Just that the minimum training for somebody to be on ambulance is an EMT. But EMTs, so there's EMT, EMTI, which is intermediate, advanced EMT, cardiac tech, and paramedic. So an EMT can drive the ambulance, take vital signs, that's about it. An advanced obviously can, can do a lot more than that. Um, paramedic can do the most. Um, but there's no regulation from the state other than say you got to have two people on the ambulance. One has to be at least an EMT. So, so I could drive the truck. A firefighter who's not an EMT <clears throat> can't even be on the ambulance. They can ride in to assist the crew of an EMT, paramedic, or whatever, but they can't be assigned to that unit. So does that mean practically we would need to have at least two EMT at the lowest level for? ambulance to go out to service. We, can't, we shouldn't be a practically because that would need more than one person to live, put the live and everything. So that would be the minimal practice that we can do. Correct. Uh, but you always have to. You're not putting the gurney in the back of the truck with yeah. one. But they do have to be EMTs at least. Um, we require everyone gets hired to be an advanced EMT by their second anniversary. Because an EMT is just, they drive the ambulance and take vials, and that's about it. So advanced EMT is where we need everybody to be. So that's a two year, they have to get that. And then if they want to go to paramedic school, then that's great. But we don't require that. Um, we are situated at too high, Traffic, what state route and Mount Zion Road and 275. So, what is the impact on our our fire department's calls going out on the to uh, accidents on the freeway? Uh, I know that we have. Um, <laughs> running the red light issues in certain locations. So, um, do we have a lot of calls going out on the freeway? It seems to me that it's more than we should have with that little stretch that we have. Mm -hmm. We're out there several times a week, and we commit every unit to that call because mm -hmm. callers don't know where they are. If they're on the way from Ohio to Disney World, and they say, oh, I see a sign. So, we send everybody. So the two units from here will go northbound to Old Dixie and turn around and come back, and the units on Mount Zion will go to Mount Zion and come north, mm -hmm. and we just do a big loop until we finally find it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a few times a week we go out there. Let me ask a question on that <clears throat> point there. Can you, are, with the, using the county's dispatch, you guys able to coordinate with RPD at all on that? Do you guys have any, that like on those wrecks that if we're not, if they know where it is, kind of direct you in, well, or how we, are we doing We that? have their channel, they have ours. We never go to theirs. I mean, if somebody had a gun on us, we'd go to their channel and call for help. Uh, but, you know, what, five cities 
on their frequency. Right. So trying to even keep a mic. So you guys really channel. can't even talk, so they can't help you guide it. I with mean, this, they can come to our channel because right. we don't have a lot going on. Well, with on. this, um, I know we're looking at that software. Are you guys in that software conversion with PD as well, or where they're going to have it in in the actual units to be able to see it visually instead of having to get on the dispatch channel? Yeah, we've had that for three years now. Okay, so well, the, is there a mode? And I haven't asked this question. Just brought it to mind. Is there a mode to communicate with each other on that? Unit you can user. send messages, okay. but that's somebody typing. Gotcha. And all right. I just want to see. What, I mean, there should be a way for us. To, if, if they drop down, do they drop down and guide y'all in on those, or would that? I mean, I think that would be. They never have. Yeah, it <laughs> would be. But right now, we okay. have dispatch. As PD yeah. found it. Let's. Uh, and then they're so busy, they finally get around to asking them. By that time, we've already had to commit northbound. Yeah, because so you're uh, driving all over the place looking yeah. for the things. So, yeah, maybe that'll help us to kind of. Because uh, the police department goes out. On the call, on the right. yeah, they're they're coming going. after or it'll be some probably it's some supposed to be some yeah, yeah, they, 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 they call into the police can. department, who is going to reach out to fire yeah. or yeah. dispatch centralized? They just dispatch, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's it's not it's this whole problem now because it's not coordinated at all. So mm -hmm. yeah, you have to go to different crowded channels. That's why you're saying you can't get on there because you've got the county and five other yeah, cities on there. So. decisions that were made in the past. Uh, we had ambulances, we had a whole system that had non-emergency transport in it, which would explain why you had more paramedics on service, and you all chose to get rid of that. Um, you know, that is no different than an off-duty police officer being over there somewhere else. You had a whole group of people who had a funding source that actually was a positive funding source in terms of how it was set up, so that you had additional resources when you needed additional equipment and you had additional manpower because these were non-emergency transport. Those things could have been shifted. So, you know, designs were put in place over a long period of time to adjust to exactly issues like that. And then just simply because of either incompetence or laziness, you know, you back out of a system. Well, now what's your default answer? You're saying, well, I have problems. Seriously? You know, you create a problem to solve a problem. And you're going to have ambulances that will eventually fade out as well. And you'll have opportunities to get back into that program if you so choose. You know, but the point being is you can't have it both ways. You know, and you have ALS um, fire trucks, which basically says you know, that, that fire truck is a rolling ambulance, right? You can't transport. Well, it doesn't matter if you transport. The point being is I can save your ass. Okay, um, we do it every day. Okay. Yeah, even when we had the non-emergency, we never used it for 911 calls because they were always at appointment schedule, which we had to keep. So, um, next one. fire responses. Uh, that's about 25 percent of our call. Fire and miscellaneous. I just highlight on the structure fires. Last year we had four working house fires: Navajo, Pleasant Valley, and Two on Graceland. 
Uh, the losses estimated 225,000, and including what we saved on the structure fires and the business fires, it's about three and a half million dollars as a direct result of our interventions. Uh, the other calls we go on a lot are assist invalid, person stuck in an elevator, uh, gas leaks, fuel spills, and these sorts of things that make up the rest of the calls. People call the fire department when there's gas leak and there's no gas. Mm -hmm. They call it for water leaks. Okay. We come a lot faster okay. than the plumber does. I was going to say, I see that happen. So, yes. so should they be calling the fire department for gas leaks or call oh, yeah, the gas absolutely. company? No, fire department. And then? Yeah, and then we get there if a lot of gas leaks aren't gas leaks. It's sewer gas or something else. And we have gas monitors. We go in and they will tell us if it's natural gas. Uh, if it is, then we call the gas company. We evacuate everybody and call the gas company. And we don't have to come. And most of them, they can shut the cash gas off. And they'll usually have a professional come out after that. So. So now we'll move into our, our assets, uh, apparatus, so we are good. Um, with the addition of the ladder truck last year, thank y'all again for doing that. We have the best equipment we've ever had in this fire department. There's, we have no wants as far as apparatus goes. Uh, and here's a schedule on the left here of the upcoming replacement uh, vehicles, and it's based on years of service and mileage. So the next one will be in FY26. So we're good for the next three or four years. And that's for the for which what year is the ambulance? The uh, FY26. 26. Yeah. Uh, so you're gonna the whole thing, or can you? Is that one that that's a new one that so we trade traded off something or did something re? I can tell you remember something about my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Not all of them. We yeah. reconfigured and <laughs> right. we built, saved some parts. Right. We right. the started the buying from a company called right. Exelons. Right. And they will take the box off of the chassis mm -hmm. and put it on a new chassis. Mm -hmm. Big cost savings on that. Okay. And you get like a 20 year warranty on the box because they get through the electrical, everything, doors, all the moving parts, they get through it. Okay. So they'll save a lot of money in the future. So. We'll be doing that for that, or not? Or is that one that we? No, we'll we'll have to buy a full ambulance the next time. But then the ones after that will be the okay. remounts. So. Tools and equipment. Again, we're in really good shape on that. Uh, people that come here from other departments can't believe the tools and equipment we have. I mean, it's just prior size department. We're in really good shape. And these power loaders and power stretchers right here, oh, yeah. it looks like it's suspended in midair. Hardly anybody around us, Clay County, doesn't have those. Um, Forest Park has them now. But yeah, that's a huge benefit to our people because we don't have back injuries from lifting the stretcher. Good. I mean, it, it does it by itself. Um, our workout we had, room. We had Essie to test it out too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, workout room, great equipment. Our uh, extrication equipment right here, state of the art. And pretty much everything that's expensive like that, we've got on a grant uh, or yeast blossoming. Very little of this has come from the, the general fund. So the maintenance on the uh, equipment, that like the extricating. Mm -hmm. Tools there. Do you all do that? So, yourself or um, is it sent? we are next month. One of our lieutenants is going to go to Maryland to the plant that makes this. He's taking a two or three day class that certifies him to service our equipment. Right now, we're paying about $1,500 a year for a company to come and do that. So, our cost in this is the, the plane ride up there and his meals. And so, it'll pay for itself starting next year. We won't have that expense anymore. Uh, the stretchers, the power loaders, uh, the compressor to fill our air bottles, uh, cardiac monitors, all that stuff has to be serviced once a year. So we have service agreements with the manufacturers that come in and do that once a year. 
So recent upgrades, just a review, we've got the ladder truck, we've got the cardiac monitors last year, we got a deal on those where they were half price, saved us about $60,000. Last summer we got ballistic vests and helmets for every riding position. Um, that was after we had the shooting at the mall. The decision was made to purchase those. We haven't used them since then, thank goodness. Um, but they're in each riding position on the trucks. The generator for station 32, we have a lot of power outages over on Mount Zion for some reason. It doesn't even have to be inclement weather. Uh -huh. Power was out over there several hours last weekend. I was going to say, Sydney was at Planet Fitness in the power was. Yeah, and it, I don't know what's going on with that grid over there, but we have a lot of outages. That was supposed to be installed in January. It's on a slow boat. Now it's June. They're hoping to get that installed. And we, I know we had a lot of problems last year, too. Problem. Well, we know Help Georgia with. Power, just all those easements we just signed, mm -hmm. that's them replacing, you know, mm -hmm. some of the existing underground cables and different things. So, so we're, we know we're on a, a path, you know, but the question is, is, you know, which one's getting done first? At least we know they're starting. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have the same thing, you know, when they, they rechange some of the facilities over at Southway. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a great opportunity, you know, for George Power to have a new customer that's going to pull a lot of power. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we, we know we're having it at Southway too. Um, mm -hmm. Ask Warren. And City Hall. <laughs> Most of these units were to take the above underground and replace them. Replace so, I mean, it's, yeah, it's going to, I'm trying to think, what going. was that event where everybody had to call? I know I called, I called some people and we were trying to find somebody. Call Georgia Power to get the power on at the bar yeah, Sunday. Yeah, that was, that was small. Yeah. But we've had AMC theaters. That's their, their right. number one complaint. For the area, it's not staffing. It's not that. It's not even theft of cars so, or something so like that. It's how, all about how is power. that affecting our businesses? You know, because I mean, uh, with it going out so so often or frequent. Well, the good news is it's not just one business. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an area of town, if you will. Um, I don't think it's conducive to just or just specifically to Mara. You know, like they're shutting mm -hmm. off Mara. So I, I think it, the area was built up at a certain time. Mm -hmm. but they're having functional problems with that. Um, Georgia Power, I'm sure, does not replace things unless it's on some type of capital replacement schedule. Um, but we do have them in here twice a year. And uh, we know when we received our um, franchise check, we had a very frank conversation with the gentleman here. He, he gets it. Um, and from some of those discussions, you are seeing real progress. Is it as fast as we want? Probably not. Um, but just like the gas lines over right. here on Lake Harbin, at right. least you're starting. Mm -hmm. That's that's important. So, and that too leads me to you know, um, people who are who are medically challenged, you know, that have equipment and stuff at home. Do those people have like, or how do how do we know or how do we check if they have like backup, you know, something for their equipment if they. Mm -hmm. Well, occasionally oh, we'll get a call from somebody that has one of the oxygen generator machines, mm -hmm. you know, that's on oxygen 24 hours and well, power goes out. Well, some people like home dialysis and stuff like that. We don't have any. I don't know anybody that's got that going on. But we, yeah. we do deliver oxygen bottles to your power okay. outages. If somebody is in need, we, we keep a pretty good stock of extra oxygen bottles okay. that we can take out to customers. Who is the Georgia Power person that came from? Do you follow that? Christopher Williams, Christopher Bell, Christopher something. Yeah, I remember his last name. It's Christopher something. Christopher. Yeah. What we, always, here, what we always laugh long about long is, is that, yeah, we always laugh about talent. As soon as you have talent, they have a tendency to take it out of Clayton County. <laughs> and he tells us that every year. I don't know if I'll be here again next year. They, they keep telling me I need to move up the food chain. That's true. That, that's happened yeah. for years. Super guy, though. He's been here for a minute, but he's... Mm -hmm. So other things we've gotten recently is the vehicle exhaust removal, which sucks all the fumes out of the stations. Uh, that was on a grant. Uh, all of our lights now are LED, both fire stations. Public Works uh, finished that project recently. Uh, Y'all have approved the last two years the biannual deep cleaning and repair of our turnout gear. It's a huge benefit to the employees. They don't have the toxins building up in their gear anymore. We bought uh, better hoods that uh, prevent toxins from getting on the neck and scalp and everything, also from a grant. We use an Im inventory control software now that we track every piece of equipment we have, the apparatus and all the tools and equipment, all of our EMS supplies are in there. Uh, that makes us operate much more efficiently. 
and not have as much um, dead inventory, if you will, on hand. Uh, it tracks the expiration date on all of our medications, so we know when they're about to expire, so we can purchase those in advance. And then we got a gear dryer to dry our turnout gear after we wash it, and gas monitors, and both of those came from a grant as well. Now for gas monitors, that's... For natural gas leaks or carbon monoxide leaks. Okay, but you take... Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Have you all come to my house. Our, our revenue sources are, are the ambulance billing. Uh, this year we budgeted for 150000 Through April we've collected more than that, but a lot of that is attributed to our uh, vaccine administration. We finally got paid for that. Uh, and also Medicare just out of the goodness of their heart, they just gave all the ambulance providers a little extra boost this year for some reason. Um, so I would say going forward, we keep that number at about 150,000 because I think that's going to come back down um, in future years. So fire cost recovery was the new initiative we started this fiscal year. Budget 25 because we had no idea what to expect. Uh, we've only collected about 5,000, but we still have probably 20,000 outstanding that the billing company is trying to collect. And I think a lot of that will come through. We're learning uh, the process for doing that, how to get better at it. One of the big hiccups is if it's a wreck, uh, then they have to have the police report. And we've been working with the police about how more efficiently to do that. Now that uh, Chief Piper is a sworn police officer, we're hoping he's going to be able to get in the software and be able mm -hmm. to capture those police reports and send them to the billing company. They didn't take care of it. Hmm. They got him in there, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that should help uh, collections in the future. Uh, we get grants. Seems like almost every year we've done real good with those FEMA grants. Last year was 105,000. Get the Georgia Trauma Commission grant every year. It's no match. Got some free disinfectant and applicators last year. This year we requested 34,000 for equipment and the safer grant to hire more firefighters. Um, we're working on a FEMA reimbursement grant. COVID vaccine administration. I don't feel I've ever done a federal grant before. It's a lot. I work on that frequently. And uh, what they're going to pay us back for is the overtime we use to staff the, the vaccine center and our supplies. Hopefully, they're going to give us something for the room use up here, too. Um, I don't know how much we can get for that, but I think we had it published at $200 rental fee. So that's what we're going to put in for. For every day we had it, we'll put in $200 for that. So I don't know what that amount's going to look like, but we are working on that. So what about over at Clayton? We're, we're just uh, kind of being, being back. Yes. Off the uh, and, and they mm -hmm. gave us money. They, they got federal funds. They gave us that money just to hold. Mm -hmm. And so when we have somebody work over there, mm -hmm. their pay is included on our check, but it's really coming from college. And without the police out, they'll give us more money to put back in there, but I don't see it depleting me out because they haven't called us for help in two months now. So one of the things we need is turnout gear. And I talked to you all about this back in January. Uh, just to review, it has a 10-year lifespan. We bought it in 2016, so it's good through 2026. My idea was to replace some of that every year over the next three to four years, so it's not one big lump sum. It's about this year is about 3750 per set. And that's pants, coat, helmet, boots, gloves, and hoods. Um, so just want to bring that back up again. And I put some proposals in the budget about if we buy nine sets, it'll cost this, if we buy seven, it'll cost this, if we buy five, it'll cost this. Mm -hmm. um, that's just for y'all to to consider. That is a that is a decision point. Uh, that would be under uniforms. Uh, now it's you not, in, yeah, it's you, not in your budget. It's actually you won't see it there. It's in the narrative part. That's a, just we say that's a political decision. I mean, we need to kind of, y'all need to make a decision on how you want to do that. But that's uh, he's got them set out and laid out where we do nine, seven, or or uh, five sets. So just to replace this case, we want to do so we have a continuous going forward. And they got them all at once. So yeah. we don't want to buy them all at once again, go out all at once again. So Right, and hopefully next time we can spread it out even more so that eventually you're buying X number of sets a year. 
that's the ideal way to do that. That's the, the big thing that's on the horizon. Just want to make y'all aware of that again. Uh, the other thing is the admin office area. Uh, it was last done in 1989. It looks like 1979, though, with the paneling and stuff. Um, maybe they could film that 70s show over there. If they're still doing that, I don't know. But it's in dire need of some updates. The walls, the floor, maybe reconfigure the layout. Uh, this was on the 2014 SPLOS list. Originally for 40000 but with the cost of everything, I just estimate it's probably going to be double that. We haven't brought anybody in to give us any estimates, but I would think it would be at least double at this point. And lastly is we need more people. Um, we had 10 firefighters per shift from 08 to 2021. In addition, we had between 3 and 11 part-time employees from 2009 to 2020. Now we don't have any part-timers. Um, and our minimum staffing went from 8 to 7, so now only one person to be off. So, like, I got a guy on FMLA now. So that shift is short every shift, plus people have vacation scheduled and other things, so there's somebody working every, overtime every single shift on that day, because we can only have one person off. So with seven people, uh, we can staff the one engine with three and each ambulance with two. Uh, before we had a minimum of eight, we could staff that second engine, we only had one person on it. Uh, but it was a whole other responsibility if we could go out and help somebody on the EMS call or something like that just push another vehicle on the road. So we really need to get back up to the minimum staffing of eight. Um, multiple times throughout the year, both ambulances are tied up on calls. I'm not trying to picture a gloom and doom scenario, but let me tell you a couple of recent things. Um, I had a wreck with a vehicle overturned on Mount Sound Road a couple of weeks ago, I guess. And uh, we had to call the county ambulance for that. We had one ambulance, there was two patients. So we had to call the county for that. Last Saturday, uh, we had, I'm trying to think what the call was, I don't remember now, but some kind of medical call. So our ambulance was at the hospital. We caught a wreck on South Lake Parkway. We had to call the county for that. While we were there, we received a report of a structure fire. We had the furniture and iron and actually had to leave the patient with the cops. Uh, they weren't critical, they just had neck pain. But we never want to leave a patient. Um, you can be for that patient abandonment. So we don't want to get in the habit of doing that, but that's the only truck we had left, so we had to go on that call. Oh, one time, I think it was two Saturdays ago, we just finished up the boot drive, and we got a call on Mr. Huey's um, wife, and uh, we only had one ambulance that day, and we took her to the hospital, and as soon as they left for the hospital, we got four more calls in about 20 minutes. Far part didn't have anybody available to start with. Fortunately, the county sent us an ambulance for three of those, and they transported all three patients. And then the last call, we were able to get Forest Park to come on that one. So it does happen where we may only average five or six calls in a 24-hour shift, but sometimes we have five or six calls in an hour. You just never know. And you cannot prepare for those days. We need 16 people on a house fire, but it's not practical for us to have 16 people sitting in the fire station. I get that, because we, we have help, but for the minimum, um, I think we need to have 10 people on shift with a person minimum. That worked for us for years. Uh, I'd like to just get back to that. Uh, Hang on. <clears throat> this is the second year you've done this, right? So let, let me make sure that you understand what I hear you're saying. Is What I hear you're saying is you can't solve this problem. What I'm telling you is, I can help you solve your problem. You're in that position for a reason. Right? Continue to do what you're doing. You're not solving the problem. That doesn't become my problem. All you're emphasizing is you have not solved your problem for the second year in a row. And I'm letting you know I hear you. It will not be a third. We click. Okay. 
Yeah, it's, I, I totally get it. It's y'all's decision how no. well it's half the trucks. But uh, how many people we have in the trucks? I, I get that. How many vacancies you got? I'm just telling you that. How many vacancies you got? Is how many vacancies do you have? Three. Right. In the back in his presentation back in December, that the number of the firefighters have to be on the set is the mi mi minimal requirement by law. Is what was that or what it was? I don't remember anything about. Uh, because I'm oh, I'm probably talking about the NFPA standard. Yes. Yeah. yeah, which is not a law; it's a code. It's where everybody oh, yeah. uh, goes by. The guidance, uh, so guidance recommendation, yeah, so, whatever. So we just maintain the staff level to meet that guidance, right? Well, we don't meet it, but we use Forest Park for mutual aid, and that helps us to meet it. Okay. So, like yeah. I say, the the, the yeah. standard is 16 people on on a house fire. Uh, if we have seven on shift, we can get six from Forest Park if they're available. That gets us up to 13. Um, so we get close, but we're, we're not there, but we are getting close. So, Mr. Mayor, if we, if you want, if we need to cut off of the staff, what would be that advice? Which area to cut? Like I said. Um, Which area should we reduce? And I, I, I hear that? you, Chief. And you're asking me to engage. I promise you, I will. Okay. Could you share that information with us? So it's too complicated in a discussion it? like this. Um, you're, it's deeper than that. So we'll, we'll, we'll have it. Okay. And last thing is the safer ground. Pay 75% of the salary and benefits the first 10 years and 35% the third year. So, any questions? Yes, sir. Um, I have a question. Um, does it, the, the, um, do you find that you have um, more calls weekends as opposed to during the week? Based Each on day the, is very similar. There's, there's specific. Probably any difference. The, there's some variance in time of day, you know, from okay. like nine in the morning to nine at night is the busiest time. Mm -hmm. But days of the week, it doesn't really okay. change a okay. lot. Yeah, yeah I, I know that weekday you have all the pastoral, you know, traffic um, moving through. Um, there are some streets I know that, well, for instance, I know because I live over there at Lee Street, you know, during certain times of the day, there's a lot of traffic going to the university or coming from in the evening, and how those, um, that traffic flows with 54, you know, exit and whatever. So, and John's favorite spot on Lake Harbor. I love Lee Street. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I guess my question is that, and I've been on 54, and um, some of the equipment is coming out of the station or going down, and traffic is so heavy that you can't move, or you're having people are having to get out of the way. Or you're trying to get people out of the way. So, I think that. Um, Traffic does that impede the, your ability to get to where you need to go? Yeah, we're so small, it doesn't, days, it doesn't it, bother. I mean, you it, can get the, it makes it a little slower, but it doesn't really impact our the service. service to it. Okay. it was a lot worse when we had, of course, we had a lot more people, you know, as far as shopping. So that's the first thing. But we want to get back to that. So mm -hmm. I don't want to sit there and, and not discount it. I want to say we have to be back. We have to have a lot more people in there. We have to have the dancers. We have to have the shop. We don't have what we used to have, but we will get that back. The the bridge on Lee Street really makes a difference because it gives you at least an option, you know, mm -hmm. from some some side to another side. Um, the Lee Street section itself, in terms of the questions that we've got there, you know, there are a couple options. 
but we, we really need those people in that apartment complex and a couple of others to really get into a, a, a complete restructuring, right? Because it, it's just ripe for redevelopment. And as it goes through redevelopment, that the road structure itself will, 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 will matter. And whether that comes out to the one that's over on Murphy Drive or whether you get a roundabout at, at Huey, uh, or Han yeah, it's Huey, in that section, because remember those two roads that come out of there? If you went straight across with a four lane stop, it actually ties into Lee Street anyway. You just don't want to put an obscene amount of traffic down there and then have a signal light at, at Huey and Lake Harmon. So you want to use the one that makes the most sense. Um, you know, but barring that from an economic development standpoint, you just plan for you know the Waterson property is in play at some point, right? We know that that all works, and that's just a matter of just laying it out. And those were originally laid out 15, 20 years ago by Ernest, you know, with his maps. And I don't know. And remember, his maps were all hand drawn. So just for a fun exercise, one day we could probably pull those old maps out so that. People can I read. saw the traffic study, I guess it was, mm -hmm. like, prior, prior to where there was a roundabout at Adams, is that Adams Parkway, yes. and, and Lake Harbor, and, mm -hmm. and so Oxford, the, uh, and Oxford Drive as couple. well. Those three are just... So you, so you have to kind of look at, you know, eventually if you ever get Lee Street redeveloped, you got to have a plan. You know? And it just says, yeah. some of that is, you know, you, you plan for hopefully the structures, the roads, before you actually have the businesses and rather than the other way around. So, so have you, uh, I think I know you, you've looked at a lot, but maybe taking a look at some of the older traffic studies, knowing that we're trying to address pedestrian walkability. The I think the feasibility on that's why they were talking about is if it's already pre-planned, pre-drawn, because you know they do this 10, 15, 20 years out, so I think you can pull those in too. Mm -hmm. And then with your Just take a look thing. at it because, you know, so, you know, my experiences I like to share um, at that intersection, but someone was quite polite the other day. They, they, <laughs> they waited for me to go straight across 54, and then they waited to make the wrong turn from the far left, far right lane to make a left. At least they waited for me to do that. That's it. Yes. So, so, so right. Yeah. So crazy. Both uh, stations are equipped to be able to handle whatever situations, right? Equipment wise, yes. Equipment wise, okay. Yeah. We have right now we only have two people at the other station. Paramedic so. over there and then. It depends on the day, but yeah, there's an engine and an ambulance. If there's only two people, then they. Take whichever truck to call calls for. Mm -hmm. Is what I'm behind. Okay. Um, one more question. Mm -hmm. if I may. So, so realizing that we do have some manufacturers in the city that that produce some chemicals and stuff like that. How how, how are we uh, monitoring? Are, are we monitoring any kind of air quality? We are not. We're not, so we don't know if they're under the. Well, the EPA comes sure in. They have, so like I had anything with chemicals and things like that. The EPA does it. Yeah. study. I mean, they do. A, they test their quality and check their equipment, do all kinds of stuff when they come down. But they don't necessarily. Them all. So, uh, do they? How often do they come down? Well, they do a per complaint, and they also they, do it on a, I think it's a, is it a one-year rotation most of Roger? I think so. Uh, it depends on, it depends on the, uh, they, they grade the chemical, whatever they're producing. That's why they grade it, and then based on the higher, you get more, yeah, I, you get I more like business. Their, I like Lesser that. you get, now, now sure like every two or three years. has some of its own stuff internally, mm -hmm. and there, there's some, uh, this goes back a while, but. You know, if they ever had a release, they, they have these computer models, you know, that show where the plume goes and different things like that, how they theoretically did it. We, we know that the early warning systems were originally set up so that they were more than just, you know, uh, a sound, you know, that you had the ability to talk and, and warn people. Complicated to be able to warn a reasonable period in a short period of time. Well, we, we, um, some but, but they have like Amber we, Alert, which we would be, well, they, you know, and they instantly the contact me. Like, uh, one of the Conyers had the, the pool production. Mm -hmm. I was wearing Rockdale when they did it, and we literally got the word because of their internal, before anything else was detected, but their internal mechanism detected it for a chemical leak, and we basically cleared up the entire, almost all Conyers. And the reason so, I say that is that I can't see well, I hear very well, and I smell very, very. <laughs> my s sense of smell is so cute. Your it captures all awesome. the rest of them. 
But I do believe at certain on certain days there is something in the atmosphere. Does it smell like skunk? No, that's no, possible. Skunk. Remember, you got the airplane flights reasonably. Yeah. I know. There's I know. A number of things <laughs> right. out here. So. Right. So um, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, is there a way that periodically we can, you know, do some air quality testing around in certain areas, you know, just to make sure that I bet you there's a grant for that. Yeah, and that's you know, an inquiry. Because that's a meter. That's a that's a particular meter. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. 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 you know, because yeah. of well, no, because I mean, just, of just just some of the equipment that I carry on my own truck. Is is pretty good. Now, I mean, it's not going to do biohazard and stuff but, like that. I mean, that, just because it's... we're, you know, freeways, okay. you know, we're here. The, the the traffic flow on Mount Zion and Fifty Four and the something... flying over. I mean, it, it well, just the stream, uh, when there's something just to monitor, and just to see. Or somebody you know, had because the, uh, when the I left Illinois and moved to sensors California, sensors I moved to the city that had the highest. Small level in the whole kind of weird they, they're state. Like infinite stands. Mm -hmm. I moved to that city uh, and did not know that. Mm -hmm. So, me help, so help us on this just one, to check, there was something. So, that round table where I was checking, there was something I was about they specific the to the airport the because of where we are and the fuel spray. And just so, right. let's see if we can piggyback on some environmental concerns. And I, I mean, I know I'd like to know. <laughs> I oh, like to know. I bet there's a sensor we can put on that drone. It, well, you know what? Yeah. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want longevity. Okay. Is it a common we sense sensor? <laughs> but I mean, I, yeah, and, and I, I, the reason because I know, you know that's how really companies not a bad idea. operate. I know how companies operate, so sometimes you know we're not always honest about <sighs> things that are being released. And when they're released, so I just I would just like to know if we are or can we check periodically just sure. just for some you know numbers to see what what we're. I'm, doing. I'm, all, I'm I was kidding at first, but I'm almost I do believe that you can probably get a little mobile sensor on that drone to check your quality. Right. And we already have a pre program yeah. when we get it to fly certain paths over the month, the week or the month. It could. Well, and I got a feeling EPA has been you know since the current administration's in there probably got some funding that. Um, Probably got thrown at him without any real you know, thought process behind it. So I would have to say. See if there's some takers. I'll bet you there is. Yeah. I really do. I mean, with, with all the things you've got going on here, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you, you got a plant, but that's less of a concern. It's been there since the 60s. And then but we have you I know, 75, more trucking. That one's real. More trucking. The airport, um, that's I mean, real. Places yeah, the over there that yeah. are in right. and out all day long yeah. uh, over off of. Um, you know, what is that? Adam said, yeah. yeah. Georgia Environmental's got that handle, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's stacks of trash. <laughs> so, Chief, I did want to ask: um, Do we see do we see the pipeline for um, possible recruiting growing with the school system CTAE program at all? That's something uh, Rochelle has been trying to get to the right person. I think she finally got a meeting scheduled. Okay. Coming up in the future. Okay. I don't know, but uh, she's she is looking into that. Okay. Okay. Um, and. Understanding minimum levels, I, I, I know the, the ideal is paramedic, but if we're in such a need for staffing, is there a reason why we're not moving forward with EMT, or are we are we, are we just trying to vet the, the pool, the labor pool is what it is. Yeah. yeah. But, um. No, we, the last several hires, except for this last guy we picked up from Ohio that just started this week. Everybody's just an EMT. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Uh, if it gets to the point we can't find EMT candidates, then we'll just hire somebody off the street. But understand, yeah. they're not a lot of good to us until we get the training. Yeah. It's you know, it's eight weeks of fire academy within probably six to nine months to be an EMT. Okay. Okay. So. I'm trying to think of what the lady's name is. I know her name is Mary. Um, she was over the CTA program. I'll follow up with Rochelle. Okay. Other questions? Yeah, for the uh, non-emergency transportation, I heard your concern. So if Chief, if you could help us to get, um, to put together the cost of, if we run that, how many, how many manpower do we need? And we also, um, Jeff, if we can pull the historical information 
of the revenue stream coming in the, uh, based on the collection of that service, and so we can make that decision regarding that. From the from the old non emergency transport. Yeah. 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 See so what is the revenue, what the collection rate, what is the cost to cost us, uh, how many manpower do we need to run that service, so we can look into that. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Yeah, um, good job. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. While you're setting up, I'm going to say something. I'm going to give at least a chance to get that in. Um, what would you say? Uh, I just wanted to at least get down the hall. I don't have a problem talking to his face, but the, but the point is this. You're the, the manager of that department. You uh, all but deflected your responsibility back to this table by consistently saying that you have a problem that you cannot solve. That's just not correct. Right? Um, you can put up slides there. You can have all kinds of conversations. And because the vast majority of the people in this room don't, don't deal with that every day, you're telling me you know, it's like an elephant. You're telling me what you see, what you feel, but they're telling you what they want you to see and feel. Right? There's a lot more data that goes in, a lot of experience goes in. And it, we just break it down to simplicity. And the simplicity says you, you can't hire four people. You go, you want a bet? I mean, quite little. You want a bet? Um, so I look at it as exactly as I stated. Um, I, I don't want to do your job for you. I have no interest in doing your job for you. Um, that's what we hired you for. But for the second year in a row, and probably the third year in a row if we come back here next year, you, you've all but said, with limitations that you put in your own mind, you cannot solve your problem. And then the answer to that simply is, okay, uh, I, I, I get it. Um, then our job has to be to you know, re-engage our management team to solve this problem for them. Because it's not his problem, it's our problem. He's just simply putting it back on you. And just, you know, half of that is theoretical. The, the numbers don't support it. Their, their calls for service are very, very small. Whenever they have issues with an ambulance, they don't run the second ambulance. Right? Then the theory is we don't have enough people to put on a fire truck. And you're going, you need four people on a fire truck. What does that fourth person do? It has nothing to do with being a paramedic or EMT. It's John sitting on a fire hose. Period. The end. That's it. You can have a firefighter one. Everybody in this room could be a firefighter one by the end of the next month. It's just that simple. Yeah. We're, we're not going in and trying to salvage the building. We'll let the building burn before we hurt somebody. Right? There's lots of things about that that make sense. You see his own collateral damage there. He's lost a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of value. That's an insured value. Right? We, we don't want anybody hurt. The, the value of a firefighter being hurt far exceeds any value that you saw up there. You know, we need to have somebody go into a burning building to save somebody's hide, some kid, some, some senior citizen, whatever, so be it. You know, but if the building goes, the building goes, right? I mean, that's, that's the secondary default, but we're even showing that that isn't true, right? We're saving the building, too. Water damage far exceeds that. So you, you have a structure that he gets to determine by himself, and nobody's interfering with that. He has um, the abilities to do his own training. He gets to move his own people around. Um, you've seen his people up there. You know, it's not as diverse as I would like to see. There, there's challenges in that itself. You know, the, the Asian firefighter that's in there, we brought in 15 years ago. Why? Because somebody died because they didn't speak the language. I see one person up there who could speak Vietnamese. Where's the rest of it? Your, your risk is greater that you're going to have an ambulance that's going to go out to some you know, traffic accident out here and you're not going to understand a dang word she says. That's, that's a greater risk than whether somebody's a paramedic or not. But we'd rather get into it in this discussion because this isn't it. I think what we do is we empower our city manager to solve the problem. And we'll bring it to you. Um, what I assure you is it'll be solved by next year. You can write that down. Next year you'll be at full staff. But I would have taken steps because uh, what I heard him saying that is for the number of the uh, 
the, the people to run the ambulance. I, I know, man, the, the, the bottom line is you're asking the fire chief to, 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 to lay out what he wants you to hear. And the firefighter is based on the guidance. So do we want to take the risk of facing not having enough the staff for the guidance, and if something happens, it will create a liability. It's not a, it's a guidance, so that they're using just to clarify that is, and it's the same thing I could do. I could take something from the police union from the northern states and say that's a guidance. It's a guidance, but it's there is no impact on it. There is no recognition on it, and there is no import to. I mean, it's a guidance based on the national fire standards, but it's not adopted by us. It's not. But it's not reciprocal. It, I mean, there's. It is a guidance. Don't get me wrong. But right. it's one of those guidances that if you have, if it's you're a city of Philadelphia, this is what you should do. But you got a lot more. It's not only Mara doing it. So the, 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 these, these, help these agreements. Them, help us. Right. That's, that's how this works. This equipment's million dollar yeah. equipment. Because you're not like supposed to. It's a mutual aid agreement, but you have like to. I concern about. Pittsburgh City has a volunteer fire department. A volunteer fire department, yeah. which the vast majority of this country still is a volunteer. I, I think the layer, the layer of the really point is. that you're making, yeah. it's it's broader to say sustainability. So if he's suggesting, you know, based on some guidance that we would like to get here, but the size of our city and the need for our services keep us in this lane right here, then the sustainability. It's created by the mutual aid agreements. It's created by management of your resources and, and timing. Because if we're not hiring to get to the guidance, you still have to create sustainability that's reasonable and real, not just staying stuck on, in a perfect world, we'd have four EMTs on a, on a, on and a. 16 and, people on a yeah. shift to go to the yeah, yeah, so, so <laughs> that's we, we can years. keep that in mind as the goal. But the reality is, the sustainability for services is something different. Sure. Yeah, no, no, but don't no, listen. Doesn't it raise your concern when the fire department, the station two, only have two on the shift? But, but you don't. That's, need that's, need that's, and that's a raise of concern. Station if you want to cut off, how many more do you want to cut off? Because you didn't have the bridge at that time. Traffic you know, was so bad you couldn't get to the other side. The yeah. Station not really, two was designed to be operated to during right that now business. Now, hours, but now you built a bridge. So we're helping out. We're we don't have a problem getting across town. Right. So he's still short staff and he cannot hire people. That's a problem. But his his response time. That's the work. So we're trying to put out some flyers and do some things. Go around it. We're actually doing a seven minute response time. Because we might get somebody in the city, but you can't say. That has nothing to do with what you want to do. If you should it's be able to get into the truck, when did they decide to get into the fire? And they, and they went to the fire. We, we're, we're not right here. Right here. Um, right here. Seven minutes from back that there. To right there. And we know so we're going to put you EMT. So that's another. Um, I don't you know, know if class there. That while they're working out. I just saw right, that but, but the cost is higher in the fire say, department. So the whole talk how about put putting the GMA us. website? That's, that's exactly and where you put it. And we need to put it everywhere now. But let's take the confidence that we came up with. I sat down with and start with the Rochelle. We and know we have the right to what, what can we do? Yeah, nobody yeah, we need to that. We have four fire stations. That's, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a pretty cool thing. This is one of these things for the economy the way it is now. We may have a tradition, um, but if we have, we want to have a show on the first one. I don't understand first one. Why have to put the focus on staff? And let's let me help staff and get it. Because what do you tell you bring to the table? What is it that we actually need? Um, some of it's so training, some of it's language. language. Yeah, there, um, there, there, there might even be some diversity right. discussions we have down in there. Uh, gentlemen the gentleman over on the left there under 30 some years isn't even a start. Please, please tell me why that is. Um, then, then you start to say, maybe we don't get there all in a day. Right, strive to achieve mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, so so it's, it's in there. Then you get into another one, which is very simple. All right, so let's say I throw a lot more administrative people at. Does, does your administrative people work Monday through Friday? Are your administrative people even remotely close to this building where if you had a call for service, could they get there in a reasonable period of time? You know, if you hired somebody that lives in Tacoa, then you can pretty much burn City Hall down before he's coming. Yeah. So that's where you allocated your resources over a period of time, and now you've locked yourself in. But that's not how you manage something. You manage for the time you're in, not necessarily like, I, I, I like this. This is very comfortable for me. Okay. 
but you're making it very uncomfortable for us because it's not being done. You've had the choice. You've been given good advice. And sometimes, sometimes people don't want to make those tough decisions okay? for a lot of reasons. Let's also look at the other city which has the same size at all to see how they are practicing to learn from they are practicing. So Most of them farm out their. Uh, I was going to say GPs. that that becomes yeah that that Mars probably level, becomes yeah, yeah. Mars difficult. level of service is far yeah. higher than in most right. city or We we are a small city that continues to strive for platinum level services. That's why which is good. Which, which is good, but the reality um, that we have to kind of reconcile in our minds is we provide a lot of services with the staff that we have. Because the desire on paper to have things line up in a way to match that might not be feasible. What I'm saying so you have to create sustainable plans with the resources and the staffing that you do have. And, and, and one because we've been, hit, we've been hitting a target. What I'm saying is that if we look at the other CD, have the same side out, and we can get that information from DCA. Mm -hmm. There are many other CDs outside. And we more dense than uh, I don't think we ha can get more cities that have higher density like our city with the same number of population. What, what's, if what's the minimum the can manage yeah, that, yeah, I'm to, 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 to look at uh, let's, yeah. let's, let's we have some time spend some time to look at others. Well, look share at share uh, share with us what that no, no, it doesn't have to be right now. Yeah. Uh, but think about it and think about a, a city that we can say we are similar. Yeah, yeah, similar. Because yeah. off the top of my head, I, I don't well, well, sometimes Mars just has to be the best of Mars. Yeah. The, 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 the restraints um, of 2008 to 2011 led to a problem. You know, when you just have no money, mm -hmm. everybody can want a Mercedes, yeah. but the best you might afford is, is a used Ford. You know, it's a you Toyota Corolla, and you better right. be glad you're but, saving on gas money. But as we have the conversations through the day, you know, we're still not where our revenue right. stream was not long ago. Now, we've, we've stabilized our tax base. We've right. done these other things. Our, you know, we have a public works department that actually now has a few people in it. We're starting to get our city clean again. Um, we have a code enforcement group that's starting to make some things happen, so that's all great. We, we don't know what the economy is going to do here. It does look like the stock market is taking a, a pretty heavy beating. Uh, maybe Jeff's using a few coins. Um, but the, remember, you're two and a half million dollars to where you were a while ago, just in your tax base. Right? You, so you stabilize the number, you haven't stabilized the return. Now, that doesn't mean because of. Uh, inflation, the value of your house went up, it doesn't mean that those numbers may not reflect, but there won't be a true CPI number, so you still got to back in what's there. And, and here's the point, is the city has to understand how the city makes money. And we can just pick on the mall. The, the mall isn't making the money it used to make. That means we're not making the money we used to make. Just using that as my business center, if you will. Fix that, and you fix everything. I mean, quite literally. The, the numbers improve, the people improve, the numbers, the, how you earn your income improves. And with that improved income, we get the higher services we're accustomed to. So we, we don't have to reinvent the wheel so much as we have to make sure that we do a better job with the wheel we have. And, and that's just focus. Focus, focus, focus every day. Yeah. Some consistency. I mean, we've had a lot of tires fall off, COVID, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, so I don't see Mara as, as truly broken. That's, in other words, your business model's not shot. We have not optimized it. And as you get closer and closer to the top, it gets harder and harder to do. Mm -hmm. But even then, that's not your goal. I mean, that's your short-term goal. Your, your long-term goal is to leave this in its dust, to take you to that next level. And that next level of performance, whether that's the police department, fire department, public works, community involvement opportunities, civic centers, uh, community centers, things like that, you're going to have to have those resources at that next level to provide that level of service. And you go, it's, this budget, as you're seeing it, is, is, in my opinion, laying the groundwork for that. So I have no issues with that. The, what I do see here is a manager for the third year in a row, second year in a row, who's basically saying, I, I either cannot or will not um, do this. And you go, I hear you. It's a management issue. It has nothing to do with anything else. And then that says, we'll address it. Uh, there was something I wanted to ask, uh, and probably 
you all have talked about it. We've had um, issues, you know, with the uh, the train stalling out out there. So. We, you know, when if it's across um, Mount Zion Road and goes all the way down to where our emergency personnel have to go to Kroger and go under or from from Mount Zion, I know they can get over to that area from mm -hmm. their station. Well, if you knew the train was out there, the first thing these guys got to be able to do is call the fire station at uh, Maddox. You know, you both run at the same time. I mean, that's just a simple call. Because, I mean, I'm thinking we're having events and stuff, and we have crowds of people, mm -hmm. you know, it's getting hot and all of this thing to oh, make yeah. sure that, you know, we, we, we have routes to get the sure These are time. things, I don't know if they're practicing, because we always knew we had the underpass, but that's a timing issue. Right. But these guys have everybody on their Rolodex. The, the, the theory that they don't, Chiefs have Chiefs phone numbers. Is, but you know, they know how long the train is stalling for so long? <laughs> that's they're hard. jacked up in Atlanta. Yeah. I mean, is they're, that what they're that up is? and down the tracks here. Yeah. They've been writing about that and dealing with it since yeah. uh, I've heard October. That this, this, the depot being cool and the scheduling. Yes. Those are the things that I've heard. And what they're trying to do, if you notice, can be Conveniently enough, they only block like Lake Carbon, but they leave Mount Zion open. Mm -hmm. Not well, by accident. Yeah, Mount but it's, it's how they're having the. And I've seen it, yeah, both ways. But and so there are. Talk, that's an opportunity to coordinate a message because, you know, I, I know Mayor Butler and Forest Park has mentioned yes. that as well. And She's got to be more She's a right rail right yard. Yeah. Right, yeah. Up, right up there past yeah. that old so, mobile home park. So She's we, got 15 tracks wide. Coordinate a message. I don't know if Jonesboro has the issue, but I'm sure they do. Uh, I mean, so let's let's try to coordinate a message for our area specifically, because um, it seems like it hasn't happened as much more recently. But there's like a big stink. Month Everybody did regionally ago, about it. February, I think, is when they were slamming them pretty good, mm -hmm. and I think they cleared up a little bit and got it where they did it. But to your point, there is a mutual aid agreement that we have with everybody. So if when fire dispatch comes out and they are tied up. They automatically dispatch the nearest available unit to be the county, or we don't have to call and go, "Hey, can you send somebody?" And then they get clearance. That's just the agreement that we have. Just like with us, if Forest Park is tied up and they call out, we'll send an ambulance and they just dispatch. Nobody has to clear that per se. It's just that mutual aid agreement because of the equipment grants and everything else. So there's no, there should be a seamless flow of that. Without that, cuts out the bureaucratic level of having to go. Let me call and make sure I can go over there and do it. But they just. It's an agreement that we have, that mutual aid. Good morning, B. How are you? Good. Dad doing good? Uh, he's uh, resting. Good. You back home yet? Or no, no, no. He's still there. The, the doctor will take on him tomorrow uh, in the morning okay. to see how the uh, the warm. And uh, he's still not mad about it. Okay. He's showing me the Good. 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 Yes, so, <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Seems like we've been here for half a day already. Mm. So I hope uh, this will be interesting. So, uh, you don't have a way to do a Vulcan mind meld and give us all your information. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was looking for that high level of technology. <laughs> so um, the uh, infrastructure that we talked about before, we have before um, with the evolution of window, which is our main platform. Uh, we've been using Windows since uh, 1999, uh, but the uh, the average of lifetime of Windows is um, it's about four years. But uh, I mean, I'm I'm so proud of because most I would say 99.9% .9 of all our platform is uh, Windows 10 now at this point. So there's no Windows 7, maybe just one computer. <laughs> Right, because it's uh, no longer it's obsolete, so we can move forward because uh, the lifetime is only uh, about four years. But the, uh, we try to maintain the hardware, keep things running um, for the uh, staff here. And uh, up to this five, um, we migrate, uh, um, I would say about 80, 85 percent of the data into the SharePoint now. Um, everything kind of categorized by the department. 
the staff, I mean, we just assist the staff, um, really grateful. I mean, they can access the file anywhere, so they don't have to go to the office um, um, to look for a file on the computer. I mean, they can sit at home. I mean, if they, let's say, you have a couple of projects at home, you can go into the system file login, you can pull any of that document rather than go to the office. Uh, and with the base camp, um, with base camp, is a is really a, a great tool to keep track of um, uh, all they do for um, project, um, which is uh, uh, all they the stuff that's going on increase the uh, communication. So the thing that we get uh, from behind. Okay, so cybersecurity, uh, we all aware, it is a, it's a, it's a serious matter. So we trying to train the staff. Uh, last quarter, we did a training. I sent out some video training, and the staff kind of really respond to the video. And I did a, uh, uh, a fishing test, which is uh, from us. And the next result here, I just put the result uh, the other day. So we actually have a couple of people uh, yeah. fall into the trap. Yeah. So they actually click on the attachment. So we got about uh, a six clicker and then one attachment. Are you practice this one on your own? Did I did I did I push that button? No, I I, I guess I, I look at the report. Um, you You're on the list. Email. Okay. I guess. The email. I did because I told Bong, I said you send me Russian emails. So we have and John from time to time those emails that you send me asking for <laughs> gift cards and yeah. Yeah. If, if, I know if, if I have a moment to assist you. Yeah. <laughs> so the report tell you is uh, we have about six clicker and then one person actually opened the attachment. So I kind of remind them, okay, you know, it's a thing like this, you know, you're not supposed to. So that kind of keep them on the training wheel to be precautious with uh, uh, fishing. They can lead into ransomware, um, which is uh, we can lots of information, uh, revenue, and things like that. Or for your and, and you got your systems backed up, though, right? Oh uh, yes. Right. Well, we uh, we we did a um, like two years ago. We kind of renewed that process there. So. Wasn't it like an expansion of? A um, I think it's another two years. We we come for renewal. Uh, but but at this point. We do have a backup system on, on, on the premises, and we also we on the cloud as well. So we just do it to five. Most of our information is on there now. So we're going to post those up so we can shame those people that do it. <laughs> so we have <laughs> well on, that's a well on. Uh, so we my name on the list. <laughs> and, but we have, well, we have Brandon open the, uh, uh, open the, click on the link, So but he didn't open the attachment, so. Good. And then their beard, man. Yeah, beard and uh, Karina. Uh, Karina. <laughs> she probably thinks that's but somebody I mean, trying to get a spot. Actually, she that. called me that day. She called me. Um, it did come from you. Um, I said like, no, no, it's uh, it's actually came from me. So people actually call me and confirm um, that this came from you because it's actually say IT department, which is I kind of like um, do like a masking, mm -hmm. make sure it like actually came from me, um, but it's not. We gotta be. Uh, that is like, uh, if you know how to check it, you can look at the sender. The sender tell you whether the, the, the address it came from, who's the real person. Let's say, example, we, we, do, we do get email from the mayor, but it, it's masking as uh, John Lambert. But if you look clearly behind that and the name, that masking, it say uh, maybe John Doe at gmail.com, it's not from John Lambert. So just kind of be mindful about even though it said the name, but make sure you click on that name and then we will be able to send it. Yeah, God forbid I ever have to ask for, for gift cards. I'm, gonna, I'm not getting nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's what we'll the training shows. Yeah, let's get started. So the, the training will show us uh, uh, this result in the minutes. detail. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, no, that's not it. Yeah. We can continue to remind them, okay? Um, All right, Dorothy. So that way they they be understand yeah. and, uh, the process. That's good. That's that way we don't. That's fewer people that probably would have done it. Okay. So finance software migration. We we just actually uh, finalize that. It's a good process there. Uh, QS one we is on the premise for the last decade. We finally just moved to the cloud. Um, I know that um, over the last couple of years. Um, 
I did a, uh, a log me in type of stuff or team view um, or the quick access to the, do a, 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 a route way for remotely mm -hmm. because, because of the software itself it's not on the cloud yet so <laughs> they, they can't log into remotely but we did a, a like a, a third party kind of way so but they still be able to function remotely but with now the we move over to the cloud process you can open a browser let say you're at home or you're on your phone you just open a browser you log into uh, everything's on there mm -hmm. uh, so you can run reports you can do everything that you need to do you don't have to go through <coughs> log me in or team view or quick access that kind of thing. And, and is that backed up too from different sites? Because let's just, I mean, right now we got a war going on, and you know, we've got Russian hackers who are out there. And, and the more practice you get when people let you play, the better <coughs> you get. You know, so let's just say one of these Amazon places, which is where cloud is based, right? They got all that excess capacity. Let's say they just they knock it out. Are, are we sure that we've got a redundant supply somewhere else? They the, tell uh, us they do like uh, east-west coast uh, and central island, uh, right, yes. so they've got <laughs> servers that replicate that, and it's yeah, it's Keep ten years of data that we've got. But we so we pay for the hosting, so the hosting is um, they have their own data center, so we pay for their hosting. So um, of course they will have their redundancy on their end. Okay. If it's one fail, then they can reconnect. Cause they've got, the they're in Michigan, right? Or, uh, Michigan. So, yeah, Michigan. So they've got one of the main one in Michigan, but they also have East West yeah. servers that back up. What I understand from the yeah. conversation with the Audrey and Opera. Because it'd be fair to say, anytime you took that information off site, as much as we talk about encryption and things like that, I'm always of the assumption whatever we put off site, somebody else knows it. But it's not the federal government who knows it. Some spy out there does. Well, There's Amazon nothing the city of Wallace is doing that really matters. No, nobody cares what you know we're up to. Not really. Um, but it it is just one of those where it's not. You know. Amazon Web Services had an issue what a couple of years ago where you know a lot of industries use Amazon Web Services as their. Um, at the, at the time they they were upgrading the data center. Of course, I mean of course they are the downtown like that. I mean because we did we didn't see for it. Um, and you are aware of the, the dual authentication, mm -hmm. right? So uh, we do request for dual authentication here as well. Um, because like I said, there's a lot of information that we let you finance and stuff from the city mall. So we don't want to be something so simple. Um, the the I request the password to be eight character complexity and uh, do authentication through uh, an email. So let's say you log in, and then we'll ask you for a second layer of security to send you an email for a code like you've seen it. Um, even 365, uh, I enforce uh, uh, dual authentication through the cell phone or app. But mainly most of uh, the staff here, we use the app to uh, validate the information so you can log in. Because we don't want to do something like okay, password uh, VTRAN and somebody know my first initial and last name, they can log in just with it as simple. But, okay. So, because the main the information is pretty critical to all the organization. And I like what they have it set up too, because even after 30 days, you're going to get, you're going to have to do your validation from your secretary, even if you recognize that certain. You know, so. so, you got to write down um, your password. Okay, so yeah. audio visual. So this home here, we just uh, kind of finalized it the last two months. We we've been pretty heavily used this room a lot for meeting. Uh, with the really high end technology there, uh, the camera are really great. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I mean, Jeff and May have been kind of seen it before. Um, it's it's a, a good quality. The zoom function it capture where you at and how many people in the room. Uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, high-end high -end text that we have. And then this microphone here, as soon as you're in this room, it, it picks up everything. We're creating like a process where it makes it easy to use. You need to pick up everything here. It's, 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 it's pretty sensitive. It is wild. When we're doing Zoom meetings and you can, I forget it's down there and it it's, does pick up everything. It's really easy to use. Uh, uh, we can schedule a meeting. I have my login on there. I create a Zoom meeting. So we just open the app, click start. Everything is scheduling on there. So, I mean, 
I, I don't want to be here downloading this for next 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 life you you feel about. Let me ask and, okay, very um, quickly, yes. um, in the audiovisual lane, um, what's the status of the audio audiovisual goodies over at the Mara Center? The Mara Center, we, we evaluate that. Um, I'm sorry, but I mean, I, you know, I, we just, it's time. It's time to ask these questions. Because the uh, public system that no, we, we have actually talked about it, so. Yes, um, 14 years ago. And of course, I mean, the Electronic is, it will start failing over time because the capacitor is only running for a certain hour. When it starts failing, of course, function feature may not mm -hmm. be available for your use. Mm -hmm. um, so, Jim and I don't evaluate that. Okay. And he wants to put up the monitors in the hallway, in the hallway or TVs thing. or something. I mean, I, I, I totally agree with that because it's a visual. Just like any other place you go. Yeah, be. I mean, the future. It's like a TV and yeah. mounted on the wall. If, 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 the, if the economy will work with us, his revenue numbers will increase. He's not that far off from breaking even under under the under the setup we had, mm -hmm. right? I mean, certainly you're not covering every cost, camp fees and things right. like that, but of the numbers that we had in there, yeah, he, he was about 30 some thousand dollars off. Now, remember two years ago, we were a few hundred thousand dollars. Correct. That's that's a that's a remarkable that's, that's change. That's a heavy lift. Yeah. And, and then he's had issues where people making cancellations and things like that. And then we realize, you know, we have an exhibit hall back there. You know, Warren's mafia enough to figure out how to get a revenue stream out of something. Um, so to some degree, I think what you say is here's the part that doesn't make sense. You know, he gets a repeater or something like that. He says it goes out and it's four thousand dollars. Well, why are you having a conversation with us for four thousand dollars on a critical piece of equipment that you need? For goodness sakes, get it done. Mm -hmm. You know, the bigger picture items as to how we move from this system to this system, he's, he's yet to present. Right. In other words, don't even tell me what, what's broke. Tell me what you want. Mm -hmm. Right. How do we how do we keep it a class A space? Right. We're charging right. a class A price. I want a class A space. Well, how do we go from here to there? And maybe Warren shouldn't be the one to do that because he's going to really spend your money. But you got to have some oversight on it that just says what makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, and at that point, you stage it in. I think you give him a goal to go get it, and as long as we don't rob his piggy bank, mm -hmm. probably, he, he's this close. He really okay, did he have him on a bud? Uh, is he going? To, is he on council for next? Uh, okay, so he's going to do his budget session. presentation okay. next um, on Tuesday coming up, and he's. Um, was struggling to get him break even because he was he's about thirty eight thousand dollars, forty eight thousand dollars short. So we balanced his budget for him. But I, on that, I think his hesitation is capital outlay in his mind. Yeah. Which would be a private conversation because he needs to do that. But I think it's part of what needs to be in the budget because it comes from other sources. Where right. We can right. Take we're, care of that. We're relying we to. on that space to be top notch. So Vaughn and I will be the ones who'll tell you what we had because his will be gold plated with diamond encrusted stuff and things. So Vaughn <laughs> and I'll tell you what we actually think we. <laughs> which, which is fair, <laughs> and I think, I think you can even budget it because his budget is a different type of budget, right? We, we have no idea how many, based on the last few years and prior to that, you really couldn't use it as a number as a base pack anyway. I so, can't so that means, now because it's tied into our new system, so we'll be well, able you, to track you can, it perfectly. Certainly, but we can look at it and say because his capital outlay will come from your budget. Well, it also could come from Warren's budget too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so on that one, yeah, you would you would prefer for right. it to, right. but, but until we get to that place, the source, well, right. but let's let's just let's just take where we were. So if if someone would have had a conversation two years ago, let's say your losses were two hundred fifty thousand mm dollars, -hmm. and then somebody says I need two hundred thousand dollars in capital improvements, you're like, okay. right. then you know we got some pretty strong pushback back then that you're you're not going to you know everybody takes losses huge losses and you're not going to get us down to a reasonable number we're down to a reasonable number mm -hmm. so that didn't prove to be accurate then the revenue number at least in the time period we've been here it's been a covid fight from day one so we really don't have a true track record right. of what a revenue stream really should look like in today's world mm -hmm. so on, on his numbers it's relatively simple you you go out and you say tell me what it is that we need confirm that's what you really need and even if you had a two to three year capital cycle right if your revenue gets to here which it should he told me just yesterday he had his first twelve thousand dollar month 
Oh, he's, 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 he's doing fabulous. Kind of so stuff. then you just simply build it in and then do the but four. You can have the new Mercedes, but for your revenue has to actually make it. That way you're not coming back to the well with theoretical money. You're right. giving him every incentive, because he's also incentivized financially, right? I, I think part of his money is a, a revenue incentivized financially. The revenue of the moral center might be the leading help. Okay. Because there is 100,150 I've seen on the book, and I don't know how did that happen, but it uh, looked like when the city transfer the money from the general fund, instead of being re should be should have been recorded in the um, new to do fund, it went directly to the revenue, and I don't get the concept of it. It may have been categorized incorrectly, but that's certainly not speaking to the effort to make move the Mara Center oh, forward. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so let's be clear on that. Part. And then the other, the other thing, that, um, and again, this is where people have a hard time solving their own problems. So, so part of Warren's salary is determined by his percent of what he can sell. So sometimes we have an event, for example, that um, maybe we want to yeah. comp it, but it, there's a real expense to some of that. And he's like, well, wait a minute, you know, that counts as my expense side, then that hurts my revenue side. And you're like, look, just, just put that over there in this fund. Just you know, call that mayor and council fund, whatever it is. We're not going to count that against you. Right, right. So as long as, as, as and this is where you know, new management is going to be a little bit different than some of what we had before. What we had before, you know, very much locked in, and it just said, we can't think. And you're like, for goodness sakes, you're killing me. Um, so you have to be able to say, I'm, I'm not trying to hurt you, right? Go buy the equipment you need because you can't lease the space if you don't have a sound system. Right, <laughs> and I think another, another layer, that's why I'm asking these questions right. today. Today's the day to ask it. But the other part too is um, we've got a lot of potential for venue space being built next door. So mm -hmm. our need to make sure that what we do is platinum level, that what we offer and the maintenance, because we're, as more things roll out, we're going to be a very specific niche and we can do it well, mm -hmm. but we just need to pay attention that the landscape is going to change when the arena comes online. Um, and, and you know possibly the development over by Clayton State. There are a lot of smaller venues available in the city, but the Mara Center is very unique and very specific, and we have to be mindful to you know get it up to par because right. what what we're able to do at the Mara Center, nobody else is going to be no. able to do that. And that exhibit center, because you already have the building, you already have the administrative costs that's already right there. And it's also not as nice, mm -hmm. right? So you can throw a little bit different type of party in an exhibit hall that's got a concrete floor um, uh, with more people. 50,000 square feet, I can drop a few thousand people in there easy. That, that you know, the existing space we got, you're not dropping 5,000 people in there, it's not gonna happen. And the new arena, it's big. You know, so now suddenly dropping a couple thousand people in a big arena, you look like there's nobody there either. So actually, it's each one has a little bit of its own little niche. Correct. And yeah, but I've heard that they're cutting us off in rooms too over there at the arena. So I mean, uh, they could. I, I would I would say we'll still be cost effective. Cause, I hope cause, so. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I just, know what it costs to lease the Performing Arts Center. I know. Whether they leave it vacant or not, you're it's expensive. Mm -hmm. You would well, think that space has been over there. With state of the art, you know, yeah. already built in. Yeah. 
So, so I, we're trying to uh, get there. Make yeah, sure that theirs we, will be there, but yeah. it'll be. Well, this is replacement. It will yeah, not we, be any we, we have to make sure we're they we get it ready right. for what we offer and the market that we will be able to capture. We need to be the best that does it. Yeah, but just just have him give us what he needs. Mm -hmm. I think there's a there's a revenue stream. I, I was talking to a church leader yesterday. Small church here. He said when when we do a, a fellowship Did you say outreach, church lady, a church leader, church church leader. When, you, when, he does a, a, when he does a small outreach, and this is a small church local, he said they, they, they throw a little bit of a, call it a party, whatever you want to call it. But the bottom line is they're going to bring between two and 4,000 people. Oh, wow. And that's what it takes to really, you small. know, friends and family and things like that, get them all in there. And he said, they got places like this all over the place. We just don't have it here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I tell them, you know, we'll meet soon to talk about the arena as to, you know, if, if you're trying to find a solution that's not in this county, for goodness sakes, we got one right in your backyard. Mm -hmm. And if we can't use X, we can certainly use Y. And if you can't do that, can you throw it outside? I mean, we've got right. a field, we right. got a building, we right. got something else over here. Right. I, I'd rather lease keep it, tents keep it in the, yeah. and throw a soiree rather than watch you yeah. go to McDonough and you know make something happen in a, in a different county. Right. Um, and, and that's what we're here for. But anyway, we're taking all your time. Don't don't. You got look, seven don't minutes left, Bong, and uh, no more Morrow Center. <laughs> <laughs> you think that would be a different project? I'm, I'm going to ask Warren how much he paid. Yeah. Did he pay a sponsor fee over there today? So um, the, the last uh, month we uh, just uh, got a new copy. Of. And you said that's uh, we already got that, right? Yes, one over here, one over PD. Um, this uh, copy have the ability feature to do translation to oh. Spanish. Let's say you scan in a Spanish document, we're going to translate over to English for you. AI coming. Correctly. So how Correctly. How well, how yeah, how it's about it. it. it's yeah, the same. So <laughs> along as you can look at the uh, understand. Because no, they, 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 they all the time. <laughs> Let's say. Um, a Spanish person over PD, they come in, right, they write something down, they scan it in, they can be refiled in a report, right, make, make things easier for the guy who did the translation. So, do it do cool. the only other language than uh, at, at this At this point, um, I know. Could you check? At this point, I, I only know for Spanish for sure. That's, like I said, that's a, that's a small yeah, don't, don't solve the Vietnamese problem because we have the older version of Vietnamese, yeah. the younger version of Vietnamese, and then we'd have the copy machine of Ver Vietnamese. <laughs> we'd have all three of them fighting with each other as to which one's correct. Well, what the like this is for, for to have something on the form when a Vietnamese come in, some person come in, the, that machine right there will serve the purpose of understand basically what is that I, on the form. I think so we because public communication. I think we have the like I said we in here we have the staff. Yeah. Like PD we have staff. We talk to a loud person. Over yeah, here right. we have staff sit in the office. Mm -hmm. Thing like that. With the a live time translation it's more efficient than the document. Mm -hmm. <coughs> right. So mm -hmm. But that's sweet. That's it that's a that's a interesting good feature. That's a, that's yeah. A, yeah. 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 Um, C, C, C. It's a start. <laughs> the folder and start Here's a folder. So uh, we, we migrate to the BSNA now, so we can do the fold the two sheet stuff into the envelope. Uh, they can mail it out to the resident. And then uh, some other like uh, event, not not an event, but uh, like, uh, let's say sometimes we run like a uh, notification to the resident. We can do the in-house. So uh, fold stuff. Fold stuff, close, and we go over there, we close, stamp. Close and stamp yes. and answer. And then business lesson, Denise been folding her, bis her own letter and then stuffing your, the envelope in the mail out. Manual time. This, this is like 1973. Yeah, yeah this, but this machine is going to be a lot faster and then she can do her other stuff. Sweet. Yeah, save the time. First one you want to run is the rules on garbage service. There, there's a member yeah. of the council who's just been adamant about well, that. I, I asked for the for the handouts at the crowd. <laughs> I was, I was you got two here people over here. <laughs> so. Yes. There's a little good stuff here, so uh, it's, it's saved on manual labor. Okay. Agreed. That's cool too. 
Okay, anyway, that a captive platform. You've all seen the video already, so. This, uh, we have a drone coming in uh, to help us do a land survey. You know, capture the event moment for the promotion, for the uh, uh, economic development mm -hmm. uh, feature. Uh, Bong, is there an attachment for that for air quality? <laughs> oh, go, go, out, go, go. I got Dorothy. Day. I'm, at, no, I'm asking. Sanitation letters, air quality. I don't care as long as it is done. There you go. There you go. Now we got a results category. Yeah. My goodness. Exactly. Bring, bring it. it bring it. Exactly. Yeah, they help with urban and forest firefighting. Um, yeah, which is we can take it to the sky. We can see actual view of how much the fire spread. Let's say example in the let's say the uh, one of the example the, the fire burning and the radar. Mm -hmm. So let's say if we have the drone at that time, we can take it up to the sky tomorrow? and see how 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 big the fire is or how oh, wow. quarantine mm -hmm. right. So that's really helpful yeah. for the commander to uh, evaluate the situation. Uh, where's the fire burning now? Uh, is it Colorado? Where is it burning? Uh, no, Texas. The mesquite wood. Oh no! Yes. <laughs> Get some pork butts. I was say thirty minutes. It's there. burning. Yeah. So yeah, that that. Uh, yeah. And for PD, cool. I mean they they can uh, check out pathway systems. Take a, mm -hmm. like a three hundred thirty view of the okay. the accident scene to evaluate the scenario there yeah. as well. Awesome. Um, and other, other PD of course. And thermal imaging. Um, that this is something really cool. We can we have properties along the city. We can wooded areas evaluate the the, the property you, I guess if you and power line clearance, but and uh, deer hunt. <laughs> well, <laughs> sure. Lost yeah, people in it. <laughs> and I didn't mention this last time because sometime in the wrong setting, it's not the right place. But you know, we, we know the the sheriff's department has the, you know the eye in the sky because they'll go out there when bad guys run off into the woods. And then they'll find them. This right here, especially if we can't get access to that, does yes. provide us. That's what that is. Just the same thermal imager they have. have. I mean, it's a thermal imager. Yeah. Just it's so, up so now, you know, bad guy running through the woods. We we yeah, have we the ability to. And Bob brought up a good point. We're going to look at homeless this. people sleeping in the woods. Not to say that that would ever happen. Uh, he brought up a good point. We're going to look at this to make sure that we stay within the parameters because there's a Fourth Amendment, you know, issue of, of different things. So. We're going to make sure we have a reflective policy on that just so we're not and I will, hanging out over people's houses. And well, I, where I, what I was going to say is I'm going to suggest everyone watch it. We're streaming TV shows this day, these days. Did you all ever watch Dark Angel? I'm good for taking us off the side of the highway <laughs> at the rest stop. I'm good for that. <laughs> Did you guys ever watch the TV show Dark Angel with Jessica Alba back in the day? Google it. Because that conceptually... Jessica Alba, I'm on it. <laughs> Dark. That that conceptually was a part of the show. Drones, yeah, yeah, yeah. drones hovering in people's windows, you know, monitoring activity. Oh yeah, Damn. and this was like what the two thousands. Back in the day, yeah, back in the day. Show. Dark Angel, Jessica Alba. It's your homework. So let me carry on. We, then we drove. <laughs> Sounds like vampires. I watch vampire movies, but I don't know if I just watch eavesdropping on vampire. There's nothing going on. There. It's a great tool. Uh, it, it, it benefits it us a lot. Uh, a lot of you know, you just got to keep these meetings light. Since we were here. Oh, so. uh, and another thing, we we just uh, finalized back in January um, upgrade with the Comcast. They actually came out and joined the line. They bring in the, the gigabit speed over there to help the guy to do report. Most what, what's what's the um, and, and this is kind of taking it about three levels above us, but you know where where they've got the the new internet, which is basically run by DoD and some of these others. Are, are they factoring in anything? I mean, I know they got fifth generation, but above that, they've got a lock system now that is supposed to be just crazy. Is is that even remotely on the private sector side yet? Even fiber. I mean, right now the fastest speed of fiber. Right, and, and fiber is not happening everywhere yet. Let's say, example, from here to at t public fiber is not even, is not even available to us. Because I did a, a survey with at t they, they want to do it private for us, but private is going to cost a lot of money mm -hmm. to get a line in. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so, but but copper with Comcast, they'd be able to increase the speed to a gig now. Um, yes. So, which is that what we we had on over there at the um, over there at the uh, station number two? And I'm I'm working. I've been working with AT and T to bring in fiber. I would think about fiber. I mean, AT and T right next door, right? So, but it's not available in our location yet. Yeah, it's, 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 it's that last mile issue, no matter what they're playing around up here at the bottom line, unless the uh, you know Elon Musk's new satellite technology is going to deliver it to us, you're not going to get it. It's interesting, very interesting. Because you know what I mean, you, you know what I'm talking about. Some of that real cutting edge stuff, right. that just blinding speeds. Right. You know, you we're, we're talking high length. You down. know, the, the highest level movies mm -hmm. and, and faster than you can think. Where it's almost just literally everything's a Instant. blink, mm -hmm. and you're just like, mm -hmm. good gosh. But when you go into private like that, Starlink, uh, Elon Musk, he he does, he, <clears throat> he implement uh, or develop Starlink to help uh, location that there's no line landline be available, right? So the technology is there; it's just not available to the public until that he deploy over Ukraine, mm -hmm. and then it become a, a really the um, a practice. Um, Make it feasible and people okay. public can see it. The areas, the areas I want you to think in, and we'll probably be dead before this really happens, is you know the, the, the mobility of cars and transportation and everything from a vacuum cleaner to a, a forklift will be literally done off of some server base somewhere. Um, and then virtual reality, when you start watching some of these games, they've come so far. Where I'm, I'm, I'm fairly convinced you're going to have health issues where people get lost in their virtual world because their virtual world is better than their real world. Gotta can, get lost. That, well, I mean, because <laughs> you, you can, you can yeah, you easily make that happen, and it's it, there you know one. now you know for the most part. Remember, you know when it first logged yeah, into yeah. AOL, <laughs> yeah. and and now yes, you're you're well yeah, past that, like yeah. but. The number of people who will use it will increase, which means the capacity needs to be greater. The next thing you know, it's just going to be here, and your vehicle is going to just show up here for you. And the theory you're going to have a steering wheel to go with it is flawed. Um, it, it's just—I mean, it's—it's it's not as far off as you think. But that's—that's that's the base. These are some of the issues as to what the reason it's not being done yet is that there's not enough people using it, right? At a, at a price they can afford. Not been created. The, That's yeah. right. The you don't know you need it yet. Right. The younger generation under twenty, they've been using Oculus. Right. Oculus been out like a few years now, but they all be up to a version number two. Like the mayor say, when they put on that glass on, the virtual environment now is almost resemble to real life because of the pixel quality, the uh, the speed of the connection. So it's like almost instant. But that's overstimulation in my mind. I know I'm off at the rest stop. That's overstimulation in a virtual sense versus what you really are stimulated by in real life. But like that seems to be a lot to me. Well, it, it, are you a Star Trek? <laughs> well, yeah. You, <laughs> you walk into the world, you know? You walk into it and become part of it. I mean, digital yeah. screens now, you can paint them on the walls. Yes. Yeah. You can Meanwhile, while well, y'all got your goggles on, I'm going right behind you and smack you. I ain't taking your wallet. When, when I was on a cruise in um, this, this last summer, we went on a Disney cruise. Leave a one, one of the, the no bars matter. in there the changed the walls. Yeah. Uh, that's the, that's how, what the bar was uh, set up as. It said, so these are the five places you can go while you get a drink at my bar. Chicago, Hong Kong, New York City, Paris. And all you did was sat in the same chair. And all of the walls changed around, and, and it was just like here's one minute you're staring at Hong Kong, one minute you're in Paris, yeah, and the, and the lights modulate. Yeah, what you drinking? The, the, the light. I know. <laughs> Is it tequila? The right. It was expensive. I will say that. <laughs> but it was great. I mean, the visuals on it were just uh, phenomenal. Yeah. But think about it. The, the next decade, I mean, we may not be sitting here for a real meeting anymore, right? Virtual. Ten years of technology is it go very quick. Cause you look at the last ten years, we don't carry cell phone, 
We have a cell phone, but it's just a button. But now yeah. you have every all the information in your phone, mm -hmm. which is you can do a lot mm -hmm. googling, uh, uh, scheduling, app, ton of app available for the I mean, that you can use as a tool. Right. So let's say the next ten years, we put on the glass. Okay, it's like I actually see you in, on the round table. Like but we'll so, be renting a yacht in Decentraland that I own. So. And then each information will be displayed right here. Yeah, because you're not going to want to leave this behind. You technology want to have, <laughs> you just put on the technology just goes so fast. Two years ago, you just introduced the Power BI to introduce to us. Guess what it does now? Not only it can the function of running the analysis in there, now it's also write the analysis. That's how fast it grows. Crazy. So, so I did want to. I'll bring this back on the highway. So I did want to um, <laughs> mention. So the conversations about the accessibility of higher speed um, uh, bandwidth or fiber optics, and there's this movement for um, federal level regulation so that there's more access in more rural rural areas. But I think what we saw over. Uh, more recently, it would be at the expense of public right of ways um, to what you're trying to achieve in the more rural areas to provide internet access. It compromises some of the more developed areas based on the right of way access. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering, based on what you guys are talking about, what is it, Starlink? Like Starlink. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm wondering. If yeah. there's a sentiment to maybe roll out internet access in a different way that wouldn't create a hardship for cities and their right of way access and the contracting with that. This is starting to come in. I'm kidding. It does. Um, and there's some. Do you want me to check on the grant? Yeah. Well, <laughs> on, on that, well, another thing about it is, you know, we were just. Yeah. Hey, money somewhere. Yeah, we we were so concerned about us. yeah. We were so concerned about wanting rural areas to have that internet access. But like I said, GMA every year somebody was introducing legislation. Was like, well, if if you approve this, then it sounds like it's going to create hardships for cities because they're going to be creating access and right of ways with no with the municipalities um, had no uh, right no of way. Redress with regard to restoring those easements and those right of ways. So I'm just kind of you. You want it on the one hand, but at what cost on the other on the other side of the coin? Yeah, we're back on the highway. Okay, look at that on check. But but you have a replacement schedule for all the, all the different pieces that you have. Oh uh, yes. Okay, and, and we're on it, and you got it in your budget. So because uh, because of the the, the content a lot of stuff now is um, on the cloud mm -hmm. so we need to increase that bandwidth okay. to and same thing with police department on their their, their squad cars you know you got a replacement schedule for all of that in terms of the, the computer the uh, the Exxon <coughs> the Exxon uh, the David mentioned about the uh, capability to upload the uh, video but I'm, I'm glad with Verizon we the my five be able to handle uh, LTE, so connection. So let's say we add a good signal, we can run at. I did a few tests. We can run at uh, thirty-five meg and about forty meg upload. So even you have a recording sit um, on the cradle, and if your engine not going, so it it, it sit by the standby, and then when you Turn on the engine, the crater turn on, they start uploading to the cloud. Mm -hmm. So, and as long as there's a connection available, it just kick it up. And LTE is pretty fast. Now we moving forward to 5G, and then it's faster. When you say standby, you're saying that it's not recording? No, it, it's it's recording. The, the, the file is there. It's, not it's just waiting for out. the connection to be open right. mm -hmm. or Connect to that IP address on the cloud, and then automatically push it up. Okay. 
Like if it's out of a service area, it's going to record physically on the unit, but it's not providing that connection to the cloud to dump the okay. data on the So, cloud. but that's not, that doesn't have anything to do with the, uh, the cameras. No. It's on the, it's the a, okay. It's a connection. All right, it's okay. Okay, this is uh, kind of uh, not uh, in, in the budget, it's going to be, but I just want to get in here and show you. So, these are the signage. What did you say? I got a Photoshop in there. Oh, wow. I got a Rainbow Road. So, Saul is going to build this, and um, it's just going to be my tombstone because that's how long it's going to take. <laughs> it's not going to take that long. But, I mean, are you serious? <laughs> so, that's got the sign, I mean, uh, over the Rainbow Road. Uh, uh, yes. When we upgrade, when we get be able to do the other sign by the end of the state. We can take that. Uh, when we, when we get the other side. No, the other side of the other side is completed. We just had to get it metered. So yeah, now we're now George Power to meter it. Once it's metered, project done. So then you guys Once come forward metered. with moving those. We're going to move those from the other side. Then it's open. Yeah, it, it Next should week. be. I think so. I, they I, I did follow up with. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have a Brandon, ribbon cutting ceremony for the Rick Johnson, Brandon Johnson, which is the engineer who worked the job. Uh, that's going to be that small. Uh, okay. small one. There. We will get that we'll we'll early next week. New okay. ones go in there. So it should be next week. City Hall. And then it'll be up and running. Fine. Oh my goodness. So both of them will be done. Finished. Yeah. So power is there. Everything's set up and everything's ready to go. So that's the OCI. That's the OCI. Okay. Okay. Good job. So with these two, the original concepts of where we're moving those two sites from the interstate is we get bigger signs that you can actually see. To uh, I'm sorry, someplace. I got that text. Uh, the district. That's the district. Let me update. So the district, we have uh, a sign as well to the display information. Okay, what kind of event I mean we will have mm -hmm. out there, trying to lead the public into the right direction. Right, exactly. To provide the additional uh, information to the public. Okay, Marl PD. We'll, we'll come back and... Yeah, and these are the old ones. These are the yeah. old ones from yeah. City Hall. Yeah, these are... Yeah, from City nice. Hall. It did it's not read. Uh, when we upgrade, we have the old one from City Hall. We can put it... Yeah, so, so we have to build that. That's correct. So, build so the, the two house. that are currently out there... So there's the Bell Tower. The old ones from City Hall and oh. the LCI. And so, yeah, so we, we've seen... You can see the old one. Yeah. It's going to be removed. And then we can recycle the uh, the old one into the uh, those two areas. That those two, that those, two place. those are recycled. So those will be old ones, but they'll just be an insert. But they're still programmable. Just send me an insert. Let's see the new one again. When they're done. When they're done. <laughs> Give them see the new one. The new one. For the old. Okay, then. Yeah, these are produced by Santa Claus. We, we've only heard about them, but we've never seen it. Fifteen. Saul is old. Y'all leave him. So basically, we're going to fill the entire the, the vertical section. Okay. Yeah. These are expensive. I was going to say, so we we've seen we've seen this before, um, but it's got a hefty enough price tag. Yeah. Oh, so oh, yeah, how much was the bond? Right now, we just uh, you know get the, the pricing. But well, and, and know where the money comes from here. So if somebody leaves here and starts telling the fire department they can't have any money because we got digital signs at the front. Right. Th this is coming from product development money from the hotel motel tax, right? You cannot use it for any other purpose. It's product development money. So you can go out and buy an ad with George on my mind that nobody cares about, that nobody reads. Or we can actually buy something that we can put in the city that we can actually use to be able to tell people about city events, city stuff, city, 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 city. Because we're a destination. Because we're a destination. And that's where you're getting it from. And that's a, a percentage of the five percentage by state law is product development. And product development is producing us, even though we think our hotels are lying a little bit, about a hundred grand a year. Well, we, we, we're fixing that, right? Yeah. Oh, yes, ma'am. But they you send out their first, it's actually a very cool thing. So we're going to, they're going to get a portal to go to. We're sending out the letter uh, Tuesday, the mail them out. Oh, the Tuesday, awesome. right, Marquita? Awesome. Yes, Tuesday. Yeah. So we'll send out the letters that hand deliver them by code enforcement. Their initial assessment, I believe, is in your book. So those two pages? Yes. Okay, two pages are in your book. I didn't release the last pages of that report because it's got other confidential information. But they did their assessments on it and they believe that there are some severe problems with at least three of the hotels. So 
And then we actually over collected from a couple. We get to send back down and tell them where they're lying. I don't want them to think like I'm lying in terms of my gross revenue. That's, that in the hotel world, that's a little bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. Tell them where they're lying. No, they're lying on their taxes they can deduct from it, so that's what they're doing in underreporting. So, you know, when you, when you fill out, when you stay the night at the hotel, let's say you're a, a veteran or you're at the military, then you don't have to pay those taxes. Mm -hmm. So basically, they're using that. They're saying, okay, you, oh, cool. you uh, spent the night at my hotel, yeah, yeah. but you're exempt. And now Giving too many breaks. Way yeah. too much. And way, I mean, their exempt tax ratio is, yeah, that's what's in the report. You'll see, I think it's in those a paragraph where it says, way over on the cow on about three of them so. so so that's where they catch it um, and then the other thing on your product development's not in here is once once these are paid for remember we had a few dollars in the piggy bank that just wasn't spent we're not going to buy a jordan on my mind stuff is um, going to be some additional christmas decorations as we start to because uh, those are the two things you can say from our real product that you got some tangible stuff not and only, a lot of your christmas stuff was yeah, not only the christmas stuff but Renee and I had a conversation the other day about the little small yeah, banner that we size. have, which, which we, maybe yeah, we yeah, make it we, to the like yeah. bigger size, more reasonable size, more attractive instead of because just that, the banner. What you can actually see? see. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. like We could cover that under some of their, uh, <laughs> their existing yeah, yeah, there's because, some very nice yeah, ones that you can get. I'm putting everyone on notice. I, I call it University Plaza over there by Clayton State. But we've got, just let it marinate. That's a, that's a very yeah. big word and another big word. Well. So it's UP. No. Okay. Bong said, let's go. Okay. That's fine. That's yeah, so, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where, where, where do you have to be? Mount Zion Road. That's our retail right corridor, maybe leading. So you're, you're taking your wife to lunch? <laughs> no, that's okay. When I'm done now, I'll go back to the hospital. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah. Okay. Why didn't you say so? Yeah. That's right. I gotta see this. So, so, okay. so, 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 so we get the idea is what it's going to be look like. And it's only 100. Much clearer. Much clearer. Okay. How much was that? How much is that going to be? We we just bought the yeah. It's only 185. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 we, yeah, we just get a, a you know, a, a understanding out. price right now. Yeah. We, we, we don't have to be fitted out. <laughs> be such a good partner to keep sides set. <laughs> no, he, he was talking as he turned the slide. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's he's gonna, he's gonna go to okay, uh, okay. The, uh, audio visual, the courtroom. So, uh, with the benefit of uh, a camera and a microphone in the ceiling to catch the sound. Um, and then the software, the licensing, virtual court. Uh, the codec server, we can create a virtual court to handle more capacity that we have. We agree. Um, the, Essie was in here a minute ago and she said that our, our fines had not been updated since uh, a while ago. Yes. And remember years ago we had the technology fee which then they turned around and said could not be applied. Mm -hmm. Fair. I remember that. But so that was where we had it. Then we charged a technology fee. We, we theoretically can't charge a technology fee anymore. But let's just say if we internally decided whatever that technology fee was, it was a, either a certain dollar, but I don't think it was a percentage. If we add that to our court fines and just adjust our court fines, I think we'll be able to raise you your money. Maybe it's a two to three year number. Well, how are you going to sparse that out? From, because of the PD's going to think they've made extra money by writing the same amount of tickets. <laughs> <laughs> now, we'll, we'll figure it out. I'm sorry, go ahead. They, they, they can do those little state court fine add ons over here. There can be a, uh, a technology deal over here that's going from be. the general. Yeah, but convenience the convenience fee. But, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we can, I mean, like I said, we, we don't have the, the revenue for this for now, but we can, I can patch in the system. Because the appliance there is what it is now. So, um, and this isn't extravagant. Yeah, it's not crazy. It's no, just to make the sound just, work and the video work, and you're going right. to be able to actually see what's going on. So, it's not, we're not doing anything crazy. It's well, and they're still right. using the other section of court for the COVID because of the radio system and otherwise. I, I think all of the court processing is eventually going to make it almost where you're, we would almost prefer you not be in court. Yes. You know, I mean, if you're it's locked up, you will be. But the other folks, it's kind of like just dial in. We we can find you guilty in Alabama just as easily we can find you guilty in Georgia. Because I, I did join a uh, or not guilty, court in uh, is, so. uh, Indiana for my brother. You know, the time you dial in, and then you when you dial in, you wait for your turn to be called, and then they will ask you. So I literally just joined into that session. 
then my brother in over at dinner home at home. We all join at the same time and who you with and, and then we're just home. So pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. I don't want to fly up there to attend court. Yeah. Right. I do just listen for him. Right. Okay. 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 VOIP uh, for server. Uh, this is request you replace the server and then upgrade the software. Because it, it's been a while. Yeah. We haven't uh, we haven't touched the server and then the software in a while. And you said VO, what? That's, that's the phone server, the voice server. Yes, mm -hmm. VOIP phone server. Okay. Which you uh, address all the uh, internal extension and profile. And, and you're still profile. comfortable with the, the system you have, though? Because I know that's just a dummy with system. With the same system, yes. And it's going to last you a while? Yes. Okay. It'd be better if it's expensive. Yeah, but uh, the, the, new, the, okay. new, the new phone system alone, I mean, if we get new system, we have to replace all the dead phone and things like that. I mean, it's going to cost about 40 grand, 50 grand easy. Uh, key card, this is going to be a small number, uh, but I want to get them then we implement the key card access for the B building. Okay. Nothing new there. Secure the camera. Uh, so, um, we just added the uh, four camera over there at the station on the Jew, because we got an incident uh, a bit while back. Somebody dumped into a dress, into the dumpster. They walk back there and they dump into the dumpster. So we just add it in there. And Old Town, a uh, ring camera. So when you see all this icon here, uh, which is the, um, um, the ring camera we implement. And Do you have any technical difficulties? <laughs> I'm not sure why that <laughs> I had the earlier one. I can't resist it. You, 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 trust me. I, I want to show you what oh, the yeah. angle looks like. There we go. So, oh, that's some of our guys working and that. Somebody's yeah. stealing some a lot of time. Um, let me, uh, <laughs> Careful what you pull up. <laughs> <laughs> At At least part part don't worry, they're just doing the yard sale early. Let <laughs> me show you this. Uh, Let's see the yard sale. Can we look over there? Give me one second. Check, check in on the yard sale. I, I tested though. But I don't know why it's just not pulled out. Uh, can you check on that? Yeah, yard sale probably will be on there. Uh, let me save it. I show you. Did you get Karina's the one where she come? Uh, yes. Wait. So that is the the, uh, the room that we uh, we would uh, renovate, painting and repair. So that's going to be Karina's office or Karina and Code Enforcement. Or so this is where we cut this the, is the video. Oh, um, this oh. is the little guy. Mm -hmm. This little guy come in, kick the trash can, and trying to do. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Play with the ladder. You know. This, then Watch the they're car. walking on there and they see <laughs> make the alert sound and then they ran away. Because right. Karina was watching this on because she gets the alert, so she hit you can hit the alarm on the ring. Mm -hmm. So she hit the siren and, then, and they went Okay, and then we did catch one. You did? Catch him. Yes. Oh they're in trouble, trouble. Here's Obviously. the one that uh All kinds of you see the clock, the clock on the top, and then, mm -hmm. then we have another camera right down there. Some of the kids uh, was there on May the second. They were out there burning stuff. The PD responded to the incident. Actually, he got the kid. Yeah. And the, this one, the parents are the ones in trouble. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That's big. That's going to be a problem for them. So with the ring camera, it, it more so like... So what is this car right here? Police car. A police right? vehicle. In the middle? Yeah, we, uh, all three all vehicles, three. yes. Because we respond to a car. I'm mean, not to respond to a car. The, the ring the ring account I kind of share with uh, five marshal I share with PD I share with the uh, uh, public work director and then I share with um, code enforcement hmm. so we have multiple people that can 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 get the alert so in case something happened like this and PD can we can see it right there PD come out there to stop the uh, the, uh, the incident and the good thing is PD's got this for their supervisors. We've kind of spread this yeah. out because supervisors weren't paying attention. So now a lot of people in the city have it. Mm -hmm. 
There you go, Sean. We're gonna give you a ride home. Yeah. Put your dog and your bike in the back. Let's go. So are they all from the yes. street over there? Yes, they are. And then we have one in the center here. Did you see this kid? I mean, they were out there. At the Those are the two that were inside. Two. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Before they head That's over there. Ooh. Called evidence. Ooh. <laughs> Where is Mama and Daddy? So, but, but oh, we need to add more camera, expand the Wi-Fi, so we can get more green camera to cover some of the blind spots that we have. Because I mean, we better be proactive than without Yeah, we need a ring camera looking over the swamp. Swamp's getting drained. <gasps> It turns out that it was a beaver. But Rod didn't connect. Getting trapped. It's a shot. We don't have any beavers, but uh, <laughs> it turns yeah, out did. that some of that historical <laughs> knowledge might have been helpful. I didn't, I didn't doubt it. It just didn't look like a beaver dam. <laughs> it's a tool that can help us uh, to managing the, uh, the sleep. Uh, it can alert us idling, uh, or do we can do a geofencing. Let's say, example, some of the vehicle, let's say not a, a take-home vehicle, for example. Um, some of the vehicle like that, is, we can do like a mapping. Uh, if they go outside of that area, it will notify the, the, the management. Okay, what's the purpose of you leaving that area without letting me know? I mean, or how long you've been on that job, um, even though maybe the job may be about two hours or something like that. Yeah. That's the negative side. Let's listen to the positive okay. side. Okay. The positive side is, yeah, we're, let, let, let's do um, uh, garbage service, right? Leaf and lamp. Um, it, the, the method we're using right now we know makes no sense, right? Two trucks, three people, two days, it's ridiculous. We have a, a game plan kind of moving forward. But you, all, you also want to kind of see how long does it actually take you to do the route? So the guy can't just say, well, it took me eight hours. You know, I don't even need to ask you. I can just tell you, yeah, you know, how so long it took to do each street. And this thing will then that. eventually allow you to basically do some averaging your own. And so it's, like, Look, it's going to take you three hours to do that side of town. And, and then you have it in your vehicle so that you're, you're doing it. Now, there are some other cool things. If you're doing 80 miles an hour down Oxford Drive, I don't need Ms. Smith to tell me that anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It'll take that on so, so, so it's more about where are our resources? What are we using our resources for? Let's just say Ms. Smith does have an issue. You, just like in the old days when we did the response calls, you can look on that map and you can go, you know, Jeff's right there. Just just call Jeff over and have him pick it up. Versus having John, you know, load his tractor back up, pull his, his lawnmower in, leave it there, go do something. It's, it's how do you use your resource? How do you use your resource wisely? Um, and, you know, there is some checks and balances in there, which is fine. But again, as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're not going to have a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's more along the lines, because I, I view that less as a, a, of an issue, but you know, how do we know that our equipment is, um, you know, our route systems are where they're supposed to be? This is what's going to help us reach the right conclusions of the type of equipment you need, you know, the quality, you know, uh, do we get a really, really big truck, do we get something, some, something in between? Uh, do I need to really have four people out there? Should I have two right. people out there? Really um, allocating your resources with absolutely. your equipment on the ground. People have been doing this in the construction world, the contractor world for yeah. decades. Plus, we'll be able to find this essay. Well, well yeah. that too. I work in transportation now, so this is what <gasps> I'm doing. Oh my God. She's got it all on her buses and different things. We're talking right up her alley. Yeah, there we go. So she's got videos where all them snot nosed kids are in there and all they're going. Well, on. And, and to the point of tracking, you know, you can, re you can replay the routes. I mean, you know, when you have this equipment set up and the safety reports that you can generate, yeah. That's cool stuff. You guys use that in Verizon? We use Samsara. Mm -hmm. That's too expensive. Yeah. It's the bottom line. It is. So, uh, tech support. Um, the technolo technology is changing in a fast pace. Right, so there's a lot of things we can, we can be can doing. Um, with a tech support, they can help me with, uh, you know, small item like how my printer won't print tickets, mm -hmm. or the, I can check my email. Can you reset a password? 
or can but, we but didn't we budget you a second person already? It's in here. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, just checking. So That's what this is what it's about. So the, uh, the the last two quarter, I got about two interns. So just uh, while they attending college, and then they they want you to understand what the real life scenario. So I do train them. Uh, but the, the bottom line is our interns make a few dollars. That's what you're yeah, saying. It, okay, it got it. Me the, uh, and, the, and the feel the burn guys paying them fifteen dollars an hour so that we can all feel better. All right, got it. <laughs> so for post budget, uh, we did two thousand twenty two, and it's the other agenda doing. So what we Ooh, look at that number down there at the bottom. That's did we just double your budget, Bob. Well, this is part of the capital. All right, all right. I just, just want to make sure. Way down. on this side, I swear I see a oh, one at that size. front, and I see a but three the on the other. Purchase services are some of the things we're looking at to really. Yeah. To, and what we're trying to do in this budget is really allocate stuff where it's supposed to be going. We're paying for a lot of this stuff, but this is coming out of somebody else's budget. Mm -hmm. Literally, I mean, some of these same people haven't been charged for. You'll see blanks and go, why are they charging now? Because they they're using it. So this is this is a great thing about this new system too, because it allocates stuff where we, where the expenses should. Be. I'm just going to recommend don't eat at steak and ale. McDonald's is fine. No longer thick. Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, that's it. That's it. That's all you got. That's so, it. Uh, yeah, he's got to run to the hospital. Anybody got any other Yeah, see, that's the other part of getting another person for him, too, because when he's doing this, I mean, he's still, I don't know, telling him to stay and take care of yeah. But I mean, 24 7. What do you do? I mean, there's some yeah. stuff that has to run. Departments of one are always difficult. Very difficult. So, so right now, buffer. he cannot go on vacations. He cannot well, he goes on vacation. He just works half of it. That's Even though at the hospital, I mean, I still brought my laptop in and woke him up. I saw that on the report. I was like, I got people who won't take their laptop home with them that actually are you got people salaried who employees. Your laptop. Yeah, I got home. Um, <laughs> I got home. Mom's home. taking it into the emergency room, doing it right on his daddy's legs. You know, you're like, dude, yeah, that's so pretty, <laughs> pretty. That's my kind of employee, actually. But that may not be everybody. <laughs> so, so he needs to be able to take, this take break. Depending on what we don't want to burn him out. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you did you hire like, the person you wanted to hire already? Oh uh, yes. Um, okay. I got the uh, the intern that I've been training. Okay. So he does start on the July the fifth. The one you probably gonna pull. Hiring now, Bob. Quit waiting. I don't know why you guys. Stuff in detail, researching and things like that. Yeah. Like, it blows my yeah. mind. You, you all have an intern. He goes to work somewhere. Else. Else. <laughs> just everybody calls you. Um, email, call, does reporting. I mean, because. Because the panel led by one man is, mm -hmm. I don't have time to I mean, look at that system and and then trying to respond and things right. like that. It just create more of them. Plus the freezing of the projects, like part of the stuff we can do around here that can be done internally much more cost effectively. Yeah. He's capable of doing it. Like, I don't have time to do stuff. Well, and then there's stuff that, I mean, just be honest, you, you got to put some limits out there. I mean, I, I saw y'all playing fetch with the water here. Um, that's that's a plumber. That's that's Brandon's department. Yeah, plumber. I, I I get they got you there, but man, you know, when I saw that, I just looked at it and go, no. Oh, yeah, I I I kind of stay away from those things. Why? Because it's, like, yeah. yeah. right, it's the Mara Center. Because <laughs> well, the thing is, um, did you get this AC they, fix? They, they do ask me, okay, because the controller, is, which is the part where let's say HVAC, this air run we running. If it comes down to controlling uh, a computer smart function, then okay, let me take a look. Let's see what's going on. But if I don't have the communication, I'll send you guy out, okay? Take a look at this phys physically for me. Because at this point, I, I, if I don't see the communication, there must be something wrong with the board on the RTGU. So take a look at that, and you can restore that function for me. And then I'll, I'll just go. Oh, speaking there. of which, the lady that was in here said that she did not have the ability to, to, to log into the system to be able know. to check that. Did you get that solved? Uh, Dana? We, we Dana. Dana? Yeah. She just needs to get it, give, give, it to you, give her access to it. I don't care if she can handle yeah. it. Then you, you get one last call from Warren. 
Because she's saying she can't dial. I mean, we're paying her twenty five dollars a year to pay attention to this, but she can't dial into your system. Well, dial in remote, and however you want to call it. I'm not sure what kind of information she's going to ask. As they say, the school. Uh, 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 no, it's not kids one. This would be the uh, air conditioning equipment at the. Oh, okay. I said this. I can't talk about that. She called me yesterday. It's a conversation. First of all, it's her software, right? Okay. I work with uh, the tech guy that came out. I mean, I, I have a question, okay, what kind of port do you got open? He, he can answer that question for me. If, if you if it's your own software, you should supply me with uh, the port number I can open through firewall. So I have to create like a, a background, like through my log me in, because I, I mean, log into remotely through the system that way, right? Mm -hmm. to make a judgment call and things like that. So the judgment control, they should well aware of, okay, if they want to access the program, they should let me know, okay, V, I need you to open this port. And then so they got on there and they can access the system. They, they can't supply me that information. Hmm. And, and I can't. So let's say we work with the, in the op, if they want to accept the system in-house, of course, it has to go through a firewall. And then the way they design the program, they, they must know what kind of port they open, or even camera system. If you want to view remotely from offsite, then there are specific port you need to open through firewall mm -hmm. before you can view it. If not, that's, right. that's not possible. Well, the average person they're sending out there is an HVAC country, yeah. not a software. So all he knows is how that system works. You're you're talking to the lady. The lady it's her own software, See? and she's like, "You're not giving me access yeah. because she's saying I can I can look at some things even before we send somebody out by looking at my own system." But you're right. But what we we told everybody at that table was, right, the, the guy who's over here trying to actually fix the mechanical piece, he honestly doesn't know. Right? That that's that's not going to happen, and he won't know it tomorrow either. Uh, but, but talk with the lady, because you know, we got her out here for a reason, basically saying, I'm paying you $20,000 a year, and then I'm paying you all of these additional costs for service, and sometimes you guys aren't coming out in a timely fashion. So she's under a little stress right now, which would be a good time to reach out and say, tell me what it is that you absolutely have to have. And then just carbon copy uh, paper on it as well, so that we keep that stress level where we want it, yeah. and then I think you'll get what you want. But it's 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 not the mechanic in the field. He's just trying to get cooling or heating or something like that. The software, even the lady may not actually know that answer, um, but at least she can get in touch with somebody who does, because that would be somebody else in Johnson Control. I talked to her yesterday. I say, you know, Beth, they they all um, they are the technical stuff that you may not understand, but get somebody to talk to me mm -hmm. and understand about all this. Uh, a communication, how you can access on your end. Sure. Because I, mean, I, I can't load the software on the end. They have to load it. And then Correct. what they request me to open, then I can open it. But if I don't have a specific port number to open, yeah. I, I can't help you. You can't even yeah. go into their software. Yeah. They're, they're probably not going to want you in their software. <laughs> so then, I mean, they're, they're more than likely they won't. Um, but, but stay in touch with her. Uh, well, and just carbon copy the emails out because she's under a little stress. Where are they going to look? I'm paying twenty thousand dollars a year, and that's before you touch a piece of equipment. Um, yeah. And the latest software she said that was being upgraded. Maybe that's part of the challenge. Is the software is going to go through an upgrade this year? Wasn't it this year, right around the corner, Baker? Um, mm -hmm. So something's coming. Maybe that's maybe that's something that um, they want to wait for. Don't want to say it, but just like why don't we do this all at one time software mm -hmm. integration? Um, so that but that will not. reduce our, because some of what's happening is we got some intermittent power out there. We all know that. As soon as it's an intermittent power, it's locking itself out and its default is off, which means then somebody has to come back in there and change the default. So now they've changed the default to on, which is slightly different. And then some of this goes back to Warren, too. So he's got a screen. It's got pretty little GUI interfaces. And, and, and instead of, you know, Warren taking that next step by going, what, what do I have? It's like, you know, hey, you guys have a problem. And you're like, your first line of defense is always the person who's using the building. You know, like, you, you call me, I'm like, does your member staff have batteries in it? Have you changed your air filter out? Is well, power on? I mentioned that. So, well, we're going to have a public works person, person out there. Come on. Yeah. Well, well, and, and public works is, is still better, <laughs> right? But, but Warren's step 
is, is something that they're that not talking too. about. You know, there, there's some non-function type items. And, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but like right now in this building, you really couldn't tell me whether that fans on. But what we would do in our business is I would hang a little string on there that you would never see. Gotcha. Right? But I could look at it and go, well, it's too far up for me to go like this. Mm -hmm. I could look at the string and go, fans blown, because that automatically tells me several things. I got power, I got that, this is called dust. It may not tell me the temperature, right? That's right. So, yeah, and over there they got VAV boxes. So the first one is as long as it's open, now I know that it's not cool. But where their issue has been going on is the equipment's running, the fans closed right. Oh, that is, yeah. So it's a combination of technology, but you never can get past the true idiot buttons. Yeah. Well, I mean, because there are certain things that you have to be able to do. Um, yeah. And, but you can't just automatically say it's somebody else's problem. You have to train yourself to say, I want you to do the five easy things first. Because mm -hmm. remember, $200 an hour for somebody to come over here and do the exact same thing. Right. <laughs> no, that's, so that's, that's 500 bucks. Right. That's one of the things uh, I do get called for just something that, you know. Yep. And you, you want to avoid you, that. You can well, look at the, uh, it, the movie and yeah. you can tell whether the turbine running mm -hmm. or the, the damper is open or not. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, it's very uh, simple and straightforward. Yep. But, but, but that's where you just have yeah. to train, and that's, that's, you know, the better you do your job, yeah. to be honest, the more people expect you to do miracles. Um, but in, in my world, at least, it's a little better. I don't have to come. You, you guys, you know, get paid to show up. Mm -hmm. I can always tell them, no. <laughs> it, because of just that issue, you got to say, look, I, I, I'll walk you through stuff that's economical, you know, but you're calling a, a mechanic, and this mechanic's going to cost you real money. Mm -hmm. um, so don't, don't make it easy for me. Um, well, and so that means that's that's a facilities maintenance plan for the Morrow Center that doesn't exist. Yes, I mean it. it, it uh, I mean, without making it sound like it's you know volumes of books, but it's understanding that for the for the very basic needs of the building mm -hmm. and the, the the range of calls that you know you see over and over and over again, yeah. at some point you've got to say, look. Do this for me before before you call me. Yeah. And we, we talked to Brandon but too. So Brandon's got a couple yeah. ideas. Uh, there, there, there's there's several things in there. I mean, there, even how the building is cleaned still throws me a little bit. You know, we were in there the other day and we we're cleaning up something with a vacuum cleaner. The only vacuum cleaner, in a relatively household grade vacuum cleaner. Mm -hmm. And Warren was like, "That's not our vacuum cleaner." I'm like, I don't know whose vacuum cleaner it would be if it's over here. Mm -hmm. He said, "Well, that's the." people we hire to clean the rooms is their vacuum cleaner. And I go, okay, then where is your vacuum cleaner? Well, we don't have one. And, and if, if it's that basis, uh, it wasn't a $10,000 vacuum cleaner. It was like a $300 Hoover. Right. You know, right. You're like, I don't think I'm gonna break a $300 Hoover. Right. And, and then one of the things, the, uh, be, before I hear the complaint about the HVAC temperature, right. so I look at the entire map. Mm -hmm. So the map is actually show 66, 60.7, I, mean, I, I can show you the map here. This is a lot more high tech than it looks, but it's right. it's doable. But the, um, but the uh, complaint is still came because I'm not sure why. Because even even at my house, my temperature is like seventy. Right. Right. I mean, right. if you look at the in overall building, you look at sixty six. Yeah, and it's impossible and to produce sixty six unless it's. And the number it doesn't <laughs> lie. Right. <laughs> So let's say in this area, 66.9, mm -hmm. the bar room is 66.1, 66.0, 66.8. That is pretty chill to me. I, at yeah. a 90 degree outdoor temperature to get anything right. in the 60s period, <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> and, then, and this number, I mean, it, it, it reads on the thermostat. So we need to do things that make sense. So yeah. Tell Warren to take a jacket off. Yeah. <laughs> but but the reality is if, if you do have someone, you know, who's having an event and they hey, know Warren. all of the, we love you. All of the technology is the same well, one thing, but then you still that. have that real face just, interaction. And in some cases now that one not yeah. so much, but the gooing interface can actually yeah. get after it. Oh I believe you. Yeah, so yeah. there's almost that reading. But but it's very few people actually get to see that. Right. Because they, they think kind of like their house. You know, all I got is this light, is it working? Now you start to see overkill on data. 
Right, there's a lot of sensors giving you a lot of data. A lot of information. Yeah. And it now, shows the dampers that. But, but Warren's got access to that too, right? So it's not yes. like there's one person. But that's it's, not doing you know, you're an event. Your that's, that's all the time, not doing an event. No, it's all, no, all, it's all, all the time. time. Not an event. Where it changes is the just a person sitting in a room yeah. produces heat. Yes, now, right. if you're dancing, you're going to produce heat. Right, right. Fire. right. You multiply by three, four hundred feet. We don't have a vessel out right. there. We right. have different things. Right. You give me ninety degrees, keep that door open, that'll work on change from that. The right. humidity is going to go up dramatically, um, and it'll do humidity before it'll be what you consider to be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it'll, it'll pull it out. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have good to go for Tuesday? Yes. With, with the uh, information I sent you. Just about the phone number and putting the uh, the meeting on the internet. I'll call you. Let me know. Are you guys? Uh, are you guys want to take a quick break before we move on to Rochelle? Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Are you a guy ready for Rochelle to come in? Uh, no, I do. Yeah. You can't throw it away. It's against the restaurant. Especially if it's warm. You'd have to do this. I'm sorry, Chris and I had ice in there today. Thank you. Today. No, no, I'll take coffee. Ice in there? I'll be actually Absolutely. I, no, no, no. Just take bread in there, throw ice in there, call it. No, you have to do that. No, no, no. Tell me. What do you think of the Starbucks coffee you buy? You know what they call it? Cold brew. They brew it. We get it. They have to brew it somehow. I don't know why. Don't show all the bags you're coming around. Just make it. But so I got, she's got a new, she says, look, I got a new purse. I see you put ice in the bag. Um, <laughs> you don't see the ice bucket? Yeah. <laughs> now you can do it. Today, today there's ice bucket. No, I don't, I'm, I'm not high maintenance. Well, I don't think I'm high maintenance. He was talking so long. Ooh, I don't know if he's agreeing with that. <laughs> yeah, but it was me. Call, careful, it was call me. the room, the room. <laughs> Wait, this is about to see, right? Because I'm, I'm gonna have to have some more to stop. I do. I got two presentations I got to do for you. Oh, that's right. Good afternoon. I'm calling uh, in regards to having our uh, HVAC check. Uh, we haven't checked it since we moved here about four months ago. And we need to be checked out before we're actually in the market. So, uh, we need to go 323 496 8228. And we're located uh, just a little south of the airport. Mm -hmm. So let's let's play this little paramedic game just for a minute. Um, Are you back on the bar? He might have just right. actually pissed me off today. I thought he um, might have. Okay. So, oh, thank you. you know, the, anytime you have a certification, mm -hmm. it's registered oh. somewhere. Look at his training cost. It's not one. Right, right. right. But, it's, it's, but I'm not just talking about certificate. Here. Everybody's got one. I'm sure at the state level, someone's yeah. got it. And, and just like mine, if you wanted a list of every contractor in the state of Georgia, you could get it through the Secretary of State section. Sure. It would give you John Lampole, here's my license when I was licensed, and, and here's my section. Mm -hmm. So I could tell the difference between somebody who's in Tacoa that I have no interest in getting and somebody who might be around my area. So if I doubt of mind that a little bit, and I get it, and you sit there and you go, you know, I, could, I could play this game all day long, and just sit there and go, I'll tell you what. Um, yeah. You go again. I mean, you literally just put a scenario that basically says, I'm interested in talking. Um, and just go get it. 
you know, so now would I get I 10? I don't know what he said. State law requires EMTs. That's all. Yeah. You decided to do the other part. But, but it's, um, yes. you know, because I want. I'm with you. Face out that damn this ties into our budget uh, for fiscal year 2023. Um, so one of the things that we initially talked about was having a very young staff and struggling around coaching and development, clear expectations, et cetera, et cetera. I will say that though our staff is really, really small um, and young with the exception of Marty, who's been here forever and knows everything. Oh my um, gosh, I'm gonna tell her money. I'm telling her that, she, she's bad. She is my, she's like, old. literally, she's not old. <laughs> Literally, Marty and I have a, 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 a morning check-in every day, except for Fridays when she's not here. Um, she keeps me straight and honest and can usually very quickly fill in the holes and gaps of whatever we're looking for and struggling with. Um, so one of the things that we've done with the staff is having daily slash weekly staff meetings, ongoing coaching and development, and really starting to define some clear expectations of what exactly, and in this, in this realm, Karina, who is directly under me, Marty, who is under me, and then code enforcement that's not under me, though, work very, very closely with, um, with Victor and now Lieutenant Thrasher. Um, we have added two Clayton State marketing interns to our team, which has been just in the two weeks, three weeks that they have been here, have been a, a great help um, of being able to have someone that can dedicate their time to figuring out and at least working through the marketing plan that we have started to, to lay out, really starting to execute on some specific deliverables. Um, obviously, the addition of Lieutenant Thrasher um, and with planning and zoning, where we last left a couple of months ago, we do have, and I'll talk about this, I think, a little bit further, we do have the mixed-use moratorium that is ending on June 25th. Uh, we do have the staff has come up with recommendations for the updates to our zoning, particularly around development agreements, to get us where we need to be and what we want. Um, so we will, Baker, when do we say we're going to talk about that? The 14th, I think, is our... I'm sorry, I think we said June 14th, but we will have information, obviously, prior to that um, coming to the council. Um, the other thing with code enforcement, one of the things that has been an ongoing challenge, and this is not unique to the city of Morrow, is that nobody knows what your codes are. You know, most people, whether you're a resident or a business, you don't know what the codes are until you run a file of code enforcement. And so and I'm gonna talk a little bit more in depth about kind of a welcome packet 
and what that looks like for citizens and for businesses. But also there needs to be a really, I'm, I'm calling it a community education rollout, but it's basically code enforcement for dummies. Kind of take the code, boil it way down, make it fun, make it interactive, use our social media platform, make it visual so people start to understand what you can and cannot do. Repetition is always good. Um, but also leaning heavily on community engagement uh, to help not just from our, our two code enforcement officers, but sp specifically with community engagement to help shore up the gap from the educational standpoint around code enforcement. Using our proud meetings and then also leaning heavily on our HOA and neighborhood associations. Um, the perception of doing business with Morrow. So one of the things that I talked about before, and this is not new, I've actually talked about this probably for the 15 years that I've been in the county, is, you know, how we rebuild trust of our business community, sharing relevant contests, how to do business with Morrow, and really starting to change that narrative that we're difficult to do business with. Some of that difficulty that, that, that I find and in conversations that I have with people is because they don't know where to go. Where, where is the information, where are the resources? So one of the things that we talked about before is that we have rebranded our newsletter. So we now have a comprehensive newsletter that goes to all businesses and residents. Uh, still in three versions. It's still a hard copy going out quarterly. Still have some ideas of how we can make it an all-inclusive three versions in one. Kind of working that out because I've got to crunch some numbers to see how best to do that. We have redone our event postcards. Before, we had been sending three versions of our event postcards, and our business community was not getting them. Um, it creates silos. You know, if we are positively diverse, and that's how I like to believe that Morrow is, then we really need to lean into our diversity. But part of leaning into diversity is really about equity and inclusion. Um, and so having now a comprehensive newsletter that goes out in three languages to everybody, including our business community, has been a big win. Um, the website, the rebrand, we are in the design phase. We actually have a meeting one day next week, I believe Wednesday, uh, to walk through our designers, our first round template, and start to make substantive, substantive changes. Our interns are going to play a critical role in this with some of the wordsmithing that needs to happen um, and navigational flow. Um, as you are aware, our website, it's very, very old. I'm sure V has talked about it from a security standpoint. There's a lot that we can't do on it because it's so old that we've had basically had to turn most of everything off because of security issues. Um, and so a new website gets us to where we need to be in, in terms of how we promote ourselves, how we um, talk about our community, and again, all of this opening the door for different kind of discussion around economic development and making us attractive. Um, social media pages, the same thing. We've kind of started to, to narrow in on some stuff. Our metric numbers, I don't have them. I can share them with you at a later date. Have been really, really good. And part of it is that we've been consistent, doggedly consistent in sharing information. Uh, working on um, standard operating procedures for everything that we do and understanding that the SOP is not a, um, it's a recipe, but the recipe is, you know, an 80% guide of what you need to do, but it's still allowing for some, uh, there's some, there's some wiggle and some play within how we do what we do and what we're sharing. Um, currently, we still have a events page, um, the city page, Fire and PD obviously have their pages, and we also have a separate economic development change. Changing the focus of the economic development page to a true real estate page. So as I'm working through kind of all of the collateral and all of the updates of all of our different properties and investment opportunities here in the city, using this page, in addition to pushing out business information for our business community, really leaning into that economic development piece and using that page as a real estate page um, for us. So what's the Visit Morrow page? That's the oh. events page. Okay, okay. Yeah, and so we've got some some changes that will be coming in the next month or so about that page as well, because um, I don't think that it's, it's better than it was, but it's still not quite where it needs to be in terms of how it's laid out and what and how we're promoting. Because a lot of what's being promoted on the Visit Morrow page is a duplication of what's on the city page. Mm -hmm. And when you start to get into the algorithm and all your numbers, it's diluting your 
engagement numbers. Mm -hmm. So, any other questions here? No. All right. And then the elevator speech, which I talked about before. I'm not going to go into it again. Um, our board development. So we finally have our planning and zoning board is now fully operational. They meet monthly. Our URA and DD boards are also fully operational and meet quarterly. We will be having, as I get to the more um, project updates, um, a special called URA DDA meeting probably the first week of June. And then our MCTA board, um, which has been an absolute challenge. So we have finally, we have two board members that, that have been recommended to make the board fully operational. They now meet monthly. Um, as you are aware, the MCTA board had not met for quite some time last year. Um, and we've had an issue because we've had some board members that have just went MIA, so we only have three board members currently. So you can imagine that if one of them does not show up for the meeting at the last minute, we don't have a quorum and we can't take actionable items. Um, so our last month meeting, we were not able to have a, a true board meeting because we did not have a quorum. We do have a meeting this coming week um, on Thursday. Hopefully, we can get everybody on board again so we can take the vote to add these two and eliminate the issue around not having enough people to have a substantive meeting. Um, so some of the projects that we talked about, one is a new business welcome packet, and this is also a new business as well as a new residential package. In lots of digging and talking and picking stuff apart, I found that we did some variation of this in the past, um, wanting to revive this, but make it a little bit more comprehensive than some of the information that had been shared previously. From a business perspective, wanting to share information about how to have a new, an ad in the newsletter, how to get at information about having a digital ad, dog park ad, the sponsorships, our ribbon cuttings, how to be an event vendor, mixer, host, calendar events, and again, the code info, planning and zoning around community engagement, council meetings, MCTA board meetings, and that in terms of board service as well as committee service. One thing that I did not talk about with the MCTA board, so leaning heavily trying to get the board solid, then we can start to roll into building true committees for the MCTA board. Um, it's coming, but we've got to get the board up and finalized first. And then finally, volunteer opportunities. Um, something somewhat similar to this for the uh, residential welcome packet, um, but wanting to make sure that as we do this, that we have some hard copies, but really putting a QR code, postcard, drop it in a folder as people come in to get their business license, they can scan, and it also makes it easier that we can make updates and changes on the fly without burning through a printing and, and um, a printing budget. Um, and this, all this information live on our new website as well. And fashion a portion of that for council because you know, yes, I, anytime absolutely. I get a card, I yep. forward it absolutely. Over to you. But you know, whatever the process in the system is mm -hmm. to identify, you know, people and vendors that, mm -hmm. that I may meet that mm -hmm. may be useful. Yes. I don't, I don't want to inundate you all with no. two million mm -hmm. emails. Mm -hmm. But if there's a piece of a process where I can say, well respond to this email sure. or you know provide this right. you know i can push it in that way right right right, right. definitely um one thing that i did not put on here I may have it maybe someplace else is a business directory so there is a a challenge that the software that the ladies use up at the front um to maintain the business licenses is very difficult to pull reports or to pull reports in a way that's actually information that we really need from my office um so i can get you know and they pull it for me every month you know name um name of business address maybe a telephone number and it's a maybe because a lot of times there's not a phone number there may or may not be a contact info and there's never an email address and so it's a lot of mm -hmm, for the business it's what they're yeah, capturing absolutely. Right. absolutely it's what right. they're capturing right. when people that's come why in. i want to go to iWork. yeah that's what we'll show you. Yeah. The difference. Um, and but the big piece that's missing is that don't have an easy way without a whole lot of manual manipulation mm -hmm. to categorize our businesses. I mean, like, pull me a list of all of my restaurants, pull me a list of all of my retail, pull me a list of all of my doctors. Pull me, don't really have that. Um, and it's, it's very, very challenging. So it makes it very hard to do 
all of these pieces without a lot, and you can imagine burning through a lot of man hours. You have to ask about the anniversary dates as well. That's, that's the other thing, and that's exactly where I'm going. So right now, so I spent a good bit of time with Denise last week trying to figure out, well, how can we get this? There is not an easy way to extrapolate that to show me, well, when did they first get a business license, you know, and how many years we can start to calculate anniversary dates. So as part of kind of the engagement with our business community, to send out, you know, on our board, you know, congratulations, blah, blah, it's our 20th anniversary tomorrow, and build stuff around that. Um, v and I have got a help ticket into the current software provider, I don't even know their name, the current software providers to see in the interim while we figure out what we're gonna go to, if they can build a custom report to get us that. But for anyone that's worked with software, it's, it's, and I'm not saying that it's garbage, but your data is only as good as what, your, your output is only as good as the data that you're putting in. And the fact that you know, this is all the same data from years and years exactly. and years, but not necessarily a platform update. Right. So, I mean, it's, exactly. it's gonna be a challenge. So it's, it's gonna be a challenge. We're working through it as quickly as, as we can. Um, with this to a business ambassador program, this also kind of ties into a volunteer program. Um, one of the things, if you look at, um, and I, I kind of stole this idea, so in Greenville, South Carolina, the person that wrote Good Night Moon, all of us that have little kids know Good Night Moon, is from Greenville. And there's the mouse, little mouse, and they have this program where they have these little die, ca die cast mice that they hide all around the city. And this kind of goes into placemaking, kind of all of these things, kind of talk about placemaking. Um, but it ties back into a business business ambassador program. So if you're out in their downtown area and you find the little mouse, you can take the mouse to one of a list of here are our business ambassadors and turn it in for a cookie, a smoothie, a sweet tea, wh whatever that thing is. Wanting to do something here, doesn't, obviously it won't be the mice, um, but having a true business ambassador program that's different than just here's a listing on our website of all of the businesses in Morrow, but kind of baking in some very specific things to be a business ambassador. And so that it Could becomes be a true sure. push-pull relationship. I see you over there kind of. Cover your ears, John. I know. So <laughs> stickers <laughs> with the M at That's, 233 with the QR code. You're in your head. Head. Mm -hmm. That's my, my so thinking. So are we, are we after all the businesses to participate in this program? Or will it just be? I haven't worked out in my. I kind of have it worked out in my head. I need to sit and start to sketch all this out on paper. Um, in theory, yes, but in reality, we know that not everyone's going to do it. Not everyone's going to be interested in doing it. So, but having some very yeah, specific yeah, criteria yeah. around what that engagement looks like, yeah. what that looks like. So you'll have a have a have a uh, sort of a what um, blast. News letter, let, formal letter, or something introducing this. It, it'll be the a, a, a variety of things, kind of letter, postcard, a separate That's business kind of electronic letter. newsletter that just goes to the business community, separate from the hard copy that we're sending out. How we bake into the digital boards, et cetera, et cetera. It, okay. it, it, it has to be yeah. a multi-tiered approach of how we get to these people and get them to start to invest yeah. in us no, in a different way. Consistent contact information. And, and just say, yeah. yeah, that makes it a little bit challenging, yeah. but I, I'm, I'm confident we can do it. The other thing, wanting to reinstitute, you'll see in your budget too, a, a true volunteer program. So right now we're working at coming up with some mock-ups or some volunteer swag. Uh, for the city of Morrow, and really, again, much like the business ambassador program, how exactly do we engage with our community volunteers, and what is it that we're asking them to do, um, particularly around events? You know, we do we see a lot of events. Mm -hmm. We have a perfect opportunity for volunteers to to engage with us. Um, Art on fire is an idea that I have um, to paint out some. You can't do all of them, but to paint some of our what are those things called? I keep forgetting. Fire hydrants. Fire um, Fire, yes. <laughs> the fire hydrants. Okay, so quick side with the fire hydrants. I think we, Roger told me, I think we have like 500 or something crazy in the city. Okay. But they're maintained by the Water Authority. The Water Authority has not painted them in over two years, nor do they have any interest in painting them. Um, and most of them look like crap. They just, they just look bad. Um, 
So the idea of kind of going back into placemaking and how you start to engage all of these people and pushing everybody in the same direction is Institute of Public Art program. In our commercial corridor, we cherry pick what are our most significant areas and you know, with very, very, very specific criteria, allowing community members, partner with Arts Clayton, partner with Clayton State's art program um, around painting our fire hydrants. And we've already figured out there's a basically kind of like a net gator that's a reflective thing that would go around the thing so they can still see it at night. So the and paint doesn't become an issue. Talking this out, um, the Living Walls Art Project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe they can roll out some artists to, to do something creative. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, or we have host a, a, a competition mm -hmm. to call out for free artists yeah. just mm -hmm. to yeah. uh, participate mm -hmm. in the, the, the reward we got the product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. All right. Um, our events. So right now we know we have our five signature events. We have anywhere between 13 to 15 additional events that are added throughout the year. Um, again, working very much through, we've got a really good SOP in place for kind of here is the process that we take in doing and executing each of our events. The thing though that we need to spend a little bit more time talking about and need some guidance on is our process for adding non-budgeted events because as you can imagine this kind of ties into event partnership agreements as well as the rentals because as you can imagine we get calls almost every week of somebody that has a great idea and we want to do an event and we want the city of Morrow to partner with us and you know we're kind of doing it on the fly and kind of having you know small group conversations like yeah okay that that sounds good it doesn't conflict with anything let's do it but would like something at least a little bit more, with some little bit more parameters around what are we doing? Um, because it does have budget implications, but even aside from the budget implications, just making sure that we are maximizing what we're doing um, and not diluting our resources. Um, because the thing with doing, particularly so many of the, doing this number of events, there's a point that people will stop paying attention. So wanting to make sure that we're not spreading our events too thin and that we're you know being a little bit more targeted so some of the conversations that we've had at least in the past two or three that have come up we've had an opportunity to be like nope 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 not interested in doing a separate event but we can take this piece of what you're interested in doing and this bake this into an existing event i think that's good yeah so, as a way to make it more robust the, the, the event partnership you know kind of allowing that to grow. That's something that has been mentioned previously. Mm -hmm. As a council, we have to understand what the partnership means. We need mm -hmm. to kind of make sure right. that we're on the right track. Exactly. Time. And then once we, we're clear on that, I mean, you know, not, not, every, not every vendor that comes to City Hall is going to necessarily be the event that we as council mm -hmm. may go to, but sure. residents may go to. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. And then the event rental. So, Myself, Warren, and Karina um, met a couple of weeks ago, and it's probably even been a month now, and kind of reluctantly pulled Essie into this conversation around coming up with kind of tying to this event partnership agreement, really looking at event rental rates of what exactly does it mean to rent the district, what are the terms around renting the district, what are the do's and don'ts of renting the district, and then starting to put some dollar amounts around that. Um, we need to pick it back up because there's some pieces on it that we need to finish. Um, the tourist center, as we know, will still be a temporary rental um, as we move into the construction phase for the restaurant there. And then obviously looking at the community room and then once it comes online, Reynolds Road. Um, but as soon as we have that in a, in a more working place, we can present it um, so we can all agree and make changes and agreements on what our rental rates will be and what the parameters are for renting each of these uh, facilities. Quick question on the on the, the district. Mm -hmm. So when as we are working to fill the the businesses, mm -hmm. we are looking at renting out the other space for mm -hmm. events or something while we have businesses there as well. Is that the the district itself almost like um the cater. The cater has a little square mm -hmm. 
and, and you can lease you can the square. The square. Yeah, and you can rent it. Now you can't the like, take the, the whole space. thing. It's not so, the buildings, it's yeah. just the yeah. great So you have to realize, you know, yeah. building things that kind of say, you're going to sell off a reasonable portion of your district. At mm -hmm. some point, the land will own to somebody else. The, the main squares and things like that will always be yours, right. or should always be yours. Um, and there shouldn't be any reason you can't have an event there. Mm -hmm. Not only you have an event, but ultimately somebody else, if they have an event, we would lease the square out to them. Sure, we're under some type of rules and, and agreements. In any particular type of events that we would not have there during them? I, mean, um, you know, I think things that would be. Well, yeah, there's always going to be something that you wouldn't do over there. Um, right now, you have more green space than you will have later because you'll have more construction and the new building will be built. Um, your, your biggest true green space area is ultimately Reynolds Field, right? That's got the greatest section of green space and it probably will stay green space a long time. Um, you know, you want the densities, you want the people. So it, it feeds into some of the things you're doing, craft fairs, things like that. Um, what would be something that you wouldn't do? I mean, the obvious stuff would be things that are too big. Um, you're not doing so air trucks, you're, you're not doing boat trucks, you're not doing... Oh, oh the, well, yeah, well, I mean... The, some of those, you know, know, you're, you're, you're talking the less than desirable folks. Mm. Is that what we're... Or, or, or the, the maximum crowd. I mean, and and that we have put that part you're, of the rental you're, stuff you're that we limits? have written out include right, but kind of what the bandwidth but, is. But your crowd limits, if, if you physically just walk people in there, you mm -hmm. can get as many people as they do at Stone Mountain. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no reason that you can't do that. Um, the, the, the district at some point can hold so many, but you just open up your road capacity. It's mostly going to be pedestrian traffic. What mm -hmm. you do is shut it down to car traffic. Right. This and is to compliment the businesses. I'm to, mm -hmm. I think it's compliment mm -hmm. the businesses mm -hmm. that are there. And we do the lease agreements with them. That the component that's in the lease is to say, We've got the you know, we will be hosting events and you will, you need mm -hmm. to be aware of that. Right. And it should play, I mean, we may swamp them as far as business goes, but I wouldn't, if I was there, I wouldn't say, oh no, bring any people in here. Oh, they yeah. want as many people as you humanly could put in right. there. So you've got um, the fountain and then there's adjacent <coughs> green space and right. then there's green space on the back side even. So it can be oh, all will. of our green space or a section yes. of our green space mm -hmm. or we'll need an agreement. the back side of the Oh yeah, you're going to have a series of agreements. Yes. You'll, yeah. you'll have to, and we'll learn yeah. some of the what mm -hmm. to do and not mm -hmm. to right. do. Right. Mm -hmm. But most of it will be security, cleanup. Right. Yep. Um, decibel level, like yep. we've never really had that problem yet, but I'm sure there's somebody mm -hmm. who could put a boom box out there mm -hmm. we can hear from here. Um, Maintenance of our, so that's our open container area. It is. Right. And as things grow, you know, understanding there mm -hmm. there are open container accommodations, but. Right, and we've started to well, draft we, all We had that something at one time that was written in there where the, let, let's just call it an event cup. The, the, you know, we produced the cup and you'd buy it from us. Yeah, that's and we saw what we paid for it, but it would be just that's just revenue right, right there. And, right and there. that's yeah. how we know that you've got an approved yeah. container so we're not getting glass yeah. and yeah. different things like that. Yeah. But, yeah. but but you know that dates a bit, right? Where you right. you kind of come back to come full circle because we are, are yeah, not John, there yet. You must have got up early today. There was a lot out there at one time. <laughs> there, there really was, but yeah, it's just uh, so, yeah, you got to take a step back just, before you take a step yeah, forward. Yeah, just to make sure we're, we're, you know, the liability for the city's mm -hmm. event doesn't, you know. Yeah. Well, you got the insurance factors exactly. on both sides. Exactly. Yeah. That's in there too. Right. Right. It, it's on their insurance requirements, to operate security requirements. Oh, yeah. Well, see, right now we take the whole thing because they're not open. Mm -hmm. But right. once they're open, we're not. You can't close it off. Right. Right? You right. have to be able to say, "Here's what you have." But in their agreements, we let them know you, you're going to park over here mm -hmm. on those days. You're not going to be, you know, parking behind your building. Right. You know, that's so that. We're, whether, we're, whether that's you own it or you lease it, it's going to be in your agreements. That's we're, the we're, beauty. Of it. We're still maintenance and all of that will be on the city. Well, for now, so and let's so kind like of walk trash that through. And our trash. Well, well, short term, long term. Long term, and I mean really long term, you set up a CID district. And what does okay. that mean? That basically means some of the taxes you're paying okay. are used to support the district, and that's security, mm -hmm. maintenance, and different things along those lines. Because at this point, you know, the House of One is very difficult to actually make happy. Mm -hmm. There is um, a saying yeah. to get the tax dollars to support paying the utility for. Well, you're, you're collecting a CID yeah. district as a private mm -hmm. business tax to the private business to set it up. 
So, and it's only listed within the district. Right. Sure, the geographical sure, right. boundaries yeah, of what you're at. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's, there's as, stuff, as yeah. we get mm -hmm. more yeah. happening, um, then that's what you're trying to do with your cost yeah, recovery. Like a regular lease, like usually you usually have a CAM for you. CAM is going to cover insurance, insurance taxes, and maintenance. The original yeah. leases, as you lay them out, uh, have it actually work. listed in there. That at, by year three, we will like start charging now. you a thousand dollars a month uh, yeah. to go toward uh, these costs. Uh, now that's that's your lease. You own it. You get to write what you want to write. As you sell it, you don't want that person to come by scot free and say, "You're going to maintain everything." I said, "I'll be happy to maintain everything, but you're going to pay on your price per square foot, and your price per square foot is based on the district has a certain number and to be expanded. I mean, if you went multiple floors." But you're going to have at least a certain amount of, of, of acreage that is going to be sold somewhere. You can define that right now. You, you take those six squares out and say, those are mine forever. Now the rest of it, mm -hmm. what do you have? Um, let's say you get into the residential section in the back that's not even in the game at this point. It'll be purchased, annexed, included. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, you, you get into a little more complexities. It, 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 you have to almost be greater than we are right now to really cement those. Um, but those were in the original discussions. Those documents exist here somewhere. Greg actually produced a couple of them. Uh, example, you sell a piece of property, we have a right of first refusal. What does that mean? You know, you sell it to Dorothy. Well, Dorothy wants to treat the property poorly or you treated the property so poorly, you're not going to be any better. Be we get to go in and, and uh, write a first refusal at the same price we get to buy it so that we can protect the district. We also have some exclusions that says one person can't own everything. Why? One person owns everything. A lot of the downtowns in, the, in lower South Georgia, that, that one person treats it terribly. And you go, well then we don't want you to own more than a certain percentage of the district. And we know how that would go. Your wife will own a certain percent, your uncle will own a certain percent, whatever it is. Um, but you want to have it so that what is the district designed to do? It's an entertainment district. It's designed to enhance the opportunities for the city. Um, and you treat it like a true downtown. Look at, look at the downtowns all over Georgia. The, the, the local government doesn't own the downtown. You know, but we still get to do parades, fairs, and things like that. But we do want to have... Uh Influence. We will have a tremendous going, amount of influence. Going into this, we want to make sure that we uh, at least have, you know, certain things covered. The, the beauty of a lease at this point is, is the lease is just an agreement between two parties. You haven't given up any of your rights. Right. Um, he's just leasing the inside adding, of the building. We're not adding on any expenses that we don't need to. No, and, and we're, we're going to want them to pay some. Right. Okay. And just, just like in a shopping center, most people think the building owner is paying all that. He's transferred all of that to every tenant that's in there, every dime of it. Um, but if you had a whole shopping center and you only leased one portion of your shopping center out, you know that guy can't pay the whole freight. That's just right. not how it's done. So you have to help it get along until you get there. Then you start to say, now you're going to pay too. And everybody has a vested right. interest in doing better. But, and to your point, they, you guys had asked several folks here in the council. I've asked for plans and costs and everything out there at the district. So they're they're doing a real estate appraisal starting in June. I asked mm -hmm. the guy to do it, so I can come out and knock that out, and it'll be a comprehensive assessment of that. That's including what what he thinks retail valuation could be, what it, what it, the infrastructure valuation, other things like that. So it should be a pretty comprehensive document to be able to look at and go, hey, this is what we have. Now let's make some decisions based off of that too. So are we going to uh, open the calling the bid for getting the uh, that service? Getting the what? Now? The appraisal service. He's the one who did it previously, and it's not it's under the dollar amount, so I don't think it's going to be an issue. But he hasn't given me a price yet either, so it depends on what he's in the quote. Okay. Well, he did most of the work in 2015. Yeah, it's not that old. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what happened back then, but because of the uh, the the rent rate was were not really practical at the moment. So, and in the the histor historicals have make the statement and let's try to do it uh, and this time and avoid that mistake that have happened in the past. Well, what, I'm not clear. Uh, what is what what when we put the the, 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 I would love to see old time world open, but 
to what the to what to what the cost, what we put in, and what is the revenue stream come in. Uh, I don't want to see the mistake that have happened in the past. Well, the valuation that's part of what the assessment is because it'll be a valuation on potential usages for retail or entertainment, whatever. But he gives you a price analysis on those as well, which is why I like his and. Yeah. Well, the, the whole dynamic of the area and everything now is different than it was mm -hmm. then. So we have and property values are just a little different. A little so. different. <laughs> just a little yeah. Different. I think a, a layer of this too. I mean, I don't want to create a whole dialogue while you're doing your presentation, mm -hmm. but. But she. Rest up off the highway. Um, <laughs> Part of what we do have to remember, um, we want things up and running. We say, you know, revenue, but we're a government, and some stuff is just going to break even. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the thing that kicks us into gear to make right? millions. That's the air conditioning. Millions of oh. millions of dollars, so to speak. So um, we're 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 mindful. We're ramping up because we want things to be operational. We watch revenue, but I don't think we'll be forecasting, you know, profits we of. We should because that's the enterprise. It's not government fundamental. Well, when you talk about public it safety, raining. police, it it you are wrong. Stuff <laughs> right. like that, it's raining. We don't look at the. I told you I can hear it. <laughs> it's raining. It's but raining. When, you, when we step into the um, enterprise section, we should be mindful minimal practice even we don't want to have the burden of the span on top of the other necessi necessity service public safety service and so at have. this point what what enterprises do the only enterprise fund that we have is M moral center uh, yeah moral center but the uh, the district old town moral should be the same it's the entire it's enterprise yeah Okay. So, that's why so when we talk about the, the Morrow Center and understanding, you know, being a, a municipal event facility, you know, as, as mentioned previously about kind of comparing our services offered with fire and, and police with other cities of, of equal size, um, understanding that, I, and like I said, I'm not to go down the road of, de of debate, but there are there are even larger municipal event centers and facilities that don't make money. Mm -hmm. But is it a service that we want to offer? Is it an amenity that we, you know, want to highlight in our city to create an additional layer of destination? We do. Um, so, to to what you mentioned earlier, numbers being off hundreds of thousands of dollars, a couple years ago. We're not in that same position, but understanding, are we going to make a million dollars off the Morrow Center? Maybe not. Do we break even and we have good events and that raises our, um, that, that raises the focus and the attention on Morrow being a destination where the only city off the interstate, you know, there's a balance to it. And, and I, I guess I wanted to toss that out there. And see. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, it's, 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 it, it's more simple than that. And, and, and the first is, to just being honest for just a second, most of the people who sit at this table don't do this for a living. So the basis of the conversation you have, not trying to be rude, is you're clueless. You, you can't do evaluation in your head. You don't know how the city makes money. And you know, you're basically having a, a political thought process that's designed to pander to whoever you're listening to. Right? Fine, if that's what you want to do. That's a political decision. Um, but if you actually do pay attention to it as a business, you will see that it is done very similarly, whether you're in the private sector or you're in the public sector. So how do you get everybody there? And that includes all the different boards and different things that you have. It's not going to happen overnight. Right. The, the first asset is you own it. That's just a fact. Anybody who's got any sense says, you know, you can't have broken windows and things like that in an area. Has it had some success? I'll, I'll give you the first one. If, if you think you brought a $65 million building to Sears just based on good luck, you know, you're crazy. 
you know, the district and the amount of time and effort we spent opening up that view corridor to I-75 made that a possibility. So you may have just saved South Lake Mall. You may not have opened up a door, but the efforts to move it in the right direction just landed you a historical opportunity to probably save an entire section of town. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, so that's by itself. If you do nothing else, you've managed that win. How big of a win is it? I don't know that you'll know that until the day it opens its doors and give it a couple of years of different things. Um, but because it's impossible to transfer 25 years of experience, I can't do the Vulcan mind mill. I think um, Vaughn's working on that. But the what you can do is to start to say, here's where we are. Okay, we we found some revenue streams to that we should have tapped a long time ago. Insurance. When, when somebody breaks the windows out of your house. You, you, you call the insurance company, the police too, but the insurance company. When you have storm damage, you call the insurance company. Uh, we should have gotten more, but that's just the facts. You know, the facts are, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know. But what did we get? We got new roofs. That's pretty good. Um, you know, the value of the property is in the infrastructure, not necessarily in the buildings itself. We got some damage, you know, that I think if we use the money wisely, Will, will, will improve its visual appeal. It won't, it won't solve all the miracles, there's no question of that. The appraisals do things that are third party. Why? Because in the world of politics, someone always says, you're making this up. You're like, I'm not making up anything. You know, so we can use the private sector to say, well, what do you think? In an appraisal, the first thing that they'll do, and there's like three or four different appraisal methods. So one of them is just, what is my replacement cost? You go, okay, um, in today's environment, we know what it costs just to put sidewalks down Lake Harbor Road, hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know? So you go in there and you say, this is what it would cost to have a 10 acre district, district, water power, sewer gas, a green space, and a central fountain. I assure you, if we were doing this from scratch right next to I-75, we would be talking multiple millions of dollars before you put the first building on it. Then you do have some buildings you know, that have been kind of beat up a little bit, but there were two operational restaurants. You had a third operational section. We had several others. And my guess is by the time those are valued out, you're going to come up with a couple more million dollars uh, in terms of value of the existing infrastructure. An operating restaurant is worth more than a vacant building. So you get the building filled, you don't have the ability to do that. Um, and, and, and you'll see that. There's other information that the city has or easily could attain which would be, you know, why is that building over here any different than the building, the, the, the $3 cafe? Let's just use that as an example. Why is that building any different than a restaurant we'd have damn near adjacent to it? It isn't. You could use those valuations. You can say, what is your price per square foot that you lease a restaurant out for? Um, the number of people who want a restaurant, probably 10 or 15 people call me per week. You know, some aren't capable, some are. Um, you know, retail, it's over retail. We know that. So how are you going to make that happen? So there's a price on all of that. You give me a dollar value per square foot added to the common area cam, right, which is going to be done in every building that you have, whether it's ours or not, um, and I can back into a valuation. But you won't believe me. No, should you. I don't, that's fine. So you will have somebody who will tell you that in detail. They won't tell you specifically everything that you could do. But there's, there's more than enough. So I would look at it and say, you already got 65 million and you hadn't even started good yet. Let's continue on our code enforcement odyssey, which is hammering them. That by itself doesn't sound like it's there. But, but if we wouldn't have been doing the code enforcement, how long would it have taken us to realize that South Lake hasn't paid a business license fee in four years? Well, there's 60 grand that just showed up at your doorstep. I'm not saying it's not 60 grand you didn't know, and I'm not saying that we should have caught it before now. We should have. I agree, our, our software is a disaster, but we've known that since the day I got here. But we haven't sat on our hands. We bought the software. We are implementing that software. We have other software designs to be able to solve these problems. It's, a, it's the cheap seats to be able to go out there and go magic. You know, I can yell at staff all day long. That's not going to make anything get produced. Right? 
you, you have to be accountable for that. Say, we have bad software. We're funding new software. Software is being implemented literally as we speak. Is it going to be perfect? I don't know. I'll bet not perfect. You know, we learn after we adjust. We put it in and we adjust from there. So you've got more events that have been out there in that district in any time in the last 10 years. Very few people go out into that district and don't like it. Very few. You know, so your opportunities are good. Understand how your city makes money. And then, if you want to throw dough, you know, stones, then I would say one other one. Let's leave the district out for just a second. You know, we've lost a tremendous number of existing businesses. The businesses that refill the area are um, maybe not producing as much revenue as the first one. Then I'd really be interested in, in hearing how somebody else anticipates modifying a third party interest like U.S. Properties Group or something like that and being able to make those properties better for a higher tax value or to be able to put new businesses in there with, without the cheap answer of, you know, we're just going to do a, a business grant and pray that somebody actually is going to do a good job. If, if you don't have a realistic fundamental answer and the only way to have that is you have to understand how it's done, um, then what you're basically saying is I don't like your idea, but I'm clueless as to my own. I, I get that. Go ahead, I'm not trying to take up your hair. Um, so that's actually a perfect segue into where we are with all of our projects. So when I came on board in November, as I've shared with you before, I was handed a blank computer and no paper <laughs> kind in my office that wasn't trash. Um, it has taken a while, but I would say in the recreation of files and at least being able to find all of the pieces, we're probably about 75% there. Literally every day I unearth and trip on a new pile of, oh, well, well here's this stuff. And so being able to put things where they belong. Um, so we're in a better position um, in that respect. Also with all of this, we have um, finally got into CoStar again. Finally have started to clean that whole, it's a cluster. But it's better than it was. It just, I tell myself this every day. It's a cluster, but it's better than it was. Um, so at least right now, have got all of the district on here um, and some of our other smaller properties working through getting all of the rest of these online on CoStar. Um, in going back and forth with CoStar, so apparently CoStar bought LoopNet and has changed pricing and how LoopNet now works. So CoStar is basically your Think of it like Google. It's kind of Google for real estate, but you pay for it. We have a monthly subscription that we pay that we can put all of our properties on and all the details and pictures and graphics and all that other stuff. LoopNet um, now is priced per project. So we don't have an option of saying, well, let's put everything, because LoopNet is basically your your um, like paid advertising, so you rank much, much higher in the Google search, right? But the way that they do it now, it's like, literally, and I don't have my, I don't have my notes with my numbers on it, um, but say, for example, like a gold package would be like 600 and some odd dollars a month for one, and that would be for every single project that we want to have ranked higher in the search engine. And so Baker and I started talking about this, then we kind of had to put it aside to get through all the budget stuff, need to pick this back up next week, and cherry pick and decide of our projects, which do we want to expend, allocate the funds to have rank higher. My thought is all of this stuff here around, like I said, or particularly around Strata and possibly the LCI parking net. But um, working on it, getting closer every day, but as you could also imagine, this is very tedious um, and takes a while. So the district, the greenhouse, um, the vent hood is finally in. They are working on the kitchen now. They are installing the vent hood. I believe the windows are supposed to be in next week, Baker? Mm -hmm. Next right. week. Um, we are still waiting on Big Mike to provide his, um, some documentation that we have requested from him so that we can go into the lease. Um, the lease is done on our end, needing to have a schedule a sit down with him so we can move forward um, with him, and if not him, with somebody else. Because um, to the mayor's point, 
I get calls almost every day, particularly about the greenhouse. And I've got three very viable people that are pretty much ready to, to move in there if the Big Mike does not work out. Um, the Red House, that's the Vanquish restaurant. Uh, we had a conversation with Guardi about two weeks ago-ish, um, needing, still waiting on him to send me his architect. Because uh, part of the challenge is we've been going with through Whitley with um, whatever his company is to do the survey and some other stuff that needed to happen to finalize the set of plans. Um, Guardi has his own team. We're going to use his team. And they have assured us that, yes, they're still on board. Yes, they're very much interested. They're ready to move forward. And once plans are submitted and approved, um, they can be operational in 30, 60 days. Um, the small white house is the Southern Peach Barbecue. We are still in the design phase uh, with this as well. The architect, he should be having plans to us in the next week or two, because he's coming up on about his 30 days as to when he said he would have them um, to us so we can work through the design phase, finalize plans, and they can move forward. Um, Napier House, that's the large white house with the columns. That is a concept for a brewery, I always have to say it real slow, uh, for a brewery, which is Brian Consul. Again, had plans, had a conversation with him a couple of weeks ago. They've made some adjustments to the plans and looking at it now more as a microbrew um, instead of a full-on brewery. Um, the blue house, we don't have any, any movement on that as of yet. The yellow house, um, nothing substantive, though, as this the whole district being, you know, outlined as an entertainment district, looking at potentially, oh, it just went out of my head, it's right up the street. Splat. splat. Thank you, Picasso Splat, splat. Mm -hmm. um, as possibly, I just like saying Splat, not nice Splat, because um, it, it's actually tailored, maybe be absolutely perfect for that. Yeah, he's he's been doing great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he does like Comedy Night and some other yeah. stuff that he does that fit, would be a much better fit in the Yellow House. He, um, he has to, because he's going to do comedy night. He's going to start bringing in alcohol exactly. and get his job supposed to. Yep. So before he steps ahead of his, Tequila. his common sense, yeah, right. we got to put him in a history the history in the way that we do. Right. And it's not yeah. just him, the little paint and sip lady. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh we yeah. Don't yeah. If you're starting to see, you know, yeah. the theory so is you bring your own, mm -hmm. and you're going, okay, so that's nice fly. Kind of and after a while, form. you're just like, we're no seeing John. Yeah, um, just because we don't say yeah, any yeah, yeah. plans have always been for that. We want to, some control. To the we also right. want the alcohol it, it, license. To so there's a section that says yeah. the only district that allows us to take that. That's, 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 and those would be two. <coughs> two <coughs> I had the, the splat room guy that went and looked at the yellow house on Tuesday. It was a little bit of a confusion as to who was supposed to be where, but we talked to him. And he likes it. And you're just like, okay. About my He's an artist. You know, yeah. Give me a general sketch as to what you would do with the building. Let's talk about what things. makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a whole lot easier to build a, like an interior of a house than it is a kitchen. I'm pretty sure it fits into the kitchen. It's right there at the district. So, like I was saying yeah. yeah. before, the interior of that jam up hotel or the text yellow because of the structure. Right. The blood going for the red art. And then there's the punt shack right next to the entrance of the hotel lobby. I mean, that's. I think there's more value to do stuff like that yeah. over there. He's so, doing, and his number is for what he's paying, plus uh, she's paying mm -hmm. for rent already. The, the one, the, the assistant yeah, one that we have here. Look, are common sense. And, and then this isn't kitchen. The kitchens are three hundred grand and all right. that. Uh, this well, right. they come in, you, you can you can build a five hundred thousand yeah. dollar house. So like the, when you look at what all yeah, the profits are, the so the you are real yeah. cost. Uh, you're you're talking about you still have contractors. Mm -hmm. There's entire kind of structure yeah. doing of that. So and yeah. Yeah. you already have a pad. You already have a frame. We don't know what's going on. Like There's no that. engineer to let you know what's going on. He's a good in. section. Because the splat house would be show different me. to the show restaurant. We can help. I just want to see it. Oh, right, right there. That's what we have. Because on that one, we can't. Um, that second floor, you know, everything's about how you burn the second, but yeah, I just need to know you. Well, we tell me you first, because that way we can go, okay, well, you're out. LVL beams do a lot. We have to be kind of a lot. That's the beauty of an artist. You'll see well past our They get over there, John. I think those would be two good businesses to go over there. You almost have to have marketing people. I don't really think they're If you're not fun. 
Friday. And he's yeah. good. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. Fun. All right. Oh, so, so, uh, yeah. retail yeah. out yeah. Back on the so, These are the shops. Um, doing them in quads. They're kind of their four quads. Working through the uh, rehab of each of the quads and get ready for occupancy. The plan is that Karina and or myself will be moving out to the district whenever. Um, but um, we had said mid-May, so now maybe mid-June. Do we have a date? Oh, no. Kind of I'm stuff? sticking to mind at the end of this month. Okay. All right. We'll see. Um, and we do have some tenants already lined up to look at least in moving into that first quad and kind of build, clean up, fix, rent. Build, clean up, fix, so rent. So do we have a date for that? I'm going to, well, they're doing, the, the first one is, they're eight or nine weeks out on the first the first part of that second quad. If you mm -hmm. want. So you have the first four buildings, second mm -hmm. four buildings that attach to like the clock tower there. Yep. So the ones with the arch, they're eight to nine weeks out on ordering those frames. They have to because the little snapper heads are out there burning the frames. Right. And they they stuff. Burn the frames. The next one are just square frames. So mm -hmm. uh, those windows will be out the same time as they're doing the greenhouse and the red house. So those will be in the next by next Wednesday. Right. So uh, uh, occupancy, we're looking at what June, maybe in June. Yeah, no, first week of June, because uh, the whole idea of putting Korean out there or and code enforcement is because of like put two deaths. It's going to be visibility. They're going to be there. They're going right. to see mm -hmm. things. Right. And if someone comes out, we have a lot of visitors we out there. A lot we just of miss. Mm -hmm. show up. And so if they're out there and they can do office hours, and right. then they can show up and oh yeah, here's what we got in the district. Yeah. And kind of like our you know on-site real estate people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our right. Wednesday wind down, which is. Closing up our the taco, the, the top, the taco the food funding yeah. is going to be at the district. I honestly don't know. <laughs> no, we do. We, I know mm -hmm. that last week we do it on the Wednesday as the wind down. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't remember. But I think the district, in some ways, makes more sense. Mm -hmm. so. it, it's the, the two events that we we'll hold is um, you know the back to back July fourth and the mm -hmm. night market. And the night market. Um, you know that'll be decent. All I'm saying is on the, you know, getting things open. Mm -hmm. I, I'd love to tell you this is just going to be wonderfully smooth and it's all going to go great. Um, I just don't see that. What what I see is, you know, we're just going to make it happen. And it's going to be yeah. rocky, but we will open the damn doors. Mm -hmm. Because I'm thinking the Wednesday wind down, um, we had a great band last year. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe it was fatigue, mm. you know. Mm. But where we we created something special, mm -hmm. we we tacked it on to the food truck fun right. days. But let's just do one thing. Let's just do it. 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 Let's just think Thanksgiving, right? There's gonna be some movement that'll get doors open. Mm -hmm. And we'll say July, but that, don't don't focus on that so much. Right. Sit there and go, by the time we get into Thanksgiving, which is really that retail mm -hmm. holiday, and you mm -hmm. put some trees out yep. there and you make it look pretty yep. decent, that's when you really wanna be ready, because that's mm -hmm. the best time for people to be out, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, you're thinking fall, but if you mm -hmm. think fall today, these guys won't open until spring next year. Mm -hmm. So you gotta say, let's get there now, Whatever it takes, let's get it done. Um, they'll stabilize by by by, by basically Christmas right. is what you're saying. Right. But, but do not tell them that. You tell them that, and right. yeah. everybody moves the ball in their head yeah, to yeah, to that time time. period. You can't yeah. you can't do that. All right. So the hotel site and the amphitheater. So the large grassy area to the right of the or left, if you're looking at it this way, of the yellow house. Looking at that as a potential hotel site. So our geotech fo and and then the amphitheater. And I'm gonna talk about these together. So our geotech folk came out week before last. Um, I have a proposal paper because I need your signature on um, to do some drilling at least on the hotel side to tell us what exactly we can build on that side, as well as the one acre parcel that we own on South Lake Circle. Um, as also a potential, and and when we talk about boutique, uh, talk about hotel, truly a boutique hotel, like hundred rooms or less. Wiley, Hotel Claremont. 
So why are they doing that one? You know, you know really a <laughs> So we're looking at a true boutique hotel. Yeah. One of the brands that we are looking at is Moxie, which is a yeah. Marriott property. Um, I have sometime on my calendar a sit down with the general. Do you all know Erica Qualls? Erica is the GM for Marriott Marquis, has been a bajillion years, um, and reached out to her because I was like, you better than anybody that can help me walk through this and get me to who we need to get to. So having continued conversations as we wait on our survey stuff to come back. The amphitheater is going to be a little bit more challenging because it's wet. They can't get, you know, anything down in there because there's water there up right by the highway. And, well, and as we stood out there, I mean, there's literally water up to mid-calf. Some of it we know is the beavers, but Baker's assured that, you know, you've got a plan to make the beavers go away, right? I've got trappers out there. Okay, whatever. Speaking. Need the beavers to go. So I'm a lot like, of the issues... Oh, wait, 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 wait. There, there are a couple of issues with the water out there. One, the beavers have dammed it up. So the beavers are going to go away soon. There's a lot of overgrowth that needs to be cleaned out to make water flow the way it's supposed to flow. And then the biggest issue is that one, it's a bowl, so as it mm -hmm. rains, water sits there. And then the two giant drains that come straight off of I-75, that all the water on 75 go down. So there is a initial concept plan. There are a couple of different options or, or ideas, I should say of how we build an amphitheater to mitigate the water issue. But for right now, can't do geotech until it dries out. But thankfully, we are going into our drought season. We know it's going to be surface of the sun hot very, very soon. It will be Sahara Desert rock hard brick mm -hmm. shortly down there so they can get out and the do the drilling to tell me what we can build. So just the beavers gonna be gone. then the beavers will be gone. So hopefully we can get that done soon. Uh, Strata, um, well, let me talk about Clayton State first. Clayton State, uh, we do have a concept plan from Jefferson Architect that's working with Clayton State in partnership with that piece right there at the entrance. Um, I actually had a meeting with Chase Thursday, Thursday afternoon. So we kind of talked through this and kind of where they are in this. So moving, moving slowly, um, but at least moving. Um, Strata is the, the triangle piece that, you know, is now vacant and cleared. We have gotten geotech done on both of these. We've got reports back. Um, and again, like I said, I think that this property in particular, and maybe even the LCI parking deck, are those that we should look at doing an elevated post on since we have some activity so here, but not here. Yeah, the Strata property, uh, property is ready to build out. Mm -hmm. Any interest um, here, here's where you have that is, is any property that you're dealing with, residential or commercial, when you're doing land, right? The first thing you gotta do is know, know a little bit about your property, mm -hmm. right? Just because somebody scraped some other building mm -hmm. up, it doesn't mean anything to us. What we've got to look at is geotechnical tells us soil compaction, right. like mm -hmm. just over on Meadowbrook. Mm -hmm. If they don't dig down at least six feet, right. the bottom line is the, your house that you build will not stay up. Correct. So, so that a soil compaction study basically says, what do we have? And it doesn't matter what you need, it just simply says it's what you have out there right now. Um, and if you're gonna build taller buildings, you know, is there any structure under there? Do we have, you know, uh, granite? Do we have, you know, stabilized soils and things like that? That's a must. Somebody has to know that to build. Your survey simply tells you the properties that you own, mm -hmm. right? So that makes all the sense. Those are your two given. Topo matters for the most part. Some of these properties are flat, not so much. Other properties, you know, bigger, bigger pieces, you know, if, if let's say we did the the ten or the seven acres over there by Huey or Haney, mm -hmm. you know, on that one we know there might even be some uh, ephemeral uh, features in there, um, you know, storm drains, things along those lines. Not to be that they can't be moved, but if I had, you know, you have to have the definition: is it an ephemeral stream? Is it a intermittent stream? Is it a, a perennial stream? Each one of those would require a different permit. For an example, the properties we're talking about at this point don't have that. We know that we physically can see it, but you still need the others. Then you have a, a rough sketch. And that's where we're at. We have the rough sketch, but you know what is the soil underneath it? Then you go into your design. It doesn't have to be a complete design, it has to be a stable design. Mm -hmm. Because from there you can back into what your cost estimate is to build. Your cost estimate to build on strata, let's say we have a theoretical 20,000 square feet. We probably already have four to five different players who have an interest in actually purchasing pieces of it. Mm -hmm. One is a, a dentist, 
One is an insurance company who wants a little place right next door for her son to be able to run a, a bubble tea place. An interest doesn't necessarily mean that you will. Before you even think about starting construction though, you basically, this will be different. This is where you're going over there saying, okay, um, you're gonna put up, let's say the cost to build is $3 million, $5 million, whatever it is. Your portion might be $2 million. You can build your own as you kind of go through it. Does that make sense? So that's, that's you, that. no matter where you're at, that is where you will always be. So there's land development that takes place, residential or commercial. You have to know about your property. You don't necessarily have to build it. We're, we're not building the houses on Meadowbrook, but we know the dirt. We know how much property we got to bring in. We know that we will make 300 grand, and we know that he'll pay us $30,000 a lot. We're not going to turn the first piece of dirt. We're not even going to knock the buildings down. But we know what the costs are. Does that make sense? Ask, um, that building, <coughs> is that the original building on that site? Which one? That Strata was torn down. Uh, no, the, the original buildings were Dutch Young's, so those were those old uh, garages. And right. Yeah. So, so there was no nothing before that. No. Nothing underground or nothing no. on the. See on side. your. Um, see what you're doing is environmental, and usually what right. they do. Any person in this building, all of us, could go do a, for, a phase one environmental. And what is a phase one environmental? We physically walk out, and do you see anything odd? Mm -hmm. <gasps> Oil coming out of the ground. Mm -hmm. That's odd. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, dark spots, things that don't look right. right. And that's, that's all that report's going to tell you. That report is going to say, I did not see anything okay. out of the norm. Right? If you did see something out of the norm, then you document that. And somebody comes in and does a second phase, a phase two environment. And that is where they probably go in and actually do some soil samples and different things along those lines. When they built um, Atlantic Station, that was Jacoby who built that. The reason that they said you could never build it was because of the ground contamination that was created in there from the steel mill. Mm -hmm. So Jacoby basically came up with an idea that nobody else thought of. Everybody else figured out how we're going to do the remediation. How much dirt do we have to take out? How far down to the water table do we have to go? And the answer was it was obscene. The price was just too great. So he came in and said, what if I just pour concrete over the entire damn thing? Mm -hmm. And seal it. And, and seal, seal it. it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, that's fine because you're not disturbing it. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's over there going, I built a parking deck underneath mm -hmm. this thing, and I basically concreted the whole deal. Yep. Oh, it's still forever. Mm -hmm. Technically, you didn't solve the problem, right. but you did. So. Right. Let's say there was something over there. The remediation you're, took you're place, You're putting roads on part of it, right. and you're putting concrete right. on the rest of it. You're, you're not building you know, somebody's you know, personal well or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So relatively easy project. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody was concerned, you know, then they would run their own second phase two environment. I was actually in school when they were building um, Atlantic Station. So mm -hmm. we went over there and visited mm -hmm. that site. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it was. And then, you know, of course, we all know the belt line was designed by somebody that went to Georgia Tech. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. So there, there's fun things. But mm -hmm. but once you've done those one time, mm -hmm. before you, you know, whether it's our property or somebody else's property, now you know what to ask for. Mm -hmm. So when they talked about the Haney property, first thing you asked them was, give me the geotechnical. And you're like, why? Because Miss Vandiver's daddy farmed that property. Mm. And you go, what does that mean? Well, that means that soil's not compact. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know why the, um, mm -hmm. the you know, right over here beside the, 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 the funeral home, you know, the one that's over here, mm -hmm. right on Lee Street, mm -hmm. why does it sit down 15 feet? When Buck Shirley sold that property, it was flat. That's true. They had to dig down 15 feet because it, it was Buck Shirley's daddy's farm, uh, and they had to go down that far to, to get their soil to compaction. Yeah, so yeah. it sits low, not oh, because yeah. he wanted to. Right. When he bought the ground, it was the same elevation as our road. We built the road, and the road didn't require the same compaction. He bought the property next door, Mr. Lee bought the property next door, paid Buck for it, didn't do the geotechnical, mm -hmm. and then figured out, dang it. I got to right. dig this thing way down here, and then he had to put that storm retention wall up there that cost him a fortune. All right, quickly, uh, the <laughs> LCI parking deck. So it was uh, otherwise pond, it was still a be pond there. Was a pond? It, who was it? No. I, I know they said there's water issues over there. That no, would no, be no, no, no. I mean, she's an engineer. Yeah, the hoop. 
who did the parking deck? The pond. Okay, pond, that's pond, what I thought. Pond yeah. Yeah. So I have a call in with them next week to talk about this. And, and, and let's understand what that is. Mm -hmm. Is the original designs out here had five stories of parking deck. Mm -hmm. right. When we went to put that in, it turns out there absolutely is no bedrock right. there. This bedrock throughout this whole city, there's mm -hmm. just nothing there. Mm -hmm. That by itself doesn't mean anything except the weight of five floors of parking deck basically said we couldn't do it. Right. So they ultimately built three floors on slip pylons, mm -hmm. which took our budget in. So our budget said X, because we had some state funding in there too, um, and, and to hold up what you had, you got three decks. Mm -hmm. Now, we hear that you, know, you may never get rail, you may never get X, Y, and Z, but either way, you're never gonna build five floors on it. But it was, it was designed where you could, right? In other words, the original design, all we just simply said was take the top two floors off, mm -hmm. which is why that ramp goes up there. So then you go out there and you say, why can't I build an office complex right. on top of it? There's one floor. The, the weight to that yeah. is significantly less than cars all over the place. And now suddenly you have a lot that's basically a half acre give or play with 300 parking spaces sitting right below it. Why not put it in play if you could do it? So I understand your logic, Rochelle, with putting Strata and the LCI. I don't know what to pay for the elevated okay. higher ranking post. Um, the tea room, so unfortunately our architect had to see the not nice version of me yesterday because we literally have been waiting for the final plans for a month, month and a half now, still. Every conversation, oh, I got you know, one more two things to do, and then you'll have it by the end of the week. Still don't have it, so I may have curbed that on him yesterday. Um, so we're still waiting on this so that we can move forward. We can't move anywhere without the final plans. The dark space, we have an RFQ for design service. Uh, June 3rd is the deadline. Uh, we've gotten lots of calls and lots of interested parties. I also have a, another cherry-picked list of some architecture firms that I think could do a really great job and might be better than some of the people that are looking to bid on it. Um, but that's where we are, I think, with the dark space. We need plans so that we can move forward. Reynolds Road, um, also he should be close to the end of his 30 days for first set of design plans for Reynolds Road. This is the architect. Two weeks. Another two weeks. Uh, for Reynolds Road, if you haven't been out there, go take a drive by because the the center of that whole archway it cover so, thing I mean, is, it just so much is gone. Carlos Os yeah. same, same guy who Pablo. built the southern building in the district that does the three dimensional yeah. architecture. Mm -hmm. he, he's he's going to like you guys a lot more later because he's a very interactive kind of guy. Mm -hmm. But right now he's taking the three dimensional laser, so you yeah. know what the physical dimensions of the building are. Mm -hmm. Then he's going to sit down with y'all and say what. What do you want it to look like? He's throwing together some rendering stands. You'll, you'll like it. It's, it'll, yeah. it'll, it'll, it'll be impressive. Have you been over there, man? He was in here one day. Just drive by. Yeah, just drive by. I just mean, it, it was kind of, I don't know, whoa. It yeah, looks just very by. different. <laughs> just taking out that center. I mean, that's just, that's just going to be a, another yeah. little hub of mm -hmm. community. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. um, so Meadowbrook, we know that we are moving forward with a quick claim deed and um, to the DDA. To the media. Media. Hmm? Do what? No, Tuesday. I was just telling them on Tuesday. 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 Yes, yeah. Tuesday. And then we'll have a special call DDA meeting probably the first week of June, right after Memorial Day, so we, we can have, resolve that. We have Harbin, Harbin Lake. I mean, was that Lake Harbin call or something else? Once, once it's the corner of Meadowbrook and the Carbon. Where is the, um, I thought I saw something. we got three pieces of parcels that you'll be discussing. Oh, she's talking about the, 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 the agenda. It's in the executive session, that one is. What is it? That's uh, what she's talking about. It's in the executive session. A quick, quick deed. Uh, quick uh, yeah, quick deed. Yeah, that's There's not your agenda package. for those two parcels yeah. right. Meadowbrook. And then you've got one that's over on, um, oh my gosh, it's in the... Uh, it's mentioned the Waterson. With some boundaries of Waterson. Gotcha. Um, um, 6233 is Jonesboro Road. That's our warehouse out there. We own it. It's on this list. There are no current plans for it, though there was some initial concept plan years ago about some kind of restaurant -y something. Food hall. Food hall. There you go. Um, Adam, Adamson, Adamson Parkway. Um, go drive by there as well. 
um, have started to clear it out. We discovered flagpoles um, and holly bushes that turned into holly trees that were yay high and cut them down, clear cut some stuff, started to clear out some of the gunk, so we feel flagpoles. Uh, the Mara Tourist Center, we do have an RFP for this one for construction. Um, we have plans, we just need contractors to do the work. Um, and again, the deadline for that is June 3rd as well. We have two that are kind of at the top of our list anyway that we have met with, toured the property, kind of done the deep dive with that are also bidding on it. So hopefully right after Memorial Day, we'll be in a position that we can, you know, ink it and move forward. Um, and then the other two, Skylar Drive, again, there's no real update here. And then South Lake Circle is that one acre parcel uh, right across from South Lake Mall. Um, geotech survey will be done on that at the same time, as soon as we sign the contract, same time that they do the geotech for the proposed hotel site. Um, and then budgeted items. I'm not going to read through this. Um, all of this stuff is in the budget narrative. Um, a couple of things that I want to point out are the part-time salaries. Um, as part of our ongoing partnership with Clayton State, uh, we offer now a series of paid internships. We are now paying our interns um, at $15 an hour, about 10 hours per week, um, and, and anticipating at least two interns each semester. Um, and the balance of the budget reflects part-time, temporary, and seasonal employees as needed. Um, this also reflects that here. Um, and then the overtime amount. The overtime reflects the event coordinator, and that would be Karina, additional time used to staff and manage approximately 15 to 20 events that we do per, throughout the year. Um, oh, what did I just do? Uh oh. Oh. Okay. That was weird. I don't know what happened. Well, there was another page, but just of this. So, Questions about anything in the budget narrative or in general? Part time salaries. So, are mm -hmm. you planning on hiring for admin? Um, I don't know. We would need to look at this amount to see if within this that we can squeeze in some part-time project management administrative support, mm -hmm. which would be ideal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, essentially we are a department of three um, and see all the stuff that we're doing and not having any kind of dedicated resource to kind of some of the check the box stuff and some of the administrative stuff that eats up a tremendous amount of time. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but yeah, we definitely will look at this and see once we back out what we anticipate for the interns, mm -hmm. what a price point would be for some of that is part time administrative support. to budget the current amount is for greater than now and not accurate. So how do we make the judgment on something that to compare with what we budgeted, what we actually use, what could be our prorated amount to be by the end of this year and have set an expectation of the next year. Mm -hmm. so, so Jeff, please keep that Oh, well, but most of the per rates are pretty accurate. They're yeah. on, they're on yeah. task with what we've got as far as there are a couple things. And I think even most of the, looking through the rest of these admin, the full time salaries, rather, I will look and check all those. Those are the only ones on the first two, I think, that may be off. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they just coded in the wrong place. But mm -hmm. most of these yeah, are really I, I don't know what happened with that. And Some certainly the amounts on the other parts, though, are pretty much dead mm -hmm. on us because they're pull, we're pulling current account budgets. Correct. The other thing too, and I did not talk about this, is the for in the MCTA budget, um, which basically largely funds all of our events um, and marketing and tourism piece. Um, going forward for this year, you will see in your budget a you know just a one figure for all of our events, but at least internally we now have or will have 
separate line items, you know, a budgeted amount per event. Because part of our challenge has been we don't currently don't have a way to pull, show me just what I spent for Christmas in the park, show me just, you know, per event, but we will have that going forward, which to your point allows us to project and forecast much better than we have before. So I see the thirty five health and technical services in your department. What is that? That is going to be specifically so professional services, technical services yeah. are going to be and like I said, we're trying to break these up where they're more accurately mm -hmm. seen. So technical services would be like for the geotech. Yeah. Because that's a technical service, that's a technical it's not a service. professional service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and we're just trying to see where Looking at where we've done and what we're looking to do, mm -hmm. where we need to put those mm -hmm. in the budget. Yeah, and we also need the our information to reflect in the, uh, the mm -hmm. narrative. Mm -hmm. I would say um, I see public walk, public walk narrative is good. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple uh, that need to be uh, spruced up. Fire is actually in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those yeah, those those in there, to, but I can. To look because they have um, the full narrative information. Uh, the more information being provided, the less questions sure. that we have. I to make some. No, I agree with that. There are a couple that are need to be spruced up a little yep. bit for y'all, but I think uh, this one actually reflects that in there, doesn't it? It does. I don't think I've put technical services on here, but I can definitely add a. Add that to it. So I will add the, that. The good news is your narrative here is a, is a pretty good read from your buddy. Yeah. It will help tremendously. Right reach conclusions as to at least what the budget is yep. um, and now start to allow the staff to, to flow. There were a couple of that were stripped down for some reason, but we'll get the feedback. Mm -hmm. So in we'll the, M the M MCTA uh, Taurus, mm -hmm. I saw the land improvement plot 106500. What is it? Which one land improvement? Uh, yes, uh, the uh, department 754. Okay, 75 is not a MCTA. It's a 7540 on the other. The first person is what, million, and then now it's reduced to 106. I don't know, because uh, I, don't, I don't have that on my budget, so that would be something pulled from. Yeah, it's in the CTA. Um, yeah, I don't have it. Let me, let me look on that and see what we put. We put something in there specifically. I don't know what we okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a pro it is, but I don't know. Because there is a separate product development budget. No, I don't have it. This is what I'll get this to you all by Monday. The latest on the ones that we're making correct. So I'll make a notes on all of them so we make sure we double check. I gotta get my kid. <laughs> also, um, <laughs> if you want to decide what it is for, is <laughs> how, like, the only thing really so far, well, there's two items, and I'll, I'll ask you at the end of the deal. So, kind of giving your input as to where you want to go with that. One would be that fire department placement schedule for those protective gear items, and then there's one I'm getting ready to do for. Since uh, we had an unfortunate departure from the police department, um, Snively had already scheduled out a trip with his family to Alaska in like 2020 and they couldn't go. So he's currently in Alaska on a cruise. So I'm going to just brief that you for him real quick. So. Yeah. If we have any technical issues, we're just, we're up to creep. So did he put the police department on? Yeah. No, it's on here. Okay. I just I didn't see the uh just from a percentage or the the presentation of it. Okay. I I don't have to be any talk. If you actually look at what you've done versus what's just very radical. Okay. 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 All right, so I probably won't have all the answers to your questions in here, but I'm I'm pretty confident I can get through most of them. If we don't, I'll write those down and make sure we do. Um, 
we put some stuff in here that you guys already know with the mission statement and how it's guided. And we, we kind of know, we've seen this before and heard this before. And it is to enhance quality of life for everyone in the city by providing professional law enforcement services uh, and building meaningful relationships. And we've talked about, to be quite candid, we've talked about some of the um, some of the deficiencies in the department, some of the things we'd like to see improvement on, a little bit of action on, which um, we've seen some of the turn on a little bit. Um, they have a vision over there where they want to be kind of create a legacy. They want to have a model police agency. They're doing that through state certification and several other things that they do. Um, the fiscal year 2022 recap that you put up here, which I think is important to run through real quick. Flock cameras, um, they've done some policy amendments to bring them up to speed and keep them in compliance with the state certification. The red speed cameras, um, the DEA task force positions, where they have two. I uh, just got an update from one of those. They're doing an operation now where they took um, basically two grams of methamphetamine, um, two pounds of marijuana, hashish pipes, all kinds of things they're working on right now. So hopefully we'll see some, um, oh, we'll see some, uh, some seizures coming out of those. They haven't done any of the, the search warrants yet. Community engagement unit, um, I think we'd all agree that that could use a little little work. Um, they're identifying, trying to identify and train grant writers. Um, did a little agency reorganization, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, their promotional assessments are done externally. Of course, they're going to buy vehicles and they, they have achieved a full staffing on the department, which I think is important. And of course, the Georgia law enforcement um, certification process where they have gotten a recertification on that again and again if we go back to the insurance companies that we should have through the through GERMA we get a discount because of that they get it we get a 10% discount that we're not realizing right now plus their safe driver when they're going to EBOC that's another 10% discount on our liability insurance for vehicles so there's some things we need to look at see if we can make a little bit more money on there, or at least save a little bit more money I'm not saying make um, so these are some things that uh, the community engagement unit has done. Um, you guys have seen the schedules and everything on the Proud events. So several different things going on. The women's self-defense class, apparently with CSU. Um, I'm totally familiar with some of these. So the um, one thing they're trying to do and they got turned down for is to get a heat grant. The heat grant is great if you can get it. Um, when I was there before we had it and had a position that was fully funded, they give you a vehicle and the only things you have to do is make sure that you're turning your statistics annually, that you guys are actually focusing your enforcement activities on where there are statistical problems and that uh, you attend those MAT meetings, which is a Metro Latin Traffic Enforcement Network. So we, you would literally go to, if Atlanta was hosting it, you would, that unit would go to Atlanta for that day, or that night, generally about four hours and spend the time with them doing concentrated enforcement activities. Reciprocally, eventually when you host it, you get like an additional 40 officers in your jurisdiction to do things like that. So that's pretty neat. Um, but they've focused on traffic safety, speeding, aggressive and reckless driving. Um, their citation and warnings have increased. That's the uh, speed camera over there. Has done a, a lot of different things, a lot of increase in citations. And then, um, there's been an increase in stolen vehicles from the flock cameras. Um, and they have gotten an attempted murder suspect, kidnapping victim, three armed robbers um, uh, over the past week, where they've kind of resituated how they're doing their shift. They were able to pick up two wanted people. I mean, they've done a lot of things. In one shift alone, they wrote just shy of 30 citations, recovered a stolen vehicle. Lots of things. You see when people are out there, the difference in what happens. Calls for service. Kind of giving you a breakdown of that where they've increased with citizen initiated. Um, you see an increase in most of them except for the crash reports. And I think that's important to note that on the officer initiated, if the citizens are contacting you, that's kind of a trust, kind of, I, I use that as a barometer of the trust the citizens have in you to call you. Um, officer initiated are always good because that means your police officer out there working and doing things. Still in vehicles recovered. Um, Increasing could increase probably a lot more, <laughs> but as we get more people out there, we can do some things. The, the arrest data on the comparisons from 18 to 22, not a lot of consistency. So, the, 
vehicles, stolen vehicles are those um, uh, the uh, tags by the cameras or I mean the. Well, we don't have specific information in that, but um, I know for one thing, looking at some of the data for one month, we had over, in three day period, we had 30 stolen vehicles rolling through the city. So, um, <laughs> there's some of them are probably yeah, flock generators. They will do what they're capable of doing. Next year, this is going to make this number look like. Yeah, I think you're going to see a big uptick. I just. It, maybe it won't double double, but it'd be pretty darn good. Uh, you could easily double this number if you uh, if you put your people out there to where they can get those flock alerts and do it. This should be honestly, this should be at least a monthly digit that you see up here. I mean, that's the technology we have. We're not utilizing it. Mm. Um, and same with the rest. I mean, when you when you start activating yourself off of those cameras, and those are, uh, I mean, this be oh, those are those are the easy calls to get. I don't have to get behind you and find probable cause to run your tag to do different things. It's a camera hidden off of your yeah, car, so all I have to do is find that car. Stole the car you're in. Um, so I mean, there's a pretty big deal. <laughs> and it really, in all, in all honesty, it's like I was telling David. I really think it's the allocation of the resources that you currently have. Fix that. Get them out there to where you have more than two people per shift, and you're going to see results that will just blow you away. And that's what we want. We don't want. We don't. We want to do what they said in their mission statement. We want to see where they're actually doing some good stuff. Um, officer initiated citations. And that's more of a citations generate revenue, yeah, but that's not why I don't think it's that's not the paramount reason for doing it. And I'd go back to a lot of old, a lot of law enforcement studies that have been done by the Department of Justice. Um, one in particular was a Peoria project. When your people are out there doing things, I don't care if you write citations, pull people over if they got a tag out or a light out and just tell them, hey, you have a, you have a light out, get it fixed, here's a warning, have a good day. But doing that, you're stopping the vehicle. You're having contact with them, seeing if they're under the influence of anything. Um, you're checking their insurance, you're checking their license. So we're doing a number of things with just a friendly encounter saying, hey, get that light fixed. And if it's all that is, that's great. But then you're also visibility, you're driving down crime. So these are just a metric of actually what the productivity is. And, and, and this is a proven factor that, you know, bad guys go where it's convenient. It is. Yeah. If it's convenient. Your, your place is as good as mine. When, when now suddenly your customer's having a hard time kind of coming to you because, you know, he's being harassed, if you will. Um, your customer, you know, these guys simply shift, right? They're gonna shift just outside your city. They'll locate in some apartment complex just off of Mount Zion somewhere. And you're, you, you don't have those issues. Mm -hmm. Now they're not stealing your cars. They're not petty theft. You've got these other things. It's, it's a proven scenario. And, and whether you like Victor Hill or not, he's a, he's a perfect example. You, know, you go out and you say, when, when I enforce it, now suddenly you're afraid to do drugs in my county. Well, it's also responsiveness. If you pick up the phone and call Victor and say, hey, they're dealing dope on my street, can you do something? He would send the whole posse over there and it'd be, they'd smash them down. So it, it's kind of that willingness to respond to. Um, there's a couple of slides in here. I told David I have issue with some of his numbers here. I don't know where he pulls this number from. I mean, you see a pretty dismal thing, 220, 212, 54, 8, and now we're up 734. That's I pulled similar statistics. I see like six that are noted. There's actually a tick on the citation. I don't know where he's getting this number from. I think we can do some more work and we need to be more accurate in that, but I'm not, uh, I'm not going to tell you I'm comfortable doing this number here. Just yeah. And the, the, the citation, when you say take, there's a Georgia law have a restriction of the percentage of the citation versus with the revenue of the police department. So we don't want to get step into that, so. If, if you make a good pullover, in other words, you get a flat camera because somebody stole the car, it, it doesn't matter what percentage. No, the, 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 the percentage on those is not tied to the LPRs, it's tied to the, uh, I think red light cameras is a proportionality of what they're looking at. It. These are just the, uh, these are the flock cameras, so it's reading a tag. So it's license plate reader cameras. Um, so that's not that doesn't fall to a proportionality scale, but the red lights do now. You're okay. correct in that. I've been like, I, I didn't say a lot during that presentation, but you'll never recover two hundred thousand. They'll never get their money's worth. Remember, they used to have three in the city. They pulled them out because it wasn't worth it to them. And you're gonna look. So it's not a revenue generator for the city. But remember, they had the little lady that was killed right at the intersection. I mean, there is a point where you want to say, you know, knock it off. I mean, 
take well, there's some, and the main thing of that is it doesn't cost us money, oh, and sure. it's a safety issue. So, fix, yeah. you know, if that if that if you're running the red light, just just simply be careful. I think we're going to make it. <laughs> Come on, I wouldn't want to be running too many red lights on on Mall Road anyway, especially when we know they got some crazy pedestrians on the other side, whether it's because of water or because of trying to walk across that street. You're just waiting for somebody to get run over. It's just a fact. Now this one. Absolutely accurate. That's the speed issue. That's on. Uh, that's in the school zones, which is excellent. I mean, either you learn your lesson or you don't. Those are peaks and valleys you see during you know spring break. They go down because we don't write citations during that during the summertime. But that's um, that's good because at least people hopefully this changes behaviors. Yeah, and um, understand what this is saying. Eleven thousand eight hundred people flew through the interchange of a school zone while school was open. And I don't want you to think that this is changing behavior the wrong way. In 520, they only had like two months of data, so it's not like people thought, oh, cool, I want to get but, it. But just yeah. how many people think yeah, it's okay to fly through the school zone? See it all the time. And remember, the school bus, the you know this, yeah. they don't pick up within a mile of your house, which means pretty much anybody that's right next to that elementary school, that's going to be our resident, our right. citizen. They're, you know, little Johnny is walking across our right. street, and George is flying through there at 50 miles an hour. Uh, this is a breakdown of stacked... Um, Stack bars here for him on the um, calls for service. We see those going up. You see the officer initiated getting a little bit wider van there. Um, incident reports and then you know citations and arrests. The top part is the automated enforcement, which really doesn't. That's not officer generated, but he can put that up there for y'all to see. Um, projected versus is expected fines and fees. Um, they had $1.6 million budget, and this is an important part of where we come up with our budget, and it's, you know, it's looking at how their activity should be, et cetera. It's not necessarily that you need them to, uh, or want them necessarily to hit that quota or anything of that nature, but it's important for budgeting purposes, and it's just like sales tax or anything else. It's part of our revenue. Uh, they were budgeted at 1.6. Um, yeah, this, this, this slide is so screwed. <laughs> well, the it reason is, we leave it in there is because it's, 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 it's once you explain guy. it, it's the difference between police math and real math. That's why you're leaving it in there. It's, don't pay attention to the number. No. That's but, not the story. And here's what you'd look at. If you're really doing an analysis on this thing, you would take out, number one, that needs to go away because that's not fines and fees. Those are coming in from Camry issue. That's a separate line item. Right, and we've never had those before, so yeah. first year. And on the, on the officer issue, the way that they're doing this, just to clarify how they were doing it, they're taking, well, that's, I think, did you ask that question in here? Would I think. Yeah, when he, he asked Jesse how they figured that up, oh, yeah. so they can write citations. Oh, yeah. This is the funny thing. And you can take a number by that and yeah. estimate how many you're going to have. But those citations they've written may not show up in court until after this fiscal year. So at any rate, when you look at this in the 2.7, I'll tell you what the numbers I know, which is that currently, and as, as I said, we're, we're having a transitionary phase with the budget software and how things were done. They would take a month's worth of citations and probation and speed cameras, and they would put them into a liability fund. And then you'd have to go into the liability fund and then distribute those into the correct fund to where they needed to be. That hasn't been done manually since the end of February. So we're currently at seven hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars, showing in fines and probation. Where he's saying that seven point or two point seven million. But if you take that and look at what the last one that they did, the highest number they do per month is about one hundred eleven thousand dollars in citations. So take that times the next four months, which would end our calendar year. That's generously saying that you have four hundred forty-four thousand more coming in on top of that seven hundred fifty-six. Willfully short of that, so you can't budget numbers off of that number. Um, and one of the things we're doing with that, the way that they're doing those uh, distributions is we're working with the software company to streamline that. So hopefully this week we'll get that streamlined where they disperse the way that they should go into probation and the red light camera and into find the citation without that having to be manually done. Because I think they were literally guessing some of them, but we want numbers. Um, so um, I, I think that's important to look at. It's, just, and the reality of it is because of literally when he came in, he thinks this is true truth. But it's one of those things where you're going, that's not accurate. And that's not a thing to put your metrics on. So, of course, they think they're doing fine over there, which in reality we're looking going, just not fine. You didn't meet your budget even expectations. Question. Mm -hmm. So was this initiated by uh, uh, Lopez the, or David, David? Which one? This slide? 
No, no, I mean, the, did he start it? Start preparing the budget before? It? David did start preparing his budget, yeah. Okay, so he's. Well, I think David was going to do it even if Lopez was still here. Is that what yeah. you're asking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, he's the one who's kind of put together, but they worked, I mean, they were working but, in tandem before said, uh, Chief I, left. I think the ideas came from the other chief. Okay. Yeah, and, and so some of this conversation about how the revenue was presented, presented, written versus collected, that controversy was started prior to. Oh, it definitely was. We had that conversation. Yeah. I had that conversation with, with both, with the chief, and then with both him and David, and consistently because you have to drive this home to them where they understand you're not don't 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 put those numbers up there because they're nowhere accurate and we I don't think that they want to be deceptive on it but in their minds they think because they pull a report from courts to show how many citations they've written but like as he said right. they could be bound over mm -hmm. dismissed mm -hmm. if they're stacked they may be combined they may be put on probation those are not like she said I'll use her phrase that's not money in the bank right. so then that's what we have to go off of particularly for budgeting and looking at what we're doing in the future and when you're asking me for allocations for the future for your butt for your department um, he wants to spend on 2.7 hours. Yeah, that's what they. That's kind of what you got to understand with the. That's like fired police. Like, give me more. Re give me more. Real, film. real, and, and yeah. What do they call it? Projected or whatever. Yes. Like yeah, they do well with monopoly money. Real <laughs> over on um, here's two things, and this is these are some things that, that one of them in particular I need your input on for the budget. So we need to figure out about the fire department replacement schedule. We're going to do the five, seven, or nine. Um, and then this is one where we're looking at, and I'm all about this because David came up with this when Lopez left to say, hey, not to get myself out of a job, but I want to eliminate the deputy chief position because really don't need it. Now, he wants to redirect these funds, which is in his budget. That's about $103,000 and some change. He wants to redirect that, and then we'll just leave the benefits and all that out. He wants to redirect that because what I do as a place marker, just so you know in the budgets, you'll see a place marker. If you look at finance, you look at the city manager, you look at... Chief police, you leave those those salaries in there because eventually we're going to replace. Maybe not at that level. That's up to y'all. But just kind of give a good a benchmark for where you need to be. He wants to eliminate that deputy chief's position and redirect those funds from the former chief's position to make two additional patrol officers. Um, See, now, isn't that fundamentally interesting? You know, one guy comes in and wants to administer. The other person comes in and understands you might want to actually patrol your city. Hmm. Well, and then looking at his, I think he's got his org chart on here, which is much better. Um, and my my, you know, my directive to him is, look, we need more people on the street. Our crime's getting crazy. People's houses and businesses are getting broken into. Cars are broken into. We're, we're seeing a marked increase in crime and a... And you have an obligation on the budget to do what needs to be done. You, I, if people are in the city and you only have two people here and want to arrest somebody, that other person isn't going to go out and be aggressive and, and do anything other than patrol or write tickets or write uh, reports because they have no backup. Um, so he's making a power shift, if you will, to try that out. But really what I'd like to see is at least four people per shift. And it's doable, but so wait, this is totally up to you guys to see if you... Now, we've heard a lot from the police department. Um, I think you guys have heard a lot of promises and given them a lot of stuff, from my understanding, and we haven't seen a lot of delivery as far as um, some of the things you guys were looking for. So that's in there, that's in the budget. If you're good with it, we can leave it and see. I don't know. They would allocate two more people for them. As long as they go to Uniform Patrol, which is what my statement was, they, they are, we're not the more office people, right? Uniform Patrol. So thoughts on that? You gotta put people on the run. There, there's just no way around it. Um, if they'll do what they're supposed to do, at some point you'll see those revenue numbers come up correctly, but you also see your crime numbers drop correctly. And uh, if, you know, it, it basically succeeds itself. But you do it within a budget number that basically keeps it contained. And if the guy's doing the job at the top and he doesn't really need the second guy, because he was the second guy just a minute ago, he kind of knows what the top guy was doing. And my um, my inclination would be to support that. I mean, just to see if he doesn't, it's real simple. Say, guess what? As you lose officers, which we know attrition comes up, then we don't replace those two officers. But I think to try it out and make sure that they go where they're supposed to, give them that extra person, and then if that crime in, ensure that we've got our tickets where we need to be as far as revenue goes, which directly will impact the crime rate. I think that that would be advisable. 
So you'll see in there on that line item, that's a pretty hefty chunk of a line item because of the raises and because of maintaining this position. So pretty much if uh, that position is eliminated, um, well, as you're doing the budget, we, let's, let's make sure we, we understand what we're saying. All right, so in a budget, you give a, a person uh, a certain dollar back. Mm -hmm. okay. So let's just say that we didn't do this in this piece of paper that we're talking about, and, and you left it just the way it is. He would still be able to go out and hire the two officers. Right? I mean, that's just true. And he'd be, as long as he stayed within that budget range, he would just simply keep that one open. But eventually, you'd reach a conclusion that says, I, I'm pretty sure we had a deputy chief's position. And now he's already done the other part. And then he's going to come back and you're going to fill the deputy's chief position. And then he's going to be able to budget in this script. Um, this is simply telling you what, what they so I, And so, I'll yeah. show you, you guys never actually approved that deputy chief position. So he's bargaining with something <laughs> that he really doesn't have. The other but, chief didn't bring him across, right? Okay, without, I, without, I administrative staff, yeah, my job. Without that the, didn't fail to pass my notice when we're talking about money because I'm like, we know it was never Without done the before. deputy chief's position, uh, who would be the next person? Well, in there's the second the part. Is, the as you look down out, here, yeah. my inclination was to eliminate the two majors' positions as they retire. Uh -huh. um, because really, you don't want to be top heavy. But when you look at his org chart, because my fear is now you're going to have two majors, and you're going to put in four captains, and you got four lieutenants, and four sar or six sergeants, and then who's working the road? Who would the go to guy be? Chief it's it's Tatro. Well, he's, he's out of town. He's the captain on duty. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, well, if he's in the office. Please. Well, no, they put he will designate one of those majors to be as, his second, and as he's gone, okay. I think Keo's out a couple days this week, right. so he put Tatro. Because they call him one as uniform uh, patrol, mm -hmm. and then there's well, Keo is, is, so is, is retiring. Right, Keo's leaving in August. So he wants to replace Keo and keep the major's position. Okay. So that's the his, reason we did the just one. We, we, we did the majors oh, so that they could, not retiring could make Geo and all those other things happen. So we had to move okay. the thing but around. Well, why do we need? Do we really need two now, majors? Now's your opportunity to take well, it back. that was my question because the way his structure, and when we get to his org chart, you'll see he's got instead of captains, he has two majors. Now the, the structure typically would go: you would have officers, um, master patrol officers, sergeants lieutenants, captains, and then the chief. The way they've got the structure over there now is you have a chief, and then you had the deputy chief, which is gone. But underneath them, instead of four captains, or which, that, hypothetically, you'd put a captain over each division. So you'd have a CID captain, a uniform patrol captain, a special services captain. So instead of those, you have two majors. And as long as he keeps that org chart, I don't care, I don't care how you run your art department, but I mean, lean is the way to go. Captain, major, they're doing the same job. I mean, well, it's a time important point. there is, remember, they're a paramilitary organization. You know, the captain's usually the person over the top of your ship. When mm -hmm. you start building all these extra ranks up there, you know, then those people, you know, it's a paramilitary organization. For the most part, the rank and file guy, what, what he really wants to say is, okay, I'm, I'm a captain. The reason I want to be a major is I make more money. Make more money but, is but a, it's a rank to take. Then pay more money. But, but uh, my, and my question and concern is that, you know, to create those, uh, what is it, two or two positions? Two, yeah, on the street is important. Absolutely, it is. <laughs> so, you know, we need to make with, sure. With the same like dollar value you, you have on the table. And all of that. But I can tell you my we consideration too. District and the Reynolds property, we're going to need. Right. We are, and I, putting two officers on the road is a win 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 because right. they're not going to be sitting in the office like the, to be honest, sitting in the office like the majors right. do or the, right. or the lieutenants. And, 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 for, and just FYI, uh, we're doing the donuts again over at Reynolds. Oh. And the parking lot. Did you see me doing it? Do we have a camera over there? I thought we did. Do we not have a camera over there? There's some type there. of, yeah, yeah but we need to get some over there. We've talked about that. What's happening over at the, at the district? Let's do it over at Reynolds, because we know there's only so many ways in and out. I gotta get your tag number. No, right. There's yeah. just But no I mean, way. all we I'm really have is the donut people. people. We don't have any, they're not doing much of anything else right. yet. Right. So, yeah, we can get those over there. We don't want them Messing up the parking lot until. Well, what y'all catching me over there doing my donuts either? Yeah. Oh. Uh, we need to know who. who, who, who. To get to the point where I can't do anything illegal you in this call city. Them, what kind of little heads or something? No, you call them. No, no. Snapper heads. Snapper heads. <laughs> but, but, but as things start to take place over there, we start to make some changes. Um, we're going to need the camera system anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. I mean, you know, because and I think the problem is the Wi Fi. Maybe. With it. But I'll, I'll check the phone. We'll see. Because yeah. those green cameras are next to nothing to do. Okay. Um, so on this, and just just as a, as long as the, and the other the other part of this, the other caveat for him, and we had this discussion was, 
overtime has got to stay within the parameters because if you look at the overtime, um, they've done pretty good this this year on overtime, as opposed to another department that that's uh, right next door over here who put in sixteen thousand five hundred dollars of overtime in one month um, while we're running four people short. So I mean, literally, and those are that's big numbers. I mean, the overtime is where you can really run your department. You you can mark how somebody's running a department efficiently or not. It's the overtime. And when they're doing all the things they're doing in the district and everything else, PD's doing those as well, but their overtime's not outrageous. So Who are the three civilians? I know the one girl there. Is a, who is it? I think that's a typo. Yeah. There's only two. Oh, yeah. These, here's the confusing part. When when Rochelle's talking about code enforcement, code enforcement's not under her. Code enforcement houses over here oh. works with them because of Marty. They're actually showing under the police department. So both Thrasher and that's a third civilian because you have two female civilians up there for records, and then you've got uh, Victor. Victor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that is that's correct. Okay. So he's actually paying for the code enforcement folks. Okay. So if you all are good with that, we can leave that number in that. I, I think you leave the number, but you start to make yeah. At any time, and, and you've heard this before, you even heard it from SU, and I love SU to death, but, but we talked two months ago about pulling the trigger on hiring her replacement. There was nobody who disagreed with that, right? It has to be done. And all of a sudden, it's, it's like, planning well, I can't do it until July. Why? And, and this is where she's not going to do it until July either. Get crossways, <laughs> too, is like, well, I'm not going to hire somebody until the position's over. You know, on average, you lose four to five people per year. On average, right? Th these guys sandbag all the time, one or two people so, just to keep their numbers up. Are we yes. able yes. to eliminate two people, one major? Because the budget has to be able to do that. Then we haven't finished up on that. Like, if you found so we need to finish that wrap up on that because he does. He resigned. You're contracting yourself. And then the same thing. They go out there and say, well, you're going to get a salary of this. We can look at that. I can't hire for somebody. Who said? Who said thirty? We've talked about that several times in the executive session here. That said, that is not the kind. Of Are you looking at when the mystical five thousand dollars savings come in? Yeah. And, and and so I look at those as crutches. Crutches basically okay. say, I failed to act. I failed to plan. Right. Now, and then if we leave it in, the the just left. We can always you know, say, know, say, hey, we're the freezing these two positions. Else. If they abuse them or they don't do something. Yeah. Cause it's like I told him too. Uh, just like the fire department, we're running yeah, those ads. I told PG, and they, if you look on there, I think you're going to see their ads bouncing out too. But we're going to have attrition. You're going to lose people. So constantly run your ads, constantly hire, interview, and hire good people if you can. Because you know next month somebody's going to leave. No, I mean I, 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 I think it was the first piece. We need more patrol. We're always going to need more patrol. Mm -hmm. um, remember, you have twenty some people. It's how you allocate those. Folks. Well, let's look at how they're allocating them. Because yeah. here's your uh, here's your chart. And um, Councilman Tran was asking about. That. So the majors, if you see instead where you would typically, I mean, these two parts aren't going to change except what you call them. You may call them yeah. majors now. You may and call them captains tomorrow, but they're going to be there. That's where my mindset was like, we are. We need a, a sustainable paramilitary structure uh, but we're at that place now if I were there it would be captains but I don't care what that they want to call them majors to pay them a little more now I know this and this is a back history for everybody in here there were promises made by the previous chief to Beard that he's going to be the next major so that, and I know this because the shocker was when we were talking about the pay raises, and I'm like, we're going to eliminate those two majors positions because they graduate out with the people who leave. Yeah. So when Keo retires, there's only one major left. And then, but you know, again, it's it's apples and oranges. You're paying a little bit more for a major, not substantially amount, not a big substantial amount, but it's them to say, well, I'm a major. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, good for you, but you're doing a job with the captain. I don't. So, again, that's kind of up to you guys. There's that position has got to stay there. You can call them battalion chief if you want to, but there's no battalion to leave. Right. You know, it's like everybody has a title, and you're like, well, which one of these is actually doing the work? Mm -hmm. So, should we, so what do you guys think? Should we have one major or two? I think the danger of putting one major, keeping one, is that you've got now kind of like an assistant chief. You're, you're either majors Because you're, you're going to have, then you have a major and you have a captain. I mean, it's going to be, because these two, you need these two titular heads right here for these 
units. Yeah, because you can one's is, uniform and one is, is... It's organized in a way where the, the, the nature and the function of what they're doing is, is the function is the same. Different. Yeah, just well, the, the title. Of, yeah, the title, but who they're leading, they're objectively doing. Because right now you've got Kia. I was just thinking of a pointer. You've got Kia right here over uniform patrol. So I know what his plan is because of one of the, the day shift lieutenant is Beard. That was their plan was to elevate Beard to that position because he, he and he has shown a lot of potential of doing an activity and, and intelligence about leading the shift. So he wants to put him in to replace Kia. The, the so, real issue on the street is related to um, how to run 12 hour shifts versus something else. There's, there's some other factors that are in play as to why you don't have to manpower what you need. That's true. <laughs> And, and again, that's the part that's always misleading. Is, is you feel like you're you're fighting the hill both ways. You know, the theory behind you is the chief. The chief is supposed to be you, right? I'm I'm the city. I'm the one who's trying to allocate the resources to get us the best proposals to get the other things, not trying to make it so Bob makes the most amount of money, so that he makes the most amount of overtime, so that I can sit there and tell you I need ten more people to do job five. And you're like, you, you don't have the resources. I could look at those same people, which we have in this room many times, and say, you know, here's how this city makes money. Here's how you fit into that, and when you do your job better, you make this city safer, you make this city safer, people spend money here. That's just a fact. It doesn't happen in a blink. So you have to help us go along for that ride. And each one of your chiefs is the most critical person in that department to help you reach that objective. Not let me you know screw some other department out of all of their money so that it doesn't happen. You, well, you can screw public works if you want to, and the place looks like crap. Your crime value goes up, and nobody locates it. You did not accomplish the objective. And part of what you could do, I mean, just thinking forward, thinking here is as you look at this. Now we'd have three people per shift: that's four with the the sergeant, um, ostensibly five with your lieutenants, but. If you're looking over here too, you, you could mobilize two of these guys to attach to the DEA with the idea that they're going to bring in confiscated assets. Well, I've been, since I've been here, I ain't seen so many confiscated assets roll through. Um, but I have, you know, I would think that you could mobilize those guys who are in detectives, to just your average detectives, because you don't have that big of a flow through on detective investigated cases, basically. You know, you can get those guys out there and working, doing some stuff focused on some crime areas based off statistical analysis. I mean, if we're having break-ins at this time of night in this location, there's two guys to throw at it. Um, also, with your support services, you know, we have uh, Sergeant Rodriguez, but it just doesn't mean that you have to sit there and put the same thing uh, every day, just to get out there and you can do some things with those other detectives. So you have the fluidity of having, with those two lieutenants, you have an additional, you know, five people that you can throw at an issue. Yeah. So I guess an unintended, um consequences if we're eliminating deputy chief and we have um, Snively as interim, we have a chief search mm -hmm. um, based on the, the outcome, you know, we don't want to, I guess, you know, would it be a situation What do we do with Snively? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess maybe that's thinking too far down the road, but again, well, that's a, it's a good question because um, that was what I said. You can yeah. get yourself out of a job there. <laughs> well, but let's face it, do or die. Most places don't have deputy chiefs on stuff. They don't. You know, and not our size, so no. We wanted to be you know, in this arena since you stopped people on the street when you were five. Here's your shot. Either do it or don't. No, I think that's a bridge we can cross at that time. You know, if, if it is something where someone else gets selected, then, you know, what, what do we do then? Then we, I guess that's something we have to determine, but. Right. so that's, that's, um, how, how do we, how do we create the space for, are, are we saying we need, we really do need two more uniform patrol while freezing the top layer? Oh, definitely. We, we have the space to do that now. <laughs> let's, let's. We have that, and, and another thing we're going to have to look at, I'm just being candid here, this is, um, <clears throat> aside from being a difficult budget to do because you're pulling stuff in and we're in the middle of a financial software transition and all the other wonderful things that are going on, it is with great trepidation I put this out there for you guys because I don't, still, I'm going to throw in a little slide here of my own, but I don't, you, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, we're looking at things, and we're giving these guys a big benefit when we're letting them take their cars home. That's a huge benefit that most people don't have. 
if you do, it's a 10 mile radius or a 20 mile radius. Mm -hmm. Some of these guys are driving 60 plus miles. Right. Um, when it gets to the brass tax come down, we can't get gas and we can't get replacement well, cars. The first thing to that's the first thing I'm going to, we're going to have to pull that back and say, you yeah. can't do that. Yeah. That's going to get some disgruntled employees, but it's the fact of how we have to operate. If I can't get cars, you can't get right. cars. So I got to have cars. You got to have marked cars. So it's just one of those things you look at that we have to be forward thinking and go, those are some things you're going to have to pull around. We're also doing resource allocation, but you got to see through all the layers all the way down at the bottom. You know, then you throw in ComStat on the top of it, mm -hmm. which basically is, you know, what are you doing? How are we training you? How are we adjusting to crime? How are we adjusting to our citizens based on other things? That's the full allocation. That, that's the irony of most of what we see. We, we see a piece of the button. You got to be able to zero all the way down to be able to say what do you what do you really allocate in your mind you're allocating to that citizen that your neighborhood is protected that you know we're we're out there doing real community policing you know not not where it's just a stamp that said I had to go into your subdivision this week or this year where we're actually out there going you know hey Mary how are you doing yeah that's the level you're looking for and you have to be able to provide it all the way from the very top dollars people to resources which it still comes down to time and even if the officer gets there the officer has to give a damn you know on a personal level to get you where you need to be so the two do either you know off the top of your head how many of the uh, staff in the police department actually live in the city or near I certainly do you do it'll fry your mind <laughs> okay None. Not one. Not one. Closest is probably Keo and Jonesboro. Mm -hmm. And if I, I mean, if you really want to well, know how many people, aside from y'all, that live in the city that work here, we did have, have one, one. There's three. Years ago, we used to require it. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> we had one in Northridge, but. Uh, well, out of all of your employees, 85 of them, you have three that live in the city. Maybe I don't know if they still do, but that was the last dress pulls I had off of PayPal. So, Marty. so we have. We're, we're, one. Well, actually, I think you do have one policeman and one fireman. Is that Marty correct? And, and Denise lives in the city. That's true, Denise. Denise. So then there's either a fireman or a policeman somewhere that was listening. I mean, it's insane. When I pulled the pay comp stats on there, I was like, like the other ones that are even like close. You know, you, you've been in uh, abandoned in all but name only. Good place to work. So, so we, we, we're looking at hiring two positions. Could we, uh, I could certainly put that, and I think that's a great idea. That's what we're actually, you know, when we're doing because with when we're hiring these two, it's great. She wants to know if we can put them here in March. We I wouldn't say only hire, but I would definitely make it a thrust to hire them from here because same thing with the fire department. Hire them local. Right. Why not? You're all but saying, I'm willing to hire somebody entry level, just not anybody associated with y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Living in the city. Crazy. I mean, you like should be doing that. Department. And you see the disparity over there at the, at the fire department, too. And I remember when we did that because of the little girl, little girl that passed away, right? She did. And so they, they wanted a, a Vietnamese speaking firefighter on every shift. I mean, that's. Don't to, did she died. Represent the person the, died. And what do you say to that? I mean, at some point, you can say, if, if your job is to protect and serve, if you cannot meet the requirements of that, you know, then somebody's like, well, they're not qualified. Um, do you have somebody who speaks a language that's qualified? No. Well, then make them. Make them from so, scratch. And you can say the same thing in Spanish. And so, you can say the same thing in so wrapping this up on the yeah. discussion with the two majors, or so, were you, did you have another? Well, I guess the in terms of leadership, whatever you call them, those two permanent positions need to be in play. Um, the need for two additional patrol, I mean, I, I'll support that, you know, all day. Eliminating the, I, again, I don't, without a crystal ball, I don't want to create an unintended consequence of having to force fit something knowing that we have a major search but it's on the there. It, it was never officially put into that spot. Yeah. We were paying for it. So really, we could just hibernate it, and we wouldn't say that we're eliminating whatever. We'll just put the two positions in there for uniform patrol. That way, it's in the ether. Mm -hmm. And if you guys want to reinstate it. And then, you know, once we make our way further through a process of discovery and determination, um, 
we can evaluate that the, those top layers of leadership, but if we still maintain the need for a uniform patrol, I mean, we need to support that. And if it was already tucked in there in a the corner, let's, you know. Yeah, well, just move by it. You guys would be the ones that have to, the, the city manager would be the one who have to approve them to actually be able to hire a deputy chief anyway. So if they can't fill it, then it's there, but it's not fillable. And I think that's probably the best course of action. On this one, it's your guys' choice. Really, if you take away one major spot, then we probably need to reassess that position, which would mean probably hurt somebody's feelings to drop them down, because I don't think the one person that would still be a major, who would be over the other person who would be a captain, would be the one that you'd want to be second in command and, you know, because that would be Tetra who could do the job, but he chooses not to and has chose not to for decades. So I think that you would either keep them both majors or you would reduce them both positions to captains. And then we'd have to readjust the pay grade. Mm. <laughs> I was, going, I was going down the road with one, good three. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm looking ahead here trying to figure out where Charlie the road blocks are. I had the answer of a major. And, you know, they're in line to talk. Every time the chief was out of town, Charlie became the default. And eventually, what ends up happening is that the stars align and they make a poor decision because you're the last person standing. And most of the time, it's based on the fact that you're a nice guy. The nice guy gets the job. And sucks. <laughs> That's just a fact. Yeah. And you go, okay, and how do you prove that? Well, it didn't last very long. So we don't have to make that decision right away. We can no, they're just, they're, they're just no, no, and if you guys want to yeah. change this out later, now at, in August, we're going to make a decision. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, but have that in your heads because if you want yeah. to rearrange this thing, I would suggest my suggestion would be having worked in this situation before, worked with Tatra before. Mm -hmm. Drop them both down to captains if you don't want to have two majors. I mean, it's still the same position, it's still the Let's same leave it function. As two the only reason I'd say that is yeah, I'm a pretty blunt guy. You know? um, we got bigger fish to fry. Um, if, if, if whoever they're picking, you know, it's unfortunate you're already theoretically not you, but somebody else is already telling somebody else you're my next guy when you haven't even opened the position to determine if you're the next guy. Because, and I like beer. But that basically that means you know you're only competing against the warm bodies you have in front of you. Now they're doing outside assessments. Oh yeah, I believe that. Um, you know, but sometimes the die is cast, and you have to say, is that you know, is it the functionality of that map matter to us? No. What does matter to us is the fact that we've only got a couple officers out there on that street on a regular basis. That is your your key. I think that's the easiest fix, part. Yeah. We all agree. Yeah. Fix that problem. The rest of this over time will take care of itself. Yep. And you'll have many opportunities. Was that clear as mud? Clear as mud. Now, mud. just proceed as, as normal. But I do think that if you guys determine and have, have a conversation later, that it would need to be, you, I don't, you wouldn't want to disparity of having one major and one cap. Because well, yeah. the other one will basically outrank him and that's fine. Yeah, and then nothing. <laughs> um, so their initiatives for this is they're going to try and get some grant funded things. Um, they're working on those, which I hope they do. Um, and the TV, if they'll focus on grants. They, they, I mean, public safety kicks grants out the walls, man. It's They'll easy. Focus on it. And it's really easy to do it internally. They've got enough staff um, that they could really focus on that with the, the personnel they have. So, and, and they're not that difficult to do. We yeah, can administer so, them. so we have community engagement, which, you know, we've requested, you know, the volume and the heat be turned up on. We can also do <coughs> grant. I don't think we're ready for that real answer yet, right? Which one? Once you start talking about community engagement, yeah, we, we can't talk about that mm -hmm. at this day. Not at the level that you're going to be mm -hmm. answered to. Not today. Yeah, I think she, you know, but I, these things like the ballistic vests, cost sharing grants, and traffic safety grants, those are things that are, you know, those are easy to get. And all they have to do is put in there. Usually funneled through the state. So the federal government's funneled through the state to the agencies and all they have to do is apply. We're saying them. we just have enough staff overall to. Oh, you know, they've got plenty of staff okay. to do that. And then that, Brad, that's where yeah. I was going. Well, with her supplementing, going. but Brad Smith is the one they usually do. And, okay. You know, so he's. There's some folks that are. And they've been taking his okay. duties away from him okay. so he can focus on well, it. And this is regardless of, of where the political dial goes. You know, some people are harder on enforcement, some people are higher on it engagement there's there, no matter where the dial is there's always a grant funding. gotcha we yeah. all love them. that's what i'm talking about you're good 
And then you've got the automated red light cameras. On the, the, that's uh, the initiative they want to do. They've already discussed that with you. I think you guys will see the amendment. In the, is it in? The, okay. So it's attached. It's, a, it's not an additional contract. It's an amendment to the existing contract. Um, and then implementation of a leadership development program. Um, we'll have to get more information from him on that later as far as his succession planning and things. Um, again, he's looking at more grants. Um, those are there's a, and there's a ton of them out there. They they did hit a bump where they went down based on political sentiments a little bit, but I think they're coming back full bore as crime rates across the nation skyrocket. So um, and a crime reduction through community policing, those actually are not bad grants if you do because you have to comply with what they want you to do, which forces those officers to get out in the community like we want them to do. <laughs> they don't have options, yeah. so it kind of helps with that. Um, I'm not going to go through all the fluff. You guys know that these are half of these are. <laughs> God. Well, you know we do need that more, more um, involvement for the community engagement since it's there. Um, you know, especially with. Um, I mean, I don't know if we spoke at some time about utilizing, you know, the scout, and the scouts, the Girl Scouts, and all of that to kind of. That's BSA. Uh, BSA what's scouts. that troop? Two one two G. Two one two G. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Oh, I'm down. I'm, I'm, all right. It's highway two twelve, and it's a G for the girls. <laughs> so I mean, you know that. Because I'm like, I, I heard it, but I don't know how to repeat it. <laughs> but if we can did get you see my email about? Can they yeah. leave the? I did. The, can they leave the pledge? Yeah. 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 And, and have them interact, you know, with the. Mm -hmm. uh, um, at one, well, with some of the. We, what was it called? The, only the citizen the service on what we have the ability to do. The citizen, the whatever, citizen, police, uh, citizen, the police, citizen, volunteers and police services. Volunteer police. Are you talking about that one? Yeah, yeah you know, just to to re, the, the, re. We've had CERT, we've had BIPs, we've got these other things, but it's we we got away from them, mm -hmm. and then we wonder why we don't have that. I literally had 26 people to, on my BIPs, and we gave them shirts and pants and all kind of stuff, shiny shoes, and they. Thought they were it, patches and everything, but they helped out all the time. You couldn't get them away from the police department. They did everything, volunteer, bones, whatever. Yeah, Somebody call out sick, hey, you want to volunteer and answer phone? Sure, I'll be there in five minutes. Yeah. I mean, but that's the kind of thing, and, and you're involved in the community. You have inroads in the community. Right, yeah. It's good stuff. Well, and then when something, a, a challenge happens that may not be justified, you, you have, your, your community comes together. If you screwed it up, you, nobody's going to support you, right? I mean, they're going to tell you you screwed up and fix it. But when somebody attacks Morrow, if you will, Morrow starts to defend Morrow because these are the people who actually live here who know the difference. Yeah, the eyes and ears, you know. That's that, right. So the good the stuff they eat. Uh -huh. and, and the geezer squad. The, 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 the people who are the geezer squad. <laughs> uh, watching for birds and criminals at the same time. <laughs> oh, my We're doing it. That's three on you, Miss Dorothy. I'm all over you. He's on a roll. Uh, let's see. So investigations and clearance rates. <laughs> <laughs> Just move it. Um, this is really no, no, this is the perfect visual. Yes. The user squad with the drone and the drone flying into things. Thing. But you it's can't crash it. You, yes, can't, right. you can't crash it. You can't crash that thing. There you go. All right. Uh, now this is interesting. So here's the goals for community engagement. Let's see how to do. Community yes. education. Yes. Um, the self-defense classes in conjunction with Clay State. They will uh, National Faith in Blue, National Night Out initiatives. Um, I don't know when those are. I think those are usually in October, November. Um, directed engagement. Um, How did the kickball National get canceled out. this time? What did that mean? It was supposed to be today. I know, but they canceled kickball because somebody didn't show you. up. No, it's because the people who were coordinating and putting it on all got COVID. But think about that for just a minute. If, if I was coordinating. Who's going to bring the ball, John? Uh -huh. All right, that's all. <laughs> all right. Moving along. we are talking about kickball. What's the sports story? Come on. <laughs> National Night Out is the thing they've done for years. It was a federal initiative. I want to go for um, kickball. <laughs> literally, the police officers, I did one at, at uh, Kingsport Naval Base. They did it where they drove around. You just kind of like drive around. You're, you're out doing stuff, and the community shows you appreciation. Well, actually, it was in the parking lot of Nine Dollars. <laughs> that's just a little bit. Just go bring the kickball. Just get it. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think this is good though. If they actually do this, the, the National Night Out, the Homecoming, and it's usually in October is when they, I think November, October is when they were doing the National Night Out, but Homecoming, um, 
That New York PC, whatever that is, that's like the uh, physical fitness thing. I think that's where they're going to do the kickball. Maybe they're the ones who got sick. I don't know. And some health fairs. I think those would all be good things to do. Well, um, like the health fair, um, I got some feedback from somebody the other day that was like one of the business. Is we do that one health fair, you know, on a, just the one time. But, but that's a big enough thing where we could do a bigger draw, maybe in an exhibit center or someplace where, you know, it's not just sitting out here in the park. Because mm -hmm. um, that could pull. And, and once you've done it and you kind of set it up, you can do that more than once, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not you have to wait once a year. Because that's a pretty big deal for some folks. You know, you don't really think about something until something tragic happens in your world. Next thing you know, diabetes screening becomes pretty important because John ate too many donuts. Yeah. Um, had too much coffee. Never enough coffee. Uh, kind of problem. <laughs> so this is if you, if you know this is one of the things we do a lot with base campus where the before and after pictures where they're posting what they're doing where they're at actually can set them up with them if we have a problem area we set them up with a reminder to go check that and check it off daily um, if they're cleaning up stuff and doing different things I think you can see it on daily reports too so that, I think that's very good because and uh, Lieutenant Beaver who's over that is very very excited getting engaged in that wants to learn about it so yeah. I'm encouraged with that yeah. God bless that whatever group true. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, assign them to a park in their areas to monitor the park mm -hmm. and see their things in the park. You know, just kind of give them some responsibility. You, this is your area, your community. Well, this park is, you know, yeah. gonna, you know, put, let you all, you know, monitor this park and, you know, you know yeah, like on the roads. If you see something in the if park, we don't have on, a specific community um, focus beautification program mm -hmm. and you know sometimes that becomes the easy thing to do we have um, walking in authority in the city those students they're very engaged and active but we haven't necessarily asked them to do anything mm -hmm. so you know there there are some opportunities with yeah and some of those uh, troops like the boy scouts yeah, that I, I did the explorer scouts for like seven years it was but it was you had high school kids who were in that. That was kind of a career path for them either because they do it for the Navy, they do it for the law enforcement, EMTs. But, you know, the engagement and the involvement and getting them in, I mean, we, we went down to Forsyth and won national championships. But it was the group that you get, you can be careful with some of them sometimes because they're a little squirrely, even at that age. And then, But you want to make sure that, because sometimes you get them, if you're not engaged and you're not probably working with those kids, they just uh -huh. lose interest because you're not, it's not fun. Yeah. Well, and it as, be as fun. Kind of yes. takes hold and because of what the potential is. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to open us up some doors that we've never really had before. Mm -hmm. Right now, I think some of this is, you know, it's in name only. You know, somebody told me I'm community somebody, but I don't even really do that as a function. Um, we were better at one time. Everything comes in cycles. You just have and to it's just, it. I think it's a refocus of what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. into, yeah, I mean, it's, it's there. So he's uh, telling me he's going to at least go after $200,000 in grant funding, which would be great. Um, I, I'm not sure how y'all feel about that, but he wants to establish a Chiefs Community Council, um, engage with them. I'm not yeah, sure what Technically, he's, he's got one. This was back when you know they were burning half the city of Atlanta, and some of it was simply because of the, you know, everybody hated the police department wanted to be funded. Yeah, part of the answer is, is there's some legitimate concerns in there as to how organizations treat people and maybe treat people of color. Um, and, and that has to be dealt with. It's just a fact. Um, it left alone, it will come back to bite us in a bite. And you have to say, you know, how do we make sure that our community understands that, you know, we have rules, right? Do we have contact people fair. with this? They did. There was, a, there was a small group. Some showed up, some didn't. Um, well, that's the one of the best place for them to start then. You can revitalize that. Atlanta's doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they're, they're so, so to me, if the, if the group isn't yeah, showing up, yeah. you know, of the ones that are missing a point, you know, some of them are just the. You know, yeah, I think we want to stay away from a to, review board, but I think having yeah. right. community you involvement. Don't, you don't want to eliminate the opportunity for conversation right. and, and meaningful um, feedback, right? Because uh -huh. if we have an if we have an issue community level, unless we ask them to come in and talk to us. You know. But also, it was on 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 mental illness as well. How did it change? Mm -hmm. Well, if you know, like you know, different places where things people would, you know, like the latest incident in uh, what Buffalo, I think. Well, yeah. you know, the oh, guy yeah. had been 
you know, arrested and all kind of crazy putting stuff yeah, all over yeah. the place. So, the so how how to identify, you know, a person that has actual mental illness? Well, there was that incident than, with the the older older lady. She was having a, a mental health crisis, and the officer responded by shooting her in the front door. Yeah, those are things we. Yeah, I like I like the the, the kit from. John Robert Drive, you know, you have a gentleman over there who's having some serious issues with the city and case. Some of it through the community itself. We, we took kind of a, a secondary role, facilitating as best we could. Um, that seems to be, you know, doing okay, but somebody should check in every so often to make sure right. that, you know, we haven't, you know, fallen back. Because you know that'll happen. I mean, at some point when it's no longer warm and fuzzy anymore. Well, ideally, you know, though, that's your community make and engagement person who's out there Ident the officers are identifying that, passing it off to them, and their liaison with existing. Because most of this stuff, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. They're there. You just need to reach out and contact them and interface those people with the needs with them. I think has a pretty good relationship with him. I think it's so too. Oh, yeah. probably so if this guy's got mental health issues. Well, I mean, if you're driving this city over any period of time, how do you not know who's here? I mean, you, right. should, you should know when John leaves, when John comes back. You know, the fact that John's cutting his dress every two right. weeks, yeah. whether... Oh. <laughs> uh. Well, I, you know, and, and, and whoever the, 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 you know, I don't, we used to call him the beat cop, you know, for certain areas. Mm -hmm. I mean, people don't know who they, you know, if you're driving around, get out. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a person in the yard cutting grass, get out and, and go speak to them and well, say hello. Well, my you know. had their pride meeting the, the Sunday of last. Mm -hmm. um, we, we had 50% of my subdivisions. I was going to say, you had a good turnout for the size of your So for the size of the subdivision, mm -hmm. you know, not bad, mm -hmm. you know. And, and of course, you could walk up there and everybody that was there kind of knew everybody else that was there. Mm -hmm. you know? And next thing you know, the did guys you, over there. Did you meet, you remember Dennis Winkler? I think so. I do, because we've they, obviously met him in here. He yeah, wants to do Frisbee. He's inviting us to halfway across the free world on a following Sunday, and I'm like, look, I don't want to go see four Frisbee golf sections in the middle of July. How about you just tell us which ones are great? We'll go look at it, because I think we got a solution for that. That actually okay. makes some sense. Yeah. That's not... It'd be cool. I mean, that would be a neat thing. Who would have thought of that? But that's something that's low cost. Yeah, for a lot of fun, mm -hmm. you know, you could get some of those grants, like the DNR grant I'm yeah. looking at, could be one that we could do that with. So, <laughs> you know, well, like, I mean, you said it's popular in another place. It's right crazy popular. People yeah. coming, if we could get in on the tournament rounds and they want to use it for tournaments, it's they're drawing Frisbee all kinds of... Golf? Frisbee golf? Oh, you got to see Disc it. golf. Yeah, oh, Mr. Lee, you missed that one. It's a lot Lee. more in Think of it as a set of golf clubs. Yeah, And now the guy brings his little backpack, and he has Frisbees, like golf clubs. Mm -hmm. This one will go 400 yards, this will go 300 right. yards, this um, one's a section. And also, now you're like, oh, okay. I don't, but I was worried about getting hit in the head with it. Right. He's like, no, 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 let me show well, you. Well, you gotta be, you yeah. gotta have a, have yeah. a skill. You know, a skill. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Then yeah. even yeah. for somebody like yeah. me, yeah. who yeah. might yeah. Call course. Right. Yeah. throw yeah. one, and yeah. they go, well, I, I, I would probably not be a good person to start. Did you know there's one at the university? The university no. has a Frisbee golf course. But it is so tiny that it just doesn't do a lot of attraction. Oh, right. And you go, well, that would be a good place to practice. This would be a good place to do something. Well, I think it'd be a good place and to run it down off of the underpass. For real, just have a nine hole there and an eighteen hole. Because he said the one we're doing yeah. would be like really difficult. And then his, he brought a guy a in and a bucket last week who's driving a uh, hanging basket, a seven thousand dollar BMX graphite bike that weighs like the, much of the coffee cup. The guy's 61 years old. I'm like, dude, yeah. you're 61. All right, moving along. Here. Okay, sorry. Uh, so the B, these are the, these are no cost initiatives, <laughs> uh, and these are good. So if he gets a BGA but Gus Grant, that's 50 percent of them doesn't cost us anything. It actually peels the cost off. Our replacement cost with us anyhow. GOHS grants, if they get that, that does cover um, purchase of equipment as far as a vehicle and outfitting a vehicle. Um, You've got your 50 hours of the officer's salary, and uh, that's not just per year, but <laughs> um, it's it's through the uh, it basically pays for a salary, and you usually get those for one to three years, and after that, you you have a requirement to keep the officer in the car for I think one year or two years, and the cops grant, um, 
that's seventy five percent for three years and a five year obligation. So once you those are the tricky ones we need to be aware of before we commit to any of those because then once you latch into some of them, you have an obligation that follows you. Um, the red light automated cameras, no cost as long as they do, um, you know, the two hundred k. Which again, we've discussed that. Is, is that two hundred k or uh, fifty thousand a month? Because this um, the presentation to say twenty thousand for intersection, so we have two intersection and five thousand per. Well, per intersections though, each one of them is four, mm -hmm. so you're looking at both ways. So they're putting them in a four way. So as they come this way, south but northbound south. So it's northbound southbound, eastbound westbound. That's Those yeah. are the four. That's four. So 50, as they, oh, well. as they count by camera. <laughs> then that will be more expensive than we thought because we're going to put it yeah, on. It doesn't cost. It does, it does the thing on this. When you read the amendment, there's no cost because if it doesn't create X amount of dollars, they don't charge us for it. We just get the overage over the 200000 per It doesn't cost us, though, because if you look at the, we don't have to pay our pocket on the cap amount, what, what portion we give it to them. But like say if we open um, open the search into public, uh, what if somebody come in and say I will do the same job but I charge you less? That's the that's the cost. Instead of charging twenty thousand per intersect and they say I'm charging ten, and I'm looking at some source uh, document that they send us the red uh, speed camera saying that. I, I need to talk to you. Yeah, because Redspeed, I mean, the only reason we're getting this deal is because... The source is that the letter from Redspeed saying that they are some source of Redspeed. They are not some source of, um, of uh, any, or anything with flock, so... But the only reason we're being able to do that because they're in tandem with flock. If you get another company in here, then it's, never, it's not going to be the same deal. The only reason we're able to do that is because Flock's going to allow them to utilize their cameras for that purpose. That, I, that I also talked with Flock and they have no idea about red light camera. So we'll, we'll talk about that after the meeting. We'll hope they would because it's an addendum to their contract. So <laughs> we'll, we'll talk, <laughs> with, we'll talk a, with, I'll talk with you about that after Might be a problem. Yeah. Um, oops. So over time, they have done, they have done pretty good. Um, even though they have some of those, I think with the full staff, they can do kind of like what um, what Public Works is looking to do, where they have those folks that are just kind of assigned to those issues. Um, equipment maintenance, the flock cameras, of course. You're going to see that on there with the um, with the equipment maintenance going up a little bit. Equipment services contracts, that's Axon. That's one that's a big change in theirs. It's $125,000. Uh, but that integrates their car plus body cameras and automatic activation. That's, that's the big one we just approved. Yeah, that's the big took a deal. Out of splash, the yeah. four years of seventy grand. On the I don't side. know when you know, it must have been a while back, but it was. Yeah, that's the big change in their budget there. But we gave them, we gave them the toys because they produce the results. And they're doing FirstNet. Um, that's going to be something that's going to reduce the communications charges, and that's through AT and T. So this is one of the agreements that they have with them. Um, a lot of use of the digital format, so you don't see as much printing, except we're required to do some of that stuff, so they're reducing that by 2000 And then, you know, this is a debatable thing where we're looking at the different, I, I always hear this, but the classes they put on for the state are usually pretty stellar, and they meet the requirements that they have to have, but we always say, well, they're not as good as they could be if we went to the FBI or DOJ sponsor training, which, by the way, costs us all this money, so um, we'll check on those and see. Vehicle maintenance, that's already having an effect on us. They're going to reduce it by 40000 just based on the fact of that's probably labor. I think that's a fair estimate as we looked over to say this is reduction in labor. Um, fuel and oil, that's going to be an increase. We just don't know. Um, and capital improvement, the four cars, which is on their original replacement schedule, five-year replacement schedule anyway, and they wanted six. But again, this comes back to the point of why do we have to go through so many cars so fast? It's because we're driving our cars so far away to do our get to and from home. So it's one of those touchy little subjects that's going to come up sooner or later and it's going to have to be a decision. I imagine we'll have to make it in, you know, the next upcoming months because it's going to be something that you're looking at going, it's got to be, I mean, you just have to have logic and play on that. Well, if I recall, at one time we had something in place where if you uh, 
live outside of so many miles, you you pay you pay something. <laughs> to be honest, I would rather not get involved in that kind of a deal. <laughs> I would just say that you set the parameters and say you live outside of twenty miles. No, was we send them the invoice, right? So they, then you had these people who theoretically owed us money, and what a mess. Oh, nightmare. And, and then supposedly some of the people who live in Alabama were our best performers, or whatever that answer was, um, didn't stabilize. Alabama? Well, it was actually for, it was a long ways in Georgia. It was actually less, less time to go down. <laughs> yes, there. Ernie lived, he lived right over the Alabama yeah. line. But it was, anyway, Ernie Raper. Is, is, as time, you stabilized, right? The stabilized perform some of these things as they become low hanging fruit, we'll solve them as they come in there, but they're not the hill to die on. So there's their budget. Um, it's about a $382,000 increase, and we we know a large portion of that's going to be because of increase in retirement costs based on the increase in salary. Um, but also, you know, it's there's a couple of things that they've increased on that kind of decrease. So it's, I, I really need them to to focus and and meet their revenue goals is what we need to do. Yeah, this this um, is the one department that. When they when they do the the little blue flu because somebody's having a bad day, at the end of the year you could do five six hundred thousand dollars out, and there's no real way to make that up. So they they, they have to perform. It's where people have to walk. Again, it's not always revenue so much, but remember, they they still cost you three and a half million dollars to operate. It, it is a, a a portion of the puzzle, whether it's economic development. Of course, everyone has to understand that it, unless you guys want to be paid with monopoly money, it really does, you know, require you to pay attention to how things are, are actually done. And if you have management who's over there going, well, you guys just figure out, how, you know, that's your problem. City, city council, you figure out how to produce money from nothing. Um, you can double the taxes on anybody. I did not add value to your, to your area. Now you're a high taxed area. And your business license fees are higher than everybody else. Your property taxes are higher than everybody else. They're going to locate somewhere else. You just, it's a, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy on the negative side. You, you cannot do that. And it's, it's hard to fix. When you get into that mode, what ultimately happens is these same folks who want to be paid more end up getting paid less. The equipment is less. And, and the value of the position in the, in the city is less. That is the true answer. And that our expectations don't match that. We want to be the best. We want to strive to achieve to be the best and to compete with anybody out there. This city can and has and will. Yeah. And I don't see anybody sitting at this table saying we want to be second rate. Why, why play for that goal? There's no reason to. We, we've done it before. We'll do it again. And we're in, we're in, everything's a state of flux. If anybody can ever say you're hitting our, you know, the mark of perfection, uh, you're probably not paying attention. <laughs> or we're telling other people that are sitting here because we're marketing ourselves and telling us our city's in good shape and we can compete, and we can't. But if you're sitting in this room where you're trying to actually be a little bit more realistic and say, where are we now, what are we doing, what are we trying to do? Yeah, performance evaluation, do the same thing. We could easily sit down with every employee and say, you're crazy. If that's true, wow, you know, there's always going to be somebody who just got there who's got to learn. Somebody who's been here a long time who's going to, you know, like like that, so he's going to phase out how we're going to train for that. Uh, let's be realistic in this room. On the vehicle issues? Oh, oh man, it's just insane. But, but, but not everybody's. I mean, your subdivision probably got hit hard. Um, I didn't. I'm, yeah, but I I appeal mine on a regular basis. That was good for three years. So, you know, three years from now, mine will double. But in the meantime, yes. <laughs> yeah. When we're looking at vehicles on the replacement, I, I'm not terribly concerned because they can't get them. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're able to do those. And, I, and one of these, one of the ways you, you can, you know, look at a police department and you know what's going on with the confiscated assets. Great, we'll pay for three, you pay for one. I mean, there's that's absolutely a, a 
admissible for what they can do with the confiscated assets, be it state or federal. So um, those are some of the things we can make sure we're saving if we need to cost cut a little bit on those. Uh, we talked about that contract communications and they're gonna try and find some, some grants. So we'll see how that plays out. So that's the end of that slideshow. Did you guys want to take a quick break before we finish up with mine? I'll just roll. All right, let's roll. Well, in that case, Lunch. <laughs> <laughs> it's yogurt parfaits um, in the refrigerator. I didn't want them to get uh, foot granola. Mm -hmm. If anybody wanted any, I didn't want them to get mm -hmm. warm. Mine's pretty quick and dirty, so it shouldn't be too long. Unless John gets to talk. Unless John talks, is that what you said? Unless John gets to talk. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Uh, well, give me 18 minutes because I got 18 slides, I think. So, <laughs> um, we'll count the beginning. And this is just to recap what I said. We're, we're not all revenues are back to pre COVID levels. We do see an uptrend in a lot of, and I don't want that to. Then give me a false sense of comfort because if you look at those uptrends and a lot of the things we're doing, you see that across the country. But eventually, eventually, all this inflation, um, all the all these different shortages and everything else are going to catch up to us, just like everybody else. The gas is going to impact our hotel motel taxes and everything else. And you know, it's just we need to be we need to be aware of that and, and um, ready to deal with it. The tax recovery has been stronger than anticipated. Um, we did get that ARPA funds for 1.34 to offset some of the pay increases that were done in 2001. Um, and I'm anticipating, we know we look here, we'll see how it pans out, but we, we may not be that short with the budget this year. And if we're not, then that's great. But uh, um, we don't have all the numbers transferred over yet. By this week, we'll have a pretty good grip of where we're at. Um, so until that time, I don't want to say anything to y'all, but we'll get, well, I'll let you know when I know. Um, inflation concerns could impact operational budget on two sides. We're going to see an increase in sale tax revenue, but we're also going to see an increase in top end costs of operations and capital projects, which we're already seeing. I mean, all the capital projects we're doing, just like, thank goodness we locked in that one with, uh, that's doing the Blue House, because if we weren't, then it'd be probably already gone up. And he already, he told me that. He said, you guys better be glad you started now, because they have to renegotiate it. But it's just... It's expected everything's just costing more, as everybody knows. Um, and in the increase in the Fed fund rates that began in March, um, you know, I, I'm sure they'll continue. They're looking at least another one and a half uh, basis cost points. And then as you keep creeping, I mean, to, to beat inflation, I think everybody knows you have to be at least two points ahead of it on your interest rates. You know, inflation right now is one at 8.56. That means they have to be at 10.56. I don't see it happening, but. Just something to be aware of as we go forward. Um, revenue summary, and I, I, I'm rationing back a little bit on this because we don't want to go crazy. So the total proposed budget that we have of all funds is 16.9 million, and that's lower than 22, but the forecast for 22 for revenues is is at that level of 17. So we'll see again. We have a month left. We have to finish parsing out what's coming in and what's going out, but, um, that's the anticipated number there. Mm -hmm. Expenditures, you see the trends on the expenditures going up. For the 2022, we're looking at 16.7, and then requests for 23 is 16.9. Um, those are laid out for you guys. And again, if you guys want to talk about those things, we're, we're happy to. I'm happy to talk about those. Um, and each one of the each one of the different um, budget portions we're not talking about today. There are placeholders in there if there's not a department head like in finance. I think that somewhere in the neighborhood of $200,000 was allocated by you all for the finance software. Good news is it's not going to cost that much. Um, did we put that proposal in there, Marquita, from them? That's why. The one for the personnel and payroll? No. Okay. There is a, there's a module that goes in where we could do our own payroll. Um, I want to do an analysis on it to see how much it currently costs us with Paycom and see if we did it in-house, how much that would save us. But it's a module they have in there that, in BSNA. Um, it's 25, I think, for that one, 25,000. But let's see if we actually would impact some of our costs on it. Um, some of the general fund projections that we have currently, I'm thinking we're going to be 
Yeah, the original fund for that was nine thousand nine point two million dollars or nine point four million dollars rather. Um, and we plan to use a reserve if we need to. But the projections right now for the twenty twenty one is that we might be at about eleven million in revenue. Um, now we have again some of the trailing costs coming in. We have some of those you can't I, I cannot sit here and tell you good faith, I don't think you might believe if I did, that we had somewhere around the neighborhood of three or four thousand dollars in pay raises, three or four hundred thousand dollars in pay raises that you all did by doing that five thousand to twenty five hundred dollar increase. You also have an issue with sanitation towards the residential and the commercial. I mean there's these are numbers that we have that we can pull out right now, but I'm not hundred percent comfortable with them. Um, so we're looking right now at over uh, four hundred sixty eight thousand dollars. We'll see. But if it goes the way I think it does when we have everything figured in and taken into account and everything transferred over, I'm imagining that plus will become a minus and we'll probably be down at least that five hundred thousand to six hundred fifty thousand dollars. The the calculations that I think are, are accurate. But looking at general fund revenues and expenditures over historical time frames, you, know, you obviously see the uh, you see where we're at with some of those. And the proposal is at eleven point two, so we'll see. Where we get our monies from for the revenues and expenditures, where we spend it, um, you know, lion shares come in on a taxes, and then you have all these other sources and flows of revenue that come in, um, the expenses, and I break that down in another chart for you. It's a little bit more easier to read and see how we put them out, but you know, the lion shares of those go to public safety, of course, and public works, which are necessary for us. Um, and then just another chart that breaks that out for you is where, where your revenue comes from. Um, sales tax revenue, and I broke these out into local option sales tax and then the real property tax, just kind of see the trend lines on those. Uh, we will see an increase in those. And I really think that with the homestead exemption, you know, the question is we're looking at millage rates, we're trying to fund, there's no way to calculate the millage rates until the county does their thing. I don't, I think we may actually win with doing a homestead exemption where we may bring in a little bit more. I mean, oddly enough, we've dropped taxes and we bring in more because of the valuation of the property going up so high. And that's got to be on, the, on this year's thing, right? Well, I think we're going to get the vote in November, but you're going to set your taxes in August, and this is where it gets dicey because it's like technically that wouldn't be in there. And again, I think what you do is you set your residential garbage rate at a number that offsets that until we get ready for that. Um, but give us a little bit of time. I mean, but we're voting. I mean, it's going to be on the ballot. No, it'll be on the ballot in November. No. I mean, no, but if it's on the ballot, it passes and it's got to be ratified, I think, and then it's got to go. So you're looking. I should start next year. Which I mean, is, yeah, so. It's a next year set. So the only like, way to do it is yeah. you're going to. It's up, a move point. You're going to end up collecting it because you're not going to want to give Walmart the tax break. And then how do I how do I make it so you still get the money? It's, it's probably going to be in your garbage bill. So this is just kind of a trend to see where we're spending our money by function. Um, you know, those are those are four years well three year spreads there as far as what's proposed too. But um, you got the 19, 20, and 21, 22. But this is just kind of an idea of where we're. You see the the increase of expenditures in different areas, kind of. Um, more in police and fire and public works than anywhere else, but I think that's a drawback. Economic development is probably a little bit, um, a little off on that, I would guess, because you guys didn't have one for so long. And yeah, bring one in. yeah, and that's where there were expenditures allocated to that <laughs> economic development, yeah, but it wasn't for the personnel. So the <laughs> increases in that are definitely related to personnel. Right. Um, we got the compensation, which is a good yeah, thing, but it's a consideration. It, economic development is one of the, the few departments. You know, it's hard to say from a police standpoint where you sit there and you go, I, I, I spent three million dollars. You know, did I get three million dollars worth of value? Yeah. Okay, but but in, in true economic development, you can always look at it and say, you know, we have to give it some seed money, right? You got to spend it like a grant thing. If you don't spend the money up front, you don't get it in the back. But you you can actually have metrics that you can say. You know, what are my business license revenues before? Now you say to some degree that's going to be you know cost of living or whatever. Um, what, which properties did the city own? Did, what do we what do we do with them? How do we make that come out? 
of vacancies that were available in the private sector. What are my vacancies to that? What was my um, standard uh, hotel bus? You know, was I charging you know twenty five dollars before? Technically, your vacancy in that case does determine your demand rate. If your demand is higher, your price goes up. I mean, there is there is some correlation there. Um, what is the cost per square foot of retail space that was in the city mall before? What is the cost per square foot of retail space now? Not all of that is going to be directly related, but you will see your city moving in a consistent direction. But then the other one, marketing material, have it, don't have it, um, the ability to go out and do different things. So th there's so many things in that particular category where you can actually say, am I getting my money for it? And one of the things I think that you'd look at on economic development and wonder why they had those numbers there, it oddly enough correlates directly to the hotel motel taxing that was brought in. So I think it might have been flow, you flow those expenses through there, even though you don't have a person and we're not really doing anything. Um, so that's kind of where that, that number is. And by the way, there is a, Marquita, you did put that in there for them on the, the uh, DCA PowerPoint printout that we did? Yes. Okay. That that's the, the difficulties of the hotel motel tax break. And that's probably the best illustration I've seen to explain that because if you try and read the statute, oh, I think this is the statute itself printed out. So it's a little cumbersome. Um, here it is. But if you don't read that. That's in the book. Yeah, I put that in there. Not that, that one, did you? The code section? If you sent it to me through email attached with the other one, I'm <coughs> sorry. Yes. Yeah, but the PowerPoint's in there. The PowerPoint's very good to show you that. Um, but this is uh, the, the pay increase is important, I think. So we knock that down. Like John likes to say, you know, we don't have anything below pay grade 15. So everybody makes $15 plus. I mean, obviously, with doing the benefits and retirement, health care, and everything else. Health care numbers that are in there as well. Um, so those are. We were able to negotiate and get those down whether or not there's no change in their deduct, deduct, deductibles or anything else going forward this year. Uh, there is a slight increase, but that's across the board. They started out at 12.5%. We got them down way below that. Um, and as uh, Councilman Tran, as you ask, I put that in the mayor's budget there for the tuition reimbursement for mayor and council. It's in that budget there. Um, she wanted to have $20,000 in there for, you know, we used to do reimbursements per, I figured I put an administrative issue there because that way we'll set a policy on that if they go to the classes and make a certain grade until that fund is depleted. But I think the, this makes us competitive in the area and it primes the employees for that paper for per performance piece that we're looking at where we have to come up with now. That's the next step in this raise after the budget. We need to look at that and come up with an across the board evaluation. So as we perform in the city, as we do better, then we can pass those savings, those those increases along to the employee. Um, staffing right now, then this is something I think that's important to look at. We have 85 full-time staff um, allocation. So the police department's fully staffed. We do have an interim chief. Public works is fully staffed. Finance is fully staffed minus finance director. Fire department has four openings and city hall and other departments are fully staffed. I think that's where we strive for that full staffing because that gives us stability, normalcy, and it also you know, helps us with accountability on different things. Those are the type of things we're going to look to do. Um, again, placeholders are in all those departments as far as paying for those, so it's not like we're going to pop up and add those later to any of the departments that don't have folks. But I think when you look at fire department, if you look at their expenditures for overtime, I think they're closed. Police department's around thirty-five. I think this year, fire department's over a hundred thousand dollars in expenditure, and that's the difference because. When they hit overtime, it's, you know, it hurts us. So those four openings are killing us on the back end as well as on the front end of being able to respond to things that we should be able to and take care of issues. So capital projects, you've got Jester's Creek closing out. That's over budget right now by close to 50 grand. Overtime, over budget, horrible. Um, you know, the software was and designated. That's over the hundred and some thousand dollars that you budgeted. Yeah, that's over the hundred eleven thousand dollars that you so guys that agreed to. The so, issues already built into that. That one is we're, we're having a hard time with the paperwork. Yeah, because like, I'm not being able to justify where we're spending an additional fifty k, and I'm not paying them until they show me. So, um, they may come back and try and take our trail system back. I don't know. Uh, but this they, is. Didn't, excuse me. Didn't they 
notify us when it's come to us. I don't have anything. I don't have anything at all. So we have the billing for that, of course, which is... Um, We're asking the question. Yeah. Exactly that. I mean, I'm on there with DOT, and because all of a sudden they start clamoring about wanting to be paid. And I'm, Got, yeah. I got a few questions here. There was no change of scope, and of course, that's where your project manager should be involved in that with Mark Whitley. To be honest with y'all, I'm not impressed with Mark Whitley. Um, if you're project managing, I don't know what you're managing, but you're not. He was, he's in the, he was on the Zoom meeting with us, unable to tell us either. So, we talked to Triscapes. We need to have some documentation. If they give us a documentation, they didn't do a change of scope or anything else. Y'all didn't approve that. That's why. I, basically explain I'm not writing a check for anything that wasn't approved so um, 2014 SPLOS funds were designated to purchase that finance software that's going to be completed this fiscal year um, we're looking for those those are the grants we were talking about there's a DNR path revitalization grant that's in June and then we were talking about that infrastructure grant that's uh, reconnecting communities is what it's called and that's when I think that we could the overpass underpass um, but I think those are some good things to look at. I don't know. The matching on those is only, I think it's, they're 80%, so it'd be a 20% match for those. The DNR one, I'm not sure. They didn't ever tell us what the grant was. There's the also match some additional information about the matching portion that can bring it down, I think, for um, governments to around 10%. Yeah, that'd be special. I think so. That, yeah, so let me see if I can reach out and find information. Okay. That. Yep, because we've got another, we're on the, maybe next week or the following week, but there's another, you have to do the informational stuff with everybody. Um, Spots fund, these are kind of capital outlays on that. Um, and then, you know, it's a little bit different on the Spots fund, I think, as it comes in, and there's some information in your tab on the Spots fund as far as what we're collecting and what we're doing. As it comes in, I think it, it's important for us, particularly if the economy slows down and we, we need to, they're allocated certain things we need to do. The percentages are already up there, so they're kind of broken down, public works, public safety recreation or, or betterment of the people. So let's move forward on those and, and make some of these projects happen. We have the money there that's allocated in that direction. And uh, as we get the let's 3Ds. Try, is, is, uh, you've got the budget sales tax at some point. Remember, we're required every 10 years to renegotiate the budget sales tax. And the first one is the, the division between the county and the city. Mm -hmm. And the county doesn't want to pay that the first one is the division between the county and the city. Right? So then however that goes, we, we have no veto power of anything. We, we, we're not Jonesboro, we're not the county seat, we can't hold anything up. So that's the first discussion, right? The knowing Forest Park and some of the bigger cities can, can, can sandbag, but if they don't fight for us, we're, we're toast. So right now they're at that 75-25 split, okay? Then the, the next percentage, let's assume that's 25%. The city of Morrow gets its city population share, so that says how many ever people there are in cities in Clayton County based on the 2020 census. And let's just say Morrow's 4% of that. Well, Morrow did not grow. Lovejoy grew like crazy. Some of these other cities are twice, three times the size of what they were. So then Morrow's percentage of that is going to drop. And it's gonna drop simply because they can do it. They're just simply gonna go, this is what you get. And that number will be less because our population has not a fact and then that's good for 10 years so you have to get the retail sales approval uh, to, to make that work um, how much is that loss I, we didn't lose population yeah. but you know not like the last time last the, the first section we went in we were at um, basically 5,000 then we had new subdivisions we went to 8,000 and we stayed at 8,000 because we, we didn't have a population growth um, based on our it's not going to be in this budget so much because I, I, the negotiations won't take place for you know, soon. Soon it will be the discussion, but as soon as that's adopted, then this this next year you'll have less. So it is important to consistently grow as a city, or you will pay the price one way or the other. And years and years ago, we got the same amount as Riverdale did, so we're at a pretty healthy number. Do you have the narrative? You, you, you have no way to. Uh, I do not have a narrative. To force that we have that together. You can't make it yeah, because there's so that's at least three of the narratives that we need to make. The best thing you can do is help because I want to have that. a group of cities laid out the count. Okay. And, and I'm going to do a comparison between because that way it's pretty much down what's left of 14 and then 414 needs to be allocated and then this one. So just, you know, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. All you can do.
Uh, but those are split out and the, and the narratives will be coming on these to give those specifics for you uh, as far as you know the vehicles are in public works again I'm not overly concerned with them being in there because I don't really get any trucks um, like the recreation revitalization of some of our recreation areas that we showed um, so I'll break those out for you and also show you the remainder of the balances in 08 which has got to be 50 bucks in it and then 14 what's left in it what's allocated still and uh, streets and construction, with streets and sidewalks. Yes, ma'am. Um, have we completed the re the paving of the streets for this year? Oh yeah. no. Oh no, and I can't oh, get them to tell me when I'm on the uh, on the roster for it. Yeah, they don't. They do Can they do Graceland? We have two. I've added those, all those to it, and sent them over to the. They're still to send the um a, the community agreement. We're waiting on the county DOT. And then I need to have the date. Usually they do it in this time of year anyway. So it's into the summer. Of our LMIG grants this year. Right. Last year is what we thought we had done that never got done. Yeah. Right. And then this year. So we have two of those sitting there. The one was never done, never scheduled, never anything. So this oh. one we've got the two to do. And I would really like to know. That's why I've got Brandon on them all yeah. the time. Add my street on there because we have potholes and tree roots coming up. And I've got this. Because it's all about street maintenance. You yeah. know, it, it has to be. You know, you don't wait for the street to fall apart. You reseal it. You do a whole right, bunch of other right. things to maintain it at a longer level. Um, then you stripe it so it'll last. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, my so street there, is there's some real stuff in there that you all look across at. the street and there's stuff. All right, so this is one we need to. This is just to set your mind or something to look at things. So <laughs> wonderful <laughs> sanitation. Everybody that. loves to talk about yeah. trash. Um, so as this thing comes along, you see that you see how the, the and the reason I did this was because it shows you the disparities here. But as we come up, you barely, I mean, you didn't break even, but just barely went into costs. And now, that's why this year I'm like, oh, I don't believe those numbers yet until we see them. Um, you're gonna see it. You're taking a hit because there was a, the snafu with the commercial. This has to be around two hundred ten thousand dollars, and you've got the, the residential still in flux. Um, 2023 that's what our <laughs> we're hoping and the only reason we're hoping that it's a little lower than last year was because we have the contract in place now the caveat of that contract is they have a cpi adjustment that they can do every 12 months um, that's going to be here in less than six months so as they look at that or in six months uh, i was trying to get the read from bob and we had a meeting with him last week over some issues and uh I'm not coming off the cuff on it but i don't i on the CPI adjustments, they can typically only do as much as the national average, which is 8.5% or 8.56 right now. But if there's a little nuance in the contract where they can do the fuel, and I'm not sure that there isn't, then I don't even want to know what it's going to be. But to, to say that, the only way that we can affect this, and I put this on a little blurb over here, is we need to control our own. We offer services for fire. We offer services for police department. Sanitation is, it should be no different in my eyes if we're going to do it. Um, people will say, well, just let it go. I've seen cities where they just let people pick their own sanitation and it becomes disarray. Same with the counties where they have to finally rein it in and say, no, we're not doing all this trash trucks every day of the week and different trash companies. If it's a service we're going to provide, much like municipalities do, some do water, some do electricity, some do sewage. If we're going to do sanitation, I, I think the only way to do this is to control our costs and to control our service is for us to do it. And he's just talking residential and not trying to do commercial. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to do commercial. Don't get me wrong. Commercial, but that gives us a latitude to renegotiate our commercial aspect, too, because the only reason we locked in with Waste Pro for both was because they gave us a deal on a deal on our residential if we did commercial with them. So they can bid out the commercial all they want, do whatever, but I think for our residential, it allows us to do the things that would cost us we would recover our losses for the capital investment that we would do in the first year to purchase two trucks. Um, and, and that would be a large truck and a small truck within the first three to four years. We'd be able to control costs and, and, and control it ourselves. And I just want to put that up there for y'all to think about. Um, we don't have numbers. Brian, Brian is working on some of those, but he did run the, yeah, the sanitation in Jonesboro. And leaves and <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah. the, the, the um, mechanic that we hired, Hired. Is he able to work on non-trucks or trucks? Well, with the trucks, when you buy them, you have a service agreement with them. Mm -hmm. They don't actually come to the roadside because the hydraulics on them are a little different than anything else. Right, but right. 
journalists can do the same thing. Can do certain yep. things. He can do all the same. And then they, they generally have the service agreement built into that. Mm -hmm. So it's something that you would pay on theirs that you would, you know, and part of our warranty as well if the hydraulics go out. But mm -hmm. it's not a, I mean, you want to have that because the hydraulics go down on your truck. I know. It's a bad Trust deal. Me, I've, I've paid for lots of. But it'll surprise you how many times you have to change your oil on those things once every year. <laughs> which is wild to me, but um, but you'd have a bigger truck and then you have a smaller truck, and some people think those trucks are half a million dollars. But the big trucks, even now, uh, about a place in North Carolina bidding them out, looking at something, not bidding them out, but looking at some of the prices on them, they're about 200 grand, 220,000, and then the smaller ones are 160. So you would want to run a smaller one for bulk waste, but we would eliminate some of our dumpsters that we have behind Public Works. Um, we'd be able to run that trash service with the staff that we have currently. And set our prices on it so that we would be able to break even. Yes, ma'am, it does. And that's where he got. That's where Jonesboro got their truck from. But they got it for 160 because they did it before the wonderful shortages. But I just want to throw this out there for you guys to look at and go, because you know, just looking at 2022, there's there's a problem, and that's due to COVID. And then now we're going to have a problem. Now they'll blame it on the economy. Which, you know, rightfully so, but I mean, I don't see those prices ever going down where we're going to actually make a little gain on our revenue to cover the expenses unless we do it ourselves. No, nobody wants to do back door service, but you have to have that, of course. You just do. So, a lot of our expenditures for public safety, just to give you a comparison, because you hear that and you don't hear people complain. But for a very, you know, for a little bit of time there, 2019. Fire was actually outpacing PD now, and I like to call them, you know, affectionately the rev the revenue suck because that's what they are. They just they don't bring us in. <laughs> they don't bring us in any, um, but they they do uh, they do blow out a lot. So I think investments in the police. Fires up. <laughs> Keep our hearts moving. You gotta have them. I mean, but it's like sanitation. It's the same thing. You have to balance it out. And say, well, it's a needed service. Let's do it the best we can. But you know okay. the expenditures Sanit are kind of balanced. Sanitation now. That's that's our first visual. <laughs> Last slide. What you talking about? There we go. I had to get. That's why I was excited to see Bond so much. <laughs> um, now on this budget, there are some. We'll, we'll kind of Is that smiles? Looking good. That, that, that's a good crowd right there. I hated to see Doctor Stewart go. That was. Yeah. That, that took a step back because. Yeah. You know, they got to recharge. That is him up there, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got to reach out to the, to the lady. I, I think I have energy to it. Does anybody know her? No, but we, we know Chase well enough to call Chase. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Does anyone know how he's doing? I'm sure. I, I have to oh. reach out lately. Can I ask him? Yeah. <laughs> Um, one of the things we did put into the, uh, just so you guys know too, I, I neglected to put that in the slide, but I should have it. I did remember what I keep. <laughs> um, the, your, the bridge, you know, we had the inspection report per your, per se cleared it. Um, the, one of the maintenance things I put in there because that bridge was an investment that the city did. And I'm thinking, you know, most wooden bridges are like a draw. It's like a tourist attraction. So we're kind of looking into this with our legal department to see if we could consider that to be part of a tourism type thing. Because to, to the deal is, if you got the bridge done, because you have to keep maintaining it, and if you did the stuff where you stained it, and their proposal is put um, the black uh, sealant on the pylons coming up, mm -hmm. and then contrast it with a nice color like this to kind of make it really pop. Mm -hmm. um, replace the ones the little sniper heads have Kicked out. Well, didn't I ask? I saw him. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is these are wooden bridges. Oh, this, yeah. right there. Okay. Yeah. Or so it was, a, it, was a, it was a nice bridge. Right? So we haven't maintained it for 15 years. You know, if you want to keep that bridge for a very very long time, it well, we kind of are obligated to a degree because it is a public mm -hmm. roadway. So um, you know, it's listed with the DOT as that. On it, but it's a little pricey though to. Do the bridge, but if we can do that through tourism or or splos, we actually put it in the splos. And one of the reasons that we changed the budget when we first, when I first put it out to you guys on the twelfth was because we want to show a true expenditure and revenue and, and expenditure stream on that. So all, all, all I'd say on that is um, give me a little bit more time. Um, 
we'll sell one of those lots. You know, right now, it's, it's a hole. Right? Too many people have too many opinions. Um, I'm going to prove it. That's just the only answer. The only answer to get rid of these people who are just too stupid to do their own math is solve the problem. Solve the problem, produce the revenue, then they'll shut up. And then I'll handle it. Just hang on to it. Well, I'll handle it. Hang on, got to fix the grid sooner or later. But anyway, well, that's in the, the, the little uh, supply school. But they should do that, right? Because that's a safety thing. Um, but you know, the the stuff underneath it and all the other stuff, um, they do it in pieces. Yeah. But the, the small stuff, nobody has a problem with that. So you, you allow motorcycles to go over right now, but not cars. You, you can drive a tractor right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's a the only thing we don't have. The easement that we don't I have. Know I wouldn't want you to. I mean, you've never. It's GEO certified. Right. Right. It's 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 certified. Right. 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 Yeah, the spindles and the kickouts on there. But they're one of the, the reason it costs so much is what they're proposing is because well, they want yeah. to replace the entire wood surface across right. the bridge yeah. with grooved wood, which really, it's, yeah. there's nothing wrong with them. I mean, if they seal them. And because it was shut off for time, part of the part of the way you maintain a bridge, wooden bridge, is you drive across it because mm -hmm. of the grease and oil from the tires and everything. Mm -hmm. Lube it up, keep it pliable. But there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with the bridge. Yeah. Just, I'm, I'm, yeah, the things that we need to do, with the, the, the bigger stuff. Tweak it a little bit, you know. Well, sometimes the, the sometimes the little, the the little <laughs> stick that punches, you go out there and you say, prove it. Yeah. Do or die, right? Um, I can't yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, um, I think that's pretty good. Well, as I make corrections on it, we can only check some numbers. Yeah. And like I said, some of those things are still working on the data transfers for us and how we're going to flow some of them. So as we get those things squared away, and I'll send you out corrected spreadsheets and, and the narratives that we don't have. And the, and the ones that they did include that didn't have narratives on the narratives. Um, I don't know what I have to do. They never get a hundred percent. Well, it's only well, like it is, 400 pages. Yeah, so, you get uh, all that right. But I'll send them, when I put them out, though, I'll let you guys something. know on a little bullet point which ones I've changed and highlight them and keep them highlighted with the highlighted original and highlighted change. So it's kind of like a strike through for you guys to look through and if you have questions. Oh, I mean, well, so for, for this department, but you have to like the, the fact that it has some readability to it. Mm -hmm. That is not a problem. Because I'm looking at and I'm looking at that, and like parts, it's not for. Because they haven't had something for this in, basement. Almost. You get used to see yes. it. Yeah. Oh, well, I told yeah, them to do with the gas prices because our gas prices are skyrocketing. Okay. So I went ahead and I called um, our people that are Murphy Oil and I think I have whoever does our drop-offs. So we're going to come out and have them look at the numbers and see what they're saying. Because they have some numbers that they're saying that they and they're going to refresh the cap on our some of his tanks stuff. now because there's supposedly a big diesel shortage coming. Mm -hmm. So we I did think. that and got them coming out. Uh, oh, if you haven't seen it, to Fly and Jay testified in your first of Congress. Um, basically, so they're going to cap uh, off everything. But the train, but the whoa, yes, our gas percent. prices are. I mean, it's like everybody else. Percent. They're doubling. So we have a tank out there, but it's not a huge tank now, imagine for diesel and gas. So I tell everybody to gas companies where you want to call double their gas expenditures, especially the truck drivers. And they're telling you you will have 50% less. Shut off thing on there when they ever had their maintenance done. Just run uh, that is not on there yet, but that's supposed to be coming along. It's had a no choice, but it's right. increased on the other side. And then he said, certain sections, yesterday. you just won't have so, He's got a couple things that I've just done. He's got a couple things that I've just done. He's got a couple things that I've There's a chance that it's out of this country. You will have no But we will get that on there. That is part of our plan. Well, we have to. We've got to maintain these cars. We can't get more logistics. Let me see on that. You look at that. So you've been fifty percent off, but it's a twenty-five percent reduction. I, I, Gas, I think just all that stuff. We're maintenance, everything. Right. Yeah, and I doubt he's wrong. Because right? we're, we're not the, the supply chain. We're not talking that long out. In other words, it's one thing to sit here and go price for impact because you're going to come and you're going to buy it by fall. You're going to have a problem. Okay, you know, gosh, money. You know, eight, two, three, I mean, yeah. you're, you're in this game. Yeah. Um, so those, those numbers are, are, are tragic.
Thank you. I, I, I'll, I'll put it this way. You made me laugh. <laughs> Good. Because uh, there, there is that point where you just say, okay. Um, is Vaughn going to come and get his recording device? Mm. He's got to put it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Don't do, do, do we need to hit to stop? Oh, I don't. I don't Not know yet. what he's. I don't know how he's got it. Not yet. We have a closed meeting. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? You adjourning it? Do you have your gal? Are I'm we adjourning it? There's nothing else going on. Here. But it's. Uh, See, I don't have one. Yeah. Your bridge. Cause she's got to turn her on too. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. I had some. I had some good giggle moments. <laughs> but I mean, overall. Just that you have to have something that kind of says, "What's our game plan?" There's your game plan. There, there's a couple things in there, you know, when you work on that aren't really your budget. Well, I, I can tell you, this is one of the most difficult freaking budgets I've had to do because we're resurrecting one that didn't exist. Because you mm -hmm. one of from yes, last year was like a nightmare, and I don't know which bonehead scheduled freaking finance transition in the middle of your budget season. Mm -hmm. So it's been a challenge. And then one of the frustrating things, you look at that and you're like, man, I can't pull some of these numbers. <laughs> I know. Well, those you, are real, real challenges. So. They are challenges, but I think I'm comfortable with this one where it's at right now, um, except for where we're going to end up for this year. But everything else I'm fairly comfortable with as far as what we're asking and being able to do. Um, but then again, you never know Despite what the economy is going to do, what the... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's pray. I'm telling you. Oh, my God. And then you look at it, you think, I just last week I was kind of going, and then all of a sudden, the yeah. two days slide on a Dow, and, and well, I was talking with uh, Brian's builder the other day. Yeah, and we were talking about that. Uh, stuff. You know, so, yeah. Brian's builder, you know, his home.